All right, mic check one, two, because this thing sounding good. If not, y'all let me know so I can get this thing adjusted right. Let me know if it's crackling because I'm not going to be doing no one hour, two hour live stream with this thing crackling the whole time. So if you're out there, you can hear me. You're like, hey, man, give me a thumbs up. Say it sounds good. But today's podcast is about how we end in January. February the 14th is coming up fast. We still don't have every channel on board. That's kind of cool. What up, NGB? My brother, my brother. South Florida's in the house. Yeah, so we know we don't got every channel on board, but that's okay. We just need to have every driver that understands what's going on. We don't need every channel. We need every driver understanding what's going on out here. We out here fighting, and we got to keep fighting for this money. We're not like like the description says, asking for it, it ain't happening. We got to go out, and we got to take it. Man, Cleveland getting dumped with snow right now. Hey, William, you might want to go out there and get you a four-wheel drive and get that money. Well, you do got the big SUV anyways. Like, man, this is, I'll put it there on my radio show. That's right, Brian. Get it out there. I'm telling you. And as long as you know, drivers know about it. We don't need every channel involved. I think every channel was thinking that, you know, we're waiting on them. We're not waiting. We full for, like I said, we the 300, full force ahead. We got enough, enough people out there understand what's going on, why we're doing this. And if you're not on board with why we doing this, cool. We know where you stand. We don't worry about you. We keep moving. We got stuff to do. And so I appreciate you, Brianne. Thank you for putting it on, on your channel and everything. I mean, on your radio station. Because as long as people can hear it and, and riders can hear it when they're in the car, they understand what we're doing, why they need to talk to drivers, why they ha got to have a private driver, at least four or five of them in their phone at any given time. Because if we're not driving on these apps and somebody needs to go somewhere, pay that driver, pay that driver, get that money moving. Because we're not going to sit around and go broke dealing with these apps. We're going to fight for the money we know we deserve. A lot of people out there, you know, they, they sitting around, you know, with their handout saying, can you please give me, you know, 50 cent bonus, a dollar? No, fuck all that. We know what we worth. We know what we worth. What up, Aaron? You out there getting it, my brother? Yeah, the slave drivers who are allowing the abuse. And, and we're seeing it all across the boards. And it's funny how here in 2024, remember back when we used to talk about you know, corporations and companies used to be upset that immigrants would come to America. Oh, they're going to drown us out of businesses. They're going to kill our business. They're going to do it. You don't really see, you know, gig companies saying anything about the immigrants. They don't talk about immigration policy. They don't talk about, you know, we should be taking care of the Americans and we want Americans on our apps. They don't. They would love to replace us with low paid slaves. They would love it because they as long as they're making profits, as long as the people coming into this country don't understand the economy of this country, the apps have the upper hand. We're sitting around understanding what it means to be an American living on this soil, how much it costs to live on this soil. These people don't know. Half of them getting government funds anyways. So they don't care. They just happy to be here. They happy to finally stop walking, you know, four or five days straight through deserts and shit. They finally happy. They happy to get off of a plane or off of a boat, off of a bus. They just happy. So we're out here trying to keep roofs over our head, trying to live our American lifestyle. And the corporations is like, if we can just find a way to use all this cheap ass free labor coming into this country right now, we'll be better off. Our bottom line will be at a, they don't care about American families. Like like I had on my last uh, video, I dropped with, you know, Tucker Carlson really dropping the reel on there. They're replacing Americans right now. We know this is a very expensive country to live in, one of the richest countries in the world a very expensive place to live in. And if you're not making the money, you're not going to make it here. So I don't understand how these corporations and how these governments are funneling all of this money to new people that are here on welcome them to our country, but not taking care of the people that's already here. That's already struggling. And it's like the immigrants ain't going to see that. All they see is, oh man, they're happy. We're here. They're giving us $200. You know, they're clearing space for us, letting us stay in their houses and letting us stay in their buildings. They're really trying to help us out. What they should be thinking is, why ain't they helping Americans out? What's the going on? What, what's the catch? Why are you helping us out, but you're not helping your own people out? What's the catch? Well, the catch is you're the new slave class. That's the catch. You don't even see it, though. And they're out there driving 80 hours a week, you know, switching cars, cars running 100 percent. Hertz location shutting up. My man Dalton out in Vegas, he hit me up this morning. They think one of the uh, Hertz locations actually shut down. So he's trying to get me some some information right now on that Hertz location, but they're thinking it, it actually shut down and everything. What up, Rick? What up, man? Oh, man, this is good afternoon, my friend. Hope you're doing well. You do a great job for the community. Sincerely appreciating everything you do. Hey, Rick, hey, 
Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Y'all know I'm going to be out there and I'm going to be out there in March for real. Definitely in March. I'm trying to see if I can get out there in February. I got a lot going in February, so I don't know if I can make it in February, but definitely I'm going to be out there in March for March Madness. But y'all was talking to Dalton this morning, man. He said, I think down in uh, Green Valley, that Hertz location is closed down off of Warm Springs or something like that. So I'm like, oh, man, I want to see that. Samir said, four hours today, zero acceptance. Even Uber app keeps signing me off. Man. Here in Seattle, area riders are not happy with the immigrants. Yeah, man. Hey, Etherman, I spotted an autonomous vehicle in Miami for the first time. Large ship is coming. I researched who's behind it and discovered Toyota Ventures. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people that don't understand why I'm driving the way I'm driving in the Phoenix market, because you guys don't have Waymo's yet. They're using Waymo's right now to do all the short rides. Waymo's are now approved to be tested on the highways. So I've seen a few Waymo's actually, but they got drivers in the seats on the highways. So there are testing on the highways, seeing how these things work. They want autonomous to take all the rides because people want, well, Jeff, how come you ain't making a lot of money? I said in a couple of interviews ago, it feels like I'm making more money off of YouTube now than I'm making off driving. The shit is switched just because Waymo now is taking all the short hops. Even with the surge out there, we're sitting on surge, you know, 15, 20 minutes sitting on the surge. We finally get two or three nature hikes that equal a little less than a dollar a mile. And I'm like, this is crazy. So unless you drive in Phoenix, you don't understand autonomous vehicles. You're probably in a city that don't have autonomous yet. So you don't have the same issues we have. But man, it's, it's getting crazy out there. Waymo's middle of the day. Like I just came back from the gym, so I'm driving. I must have saw like 10 different Waymo's. All of them got people in it. Those used to be Uber drivers, used to be Lyft drivers with those people in it. Those are now all Waymo's crawling the streets everywhere. So be ready. They're testing it. It's coming. It's in full force out here in Arizona. It will be in your city. Uber is moving this nationwide. And right now, that's why I say get your profits, get your money right now. Because you see how my numbers look. I'm a good driver. I'm out there making money all the time. But for some strange reason, it ain't. Wait a minute. Something just popped in my screen. Hold up. Get that out of here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was uh, logging yesterday, two apps, nine hours, zero pings for Lyft Black and Uber Premier. Rick, man. And yesterday I was uh, hanging out with Juan Vargas in the parking lot. And we were, you know, going. I was getting $3.09 sit rides on Uber. $3.09 sit. $3.06. Wasn't taking none of them. I took about four or five Ubers, I mean, Lyft rides, all surge on it. One of them didn't have surge because they caught me slacking, caught my ass. So, But it was at least a dollar a mile. But for the most part, it was a whole bunch of just short rides down in Tempe. He got a two-mile, $18, you know, Lux Black and took off or an Uber Black or something. He took off. But he was getting black pings last night, and he was doing okay. But here in Phoenix, oh, man, this is my first boyfriend is the lead Waymo tech maintenance who trains others to repair them. I tell Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's crazy because a lot of people don't understand why Phoenix drivers numbers are looking the way they look right now. When you understand that Waymo's are taking all the short rides, that means you are getting nothing but nature hikes, which are low profit rides. So the bank accounts of everybody in Phoenix right now will be affected. Your bank account will be affected with Waymo plan right now. But if you can somehow get these drivers to convert the cash rides, like tonight, me and King James, we got to play tonight. We're going to go up and do, do some rides somewhere. And Jesse, if you out there, hey, hit us up. You can roll with us. I know uh, my man, Logan Block. Logan, he's in town right now. Logan Block from Vegas is right now. He's in Phoenix doing deliveries and shit over in Gilbert. He hit me up earlier today. So hopefully he hits us up tonight and he wants to roll with us because I got a plan that we can all do cash rides in this one area of town because there's no drivers there at all. Mr. Perfect is in. Hey, Mr. Perfect, you want to roll with us? Hey, we're going to meet tonight probably up to 51 or up to 17. They're the one-on-one, -on -one, maybe up by Tatum. We're going to try to head up to Cave Creek. We're going to see what we can do up in Cave Creek tonight because we know, you know, Buffalo Chips and all these bars up there have no drivers. I usually sit at the Circle K up there, and I get pings nonstop. But the problem is they're garbage. <laughs> so hit up Old Town. And see, that's the thing, Mooley. I like going Scottsdale, Old Town, but this is the thing. There's a lot of tourists that come there. And what people don't realize is that when you walk out of a bar in Old Town, you can walk out of a boondocks there. You can get a ride right there. But most of the bars that are in the horseshoe, cars can't get in the horseshoe. So they got to cut through the alleyway and come on the back end. They don't know it. So they just stand by the bar the whole time thinking the car is going to pass through, not paying attention to, hey, there's no cars passing through. Because in the horseshoe, they got it blocked off with the big metal things. Cars don't come through. But they're used to going to cities being able to walk out of a bar 
and their car is right there. It's not like that in Old Town. We got a lot of people here who are not, you know, from Old Town and they don't get it. They don't see why everybody's walking through the alleyways, getting to the back end. And you would just be sitting there all night texting people. They'd be like, where are you at? Where are you at? Motherfucker, I'm where the ping is. Get to where, look at your phone and see where the ping is. Get to the ping. That's where I am. I'm outside the bar. I'm in front of Bottle Blonde. I'm like, motherfucker, is the ping inside of, in front of Bottle Blonde? No. The ping is at the ride share pickup. You got to walk. Welcome to Scottsdale. You got to walk. And a lot of people don't get that shit. So I'm like, man, I fucking thump, cancel. I'm out. <laughs> I don't even fuck with them people. As soon as I see them not moving for like a minute, nope, they're not from here. Cancel. I'm out. I'll just pick up somebody around the corner. He'd be like, oh, man, I keep getting canceled because you ain't moving, motherfucker. Welcome to Scottsdale. You got to get your ass to the pickup. You can't just stand in front of the bar. No, no. And that's why I don't like picking up in Scottsdale. I get too many pings from tourists and people just they waste your fucking time because waiting there. Then you got to wait till it times out. Then you got to call them. Then Oh, well, we're on our way. We didn't know we had to walk to even if you texting them. They're not looking at their phone. They trying to party and talk and get the last few phone numbers and shit they trying to get. They ain't looking at their phone. So you got to sit there until the motherfucker times out. I've been doing that shit way too much. So I'm like, cancel right off the bat. If I see they ain't moving, cancel. Okay, send me another one. <laughs> Man, yeah, it feels good to stand your ground and cancel on passing who makes you wait. Been telling them they need to be ready and then cancel. Oh, yeah, Seth. That's, that's what it is, man. If they not ready, next driver. Because as soon as I cancel with somebody right ahead of me, ready for a fucking ride every time. You're like, oh, shit, there's somebody right there. Let's go. You pull up a few car lengths. Motherfucker been waiting on the ride. Like, yeah, these motherfuckers still standing in front of the bottle blind right now. They ain't moving. They still standing in front of Dirk's Bentley or whatever. They ain't moving. They not from here. They don't get it. And they can't even, like, rationalize, like, logically, that the pin, the pickup pin, is not where they're standing. It's over in the ride share pickup area. They probably looking at their phone like, why is he over there? Because I'm right next to the pickup pen. Why do you think the pickup pen is there? You need to get there. It's like you, you don't see no cars around you driving, not a single headlight or tail light, but you standing there waiting on a fucking car. All you see is people everywhere. And you stand there waiting on the car. I'm like, these motherfuckers is either drunk or stupid. One of the two. Cancel. <laughs> I don't play with that shit, but I'll be moving. Exactly. Especially with those $3. Not ready. On to the next. We don't get paid enough. We don't get paid enough, man. What up, Dom in the building, my man? What's good? What's good? Dom's out in L.A. doing it. This shit's been draining, depressing, and frustrating as fuck. Sitting in the parking lot all day for Spark just to make 110 bucks. And this is what they're doing to us, man. They're slowly whittling us down. And that's why, you know, when I put that Tucker Carlson clip, and that's not even the whole clip. Tucker Carlson went in even deeper. But I put that clip in there to show people even the powers that be, everybody who's like important people, government people, news anchors, you know, podcasters, everybody around the world realizing what is going on with America. The only people not realizing that shit is people going, ooh, I'm going to do this $120. I'm going to do this $120 and for 80 ride challenge. I'm like, dude, do you realize you chasing like a $1.50 per ride challenge to beat your fucking car? Do you know why? Because that's immigrant money. The immigrants are chasing that shit. We know what we worth. Give me a better bonus than that. I'm not doing no bonus for that. No 50 cent per ride bonus, dollar per ride bonus. That's not American people money. That's immigrant money. The immigrants love that shit. They're chasing that. They're fucking stacking a ton of rides doing that. That's not for you, an American. But when you play that role, you you know better than the damn immigrants. You just as stupid about the American economy. You out here driving for 50 cent a ride to put that shit. Well, there's money I didn't have. You know what? If you need 50 cent that bad, stand next to the motherfucker at the gas pump at Circle K and just beg for it. I mean, you won't even put no gas. You, I guarantee you can walk around Circle K and get more money than these goddamn bonuses. I'm going to try that shit one night. I'm going to get some dirty ass fucking clothes on like I just worked on my car and I'm going to stand at Circle K and collect fucking money and see how much I can get. And I guarantee I can collect more money at Circle K than these motherfucking ride bonuses. I'm going to do that shit. I might get beat up a couple of fucking times, but I'm going to do that shit just for fucking content. <laughs> I'll say, Jeff, what happened, man? I got beat up by two old ladies, man. They got tired of me. I was trying to squeeze their motherfucking window. But I'm really going to stand my ass at circle. I'm going to walk around and go, hey, man, hey, man, that's my nice ass fucking BMW over there clean as a motherfucker. But they say, you dirty as a bitch. Yeah, man, I need gas. I can't afford that and gas at the same time. I just need a dollar. I bet by the end of the night, I'm going to have more than these motherfuckers chasing bonuses and that car going to sit in the same spot all night. 
And I'm like, what, man? I'm like, dude, I'm not homeless. I'm not a bum, dog. I'm just, I just need some money, man. I got to gas this bitch up and get back across town. Oh, man, I hate to see you down and out, brother. Here you go. Give me a dollar. See, I ain't even do a ride. <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers going to be like, Jeff just collected more money on from fucking Circle K acting like a bum than these motherfuckers chasing these challenges. That's how stupid these challenges are. We used to get fucking 400 in the challenge, 350 in the challenge, 600, 700, 800 in challenges, ride bonuses. Now these motherfuckers, ooh, I get $75. I get $120. All I got to do is talk to 60 people. 60 people give me $2 at Circle K. I just completed a fucking ride bonus and my car ain't even fucking moved yet. <laughs> it's like, man, they're going to be like, dude, I'm like, yeah, this is this is what you ride challenge motherfuckers look like. Homeless people chasing these goddamn dollar a mile fucking bonuses and shit. For real, Mr. Perfect, man, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And it's like they lowering their worth, lowering their value, trying to justify why being cheap is good for the economy of ride share. Why being so cheap is good for like America. Oh, the cheaper we make it, and if we just sell ourselves out and we just act like we want to drive, they'll give us more money. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. The cheaper you sell yourself, the more discounts they're going to keep asking for you. First, is, you know, they're going to pay you two dollars a ride. They're going to give you a dollar fifty a ride, then a dollar a ride, then 50 cents. They're going to see when you break. A lot of us have already broke. We broke. We like, fuck this shit. I'm not doing this. Nope, not doing it. We've already, our point of elasticity has been reached. We got mortgages. We got to pay cars. We got to pay. We're standing up. We not sitting there dealing with this bullshit. We're standing up. A lot of people say, I'm not willing to stand up. I'm not standing up. No, no, I'm not standing up against them. I'm just going to keep driving. You're part of the problem. What makes you think you still driving for this cheap shit is going to fix the cheap shit? It's not. It propagates it. It makes them say, hey, don't worry about these people protesting it. Don't worry about these people mad about us not paying them because we got enough slaves to keep doing this shit. What are we worried about? And the slaves are like, yeah. And when the slaves end up homeless and we all sitting around looking good, they're going to end up coming over on our channel one day. Hey, man, is there any way you guys can kind of what a minute, help you out? What the fuck are you talking about? Help you out. We tried to help you out by standing up for you, by standing up for what your value is, because you wouldn't even stand for your own value. We stood up for you. And now you asked out over here asking for help now. We tried to say, come on our side, stand for value, stand for worth, do something. I ain't going to do that. I'm not doing that. Cool. When your motherfucking wife leave your ass or your husband leave your ass or somebody got money because you broke as a motherfucker living out of a Prius. Man, I should have listened to those guys. Yeah, because now your wife went and got with somebody that got an apartment. She got somewhere to fucking live. You ain't got nowhere to live because you've been driving for fucking 50 cent a mile, 50 cent a ride, goddamn bonuses. You ain't got nowhere to live now. We fighting for life, fighting for our lifestyle, fighting for families, keeping families together, keeping families out of poverty. That's what we fighting for. The protest is about acknowledging. It ain't about trying to destroy it. We're going to destroy the fucking app. The apps will be destroyed in the process, I think, especially Lyft, those raggedy motherfuckers. They will be destroyed in the process, but it's to bring attention to how America is being damaged, how these apps are damaging the economy of this country by allowing people, immigrants. And I'm going to tell you something about immigrants, too. And there's no disrespect to people out there who are real immigrants trying to come out here and get work and everything like that, trying to make money. But imagine the people who are using this system to get people's addresses, to know people who are going to work, what time they're going to work, when they go to work, where they work. Because imagine some who ain't even on documents. These immigrants are not documented. They are not in our system. So you see them on a ring doorbell camera. You don't know who the fuck they are. They're not even in our police system. So they come pick you up for work, take you to work. You get off work, come home, your house been broken into. You look on a motherfucking ring cam. Excuse me, ring camera. You're like, damn, that's the same motherfucker that dropped me off work this morning. Immigrants. <laughs> it's like, you don't know his name. He was probably on a fake fucking ID driving under somebody's account. And, and next thing you know, you sitting there going, why did I even trust these old ragged ass apps? They sitting there, you know, hiring all these people that, that aren't even identified. We have no idea who these people are, you know, knowing where we live, knowing where we work, knowing where our kids go to school and shit like that. We don't know these people. They just showed up on this soil. They ain't even in our system. And you think Lyft and Uber is really vetting these people to that degree? Probably not. Probably not. Because they're looking at profits. They don't give a fuck about the safety or security of the American family, the profitability of the American. They don't give a shit. They don't care. They're like, bro, look at all these fucking immigrants we got working now. 
shit, we gonna make a ton of money. They ain't work of shit. It's not about how much you can save the corporation, how much profits the corporation you can make, but it's how much risk are you putting into these fucking communities out there? Freely saying where people work, talking to them. Oh yeah, man, we got a nice 75 inch TV. Yeah, just got off a of vacation. I bought this, I bought that. Drop the motherfucker off work, come home later today. My TV's gone. All the shit I bought on vacation is gone. What the fuck? Immigrants got your ass. <laughs> it's like, and you try to contact the apps, and the apps is like, we don't know who that is. We don't have any driver that looks like that. We don't know what you're talking about. That's not one of our drivers. Well, he was on the app. I, he picked me up. We don't know him. He was renting that fucking account from somebody. He bought that account off of somebody. We don't know that guy. You don't know what these people are doing. When you got desperate people, who have come thousands and thousands of miles from home trying to get by, trying to get something going on. You put them in a desperate situation. And when you put people in a desperate situation, they may do some desperate shit. And you don't know when it's going to happen. You can't plan on it. All you can do is try to shield yourself from it happening. So was, I'm one of those people that say, I don't want motherfuckers like just knowing where I live. I don't even know who the fuck these people are. If they're vetted or not. Have no idea. Yeah, the apps are actively fighting your ability to make money. Real shit, real shit. And they're doing it on purpose. Be and time to wake up. He talks about it a lot. He talks about it a lot. The great reset. And I don't think a lot of people are realizing what's happening. We've got people in the media that's doing. That's why I watch podcasts. Not I don't watch a newscast. A newscast is people in power selling you a fucking narrative. That's a newscast. A podcast is people who speak their fucking mind and will tell you truths. They will probably get banned and blocked off of different social media accounts because they ain't going to hold back. That's why I like the podcast. I don't like the newscast. I'm not here to give you no newscast. I'll tell you what's up. And you can go watch other shit and research shit. We just dropping little jewels and nuggets here and there. You can go research the shit and find out, damn, you guys are right. Damn. So when they sitting there talking about the Great Reset and how their America was too, America was too much of a liability. And you know America is a liability when they put on our, our money now that it's a debt instrument. It's not an instrument of wealth. It's a debt instrument. Amer the American dollar is one of the only currencies that talks about it being a debt instrument because we're so deep in fucking debt. That just handles debt. That's all it is. It's a debt instrument. It's not an equity instrument. Equity and debt are two different fucking things. So all these dollars we got are responsible for debt for something else that we haven't. Look at our fucking deficit. Look at all the crazy shit we got. All the money we got. So how do you get out of all of this debt? You just reset everything. You just re you get out of debt, reset it. Let and when America says, "Hey, we can't climb out of debt at the current rate of interest, the current rate of taxes, the current rate of everything. We can't climb out of debt." And other countries come together and go, "We'll help you get out of debt, but you got to sell us America. We need to have America." China starts buying all the land up. Everybody's like, "Why is China buying land in America, but America can't buy land in China?" What the fuck? That's backwards. America, China won't allow you to do that shit. But yet China's over here buying up all of our fucking farmland. People need food to eat. They're buying up all of our farmland. If they control your food supply, hunger's a powerful fucking vibe. If you hungry as shit, trust me, you're going to do anything to eat. So you get a communist nation in a free country owning all the fucking farmland. Put two and two together. Math is right in front of you. Math is right. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like that. And some people don't even see it happening. They don't see, oh shit, China's buying all of the farm. They, they're so they're still chasing 50 cent a ride fucking challenges. They don't even see shit like that. So we're trying to educate them on why the economy is going in the direction it's going, why people are being created as being slave races now. Why gig workers that used to make good money doing what we do in different cities, why we used to be okay putting our cars, buying investments, you know, going out buying these expensive cars, these big ass SUVs, buying fleets of cars. We used to be okay doing that. But now you telling me a bonus is 50 cents? That's a bonus? 50 cents is a bonus? Hell no, I'm not doing that. No, no. A 50 cent is not a bonus for a grown-up. 50 cent is what you give like some fifth graders for dusting off the fucking erasers after school. Hey, you want 50 cent? Yeah, dust these erasers off. You don't tell me you're going to give me 50 cent if I drive 20 fucking miles for somebody. Hey, you want 50 cent? Yeah, drive this person, drop this person off 20 miles. We're going to pay for it, but then we're going to give you a 50 cent bonus on the back end. Okay, can't wait. That's what these motherfuckers are doing. Can't wait. I'll do it. I'm going to do these 80 rides and I'm going to get this 50 cent. They're going to need $40, $45. I'm going to get this 50 cent. I'm going to hit this challenge. It's 50 cent I ain't got. <laughs> I'm like, if you need it that bad, go to fucking Circle K. Just beg for the shit. If you need it that bad, damn. 
<laughs> that's like, that's what I'm going to do. Exactly. That's grown man shit. $200 bonus for 10 rides. Because you already tired as a motherfucker. You already been beat down and everything. And so you need 10 more rides of the week. All right, cool. You get $200. You know, do these last 10. It's kind of like working overtime. You don't already work 40 hours all week. Tell you what, give me some more hours. I'll pay your time and a half. Ride share is the only industry where you do a lot of overtime and you get paid less. You don't get time and a half. You get paid less to work more. What industry is that? That's these idiots doing that shit. I can't wait to work 80 hours. You're not getting time and a half. You're not getting extra money on top of money. You're getting played the whole fucking time. That's all you're doing. And these apps see that. And these apps say, we have enough suckers in the industry now to survive. We needed suckers. We found them all. We could, these were not business people. These are a bunch of people who got fired from their jobs. They're all W-2 brain people who think, ooh, as long as I make this much per hour, I'm good. I used to make $20 an hour at the office. Now I'm making $24 an hour. Yeah, but you weren't using your car like a motherfucker at the office either. You weren't beating your car down at the office. You would not putting in a full tank of gas every day when you worked in the office. Shit's a little different. You can't base office employment on contract work. It's different. You got to look at profits. And if you're not covering profits, then what? Everything, you're going to be sitting around bitching. Bitching. We'll say, <laughs> say exactly, Jeff, as I was saying, you said, hold on, what did you say? What did you say? As sad as it is, the primary reason for these apps are able to get away with the low fares, low offers on food deliveries because they have desperate suckers out there eating them up. <laughs> exactly. Because like this channel is all about energy. A lot of drivers on this channel see exactly what's going on. We get trolls every once in a while jumping in the comments because these motherfuckers are bored. They be all over YouTube, all over Facebook looking for a home. They can't find a home. So they trying to come around and say shit. Half the shit we talk about on this channel, these motherfuckers come around like this is a brand new channel that was created like a few days ago. Oh, man. You guys don't even talk about profits over here. We talk about prop. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? We talk about profits all the time. Oh, we're talking about, you know, you guys talking about. I'm like, dude. You ain't even watched. Oh, I've been watching your videos. You're not talking about profits. You're only talking about hourly. I'm like, yeah, you raggedy motherfucker. You have no idea what you're looking at. Maybe you're looking at my spark plug videos. I don't know what the fuck you're watching. Maybe you're watching my spark plug videos, but you're not watching, you know, what we talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah, he says the professor is out for blood. <laughs> This motherfucking professor is pissed. I told him, hey, you got the 300 sitting on deck. We got our seals and we got our swords, motherfucker. You got us sitting on deck because we're not happy about it either. Especially when I look at the fact that we built this industry and they're using all the money, all the profits that we generated because they don't make money unless we accept the ride. If we don't accept the ride, how are these apps making money? Uber Eats, that's about it. How are they making money if we don't accept the ride? So we're the ones generating the revenue. Uh, a customer can sit there all day and say, I need a ride. I need a ride. I need a ride. They could do that shit for four hours straight. Uber is not going to make a dime until we say, I accept. So we're the ones allowing these people to treat us like that. All you got to say is decline. Nope. Cancel. Nope. You know what? I'm going to go over here and say, hey, you know what? They normally pay me like $30 for this fucking ride. They're giving me $13 for this ride. They normally pay like $30, $40 with it. Oh, shit. We paid $72. i am only getting $13. Tell you what. They be like, let's just do $50. Fine. Let's do $50. Closed mouths don't get fed. I say that shit a lot on this channel. Closed mouths don't get fed. A lot of people want to, oh, you guys are going to, you know, get kicked off the app for doing that. Let them. Because no matter what, I'm going to end up evicted any fucking ways. I'd rather be evicted with a ton of money in my pocket than evicted with nothing because they're going to deactivate your ass for no reason. That, how many people have been deactivated that you know of for uh, just a rider going, oh, I didn't feel safe in that car. Uh, he called me a name. Uh, he made me feel like deactivated. So you deactivate it with no fucking profits. If you're going to deactivate me, at least let me have the profits. I'm going to make the fucking money. So whether I make it through Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, I'm going to make the money. You could deactivate me later. But I'm not going to sit up there and let you treat me like shit, then kick me out the fucking door at the same time. No, nah, I doubt it. Doubt it. <laughs> He's not wearing a face diaper. <laughs> yeah. This is change the channel name to Uber GPZ for profit so these ragamuffins will get it. Exactly. Hey, dude, I'm telling you, these it's so many trolls out there now. And I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot of drivers on here, we, we really get it in on this channel. And I'll say that. We really get it in. We really talk about it. We have a good time. So people talk about it on Facebook. They talk about it on Instagram, wherever they are. Hey, man, you got to come with us on the live streams of Uber Jeep AZ. So people hear that pop up. 
So they think this is this channel is all me. They don't realize this channel is not just me. It's a lot of drivers involved in the conversation. We all put information on this channel. So they come on a channel. They see me sitting here and they thinking, I ain't never heard of this dude. I don't see this dude. Oh, I'm going to talk shit to him. When you troll me, you trolling everybody, motherfucker, because we all talk about the same shit over here. You trying to troll a whole fucking energy without even looking at the room you just walked into. Just imagine jumping down into a motherfucking lion's den and you thinking it's a bunch of kittens in that motherfucker. You jump in that bitch and there's lions all around. You're like, oh, shit. I just saw a kitten, so I jumped in, and there's fucking lions in here. Yeah, wrong spot. <laughs> it's like you might want to fucking look around at where you at. Because a lot of these trolls, they come and they think it's just me. Oh, I'm going to talk shit about him. I'm. A you think you really want to do that? I might save you. I might save you by just blocking you and keeping you off my fucking channel. Because look at Spencer Fred. That motherfucker ain't nowhere to be found. He walked into the lion's den. Spencer Fred walked to the motherfucker ain't nowhere to be found. You look at people like Tork and, and all that whole crew over there with that dude delivery that has no idea that we have all delivery drivers over here, that I'm a delivery driver too. All that shit they try to talk because they don't watch my content. What happened to them? They jump into the lion's den. Motherfuckers like that will never go nowhere because they don't pay attention to the rooms they're walking into. You can't walk through this gig industry blindfolded. Know what these fucking apps are doing to you? Know what channels are saying, what they're not saying, who's supporting you, who's not supporting you. You can't walk around this bitch with a blindfold on. Know where you're going. Pay attention. If you're not paying attention to detail and you're just running your fucking mouth all the time, you're going to walk into a lion's den. And once that happens, you can blame yourself for not paying attention. Lions and eagles. <laughs> what, well, Dom's day? I was deactivated from Uber, DoorDash last year. And still haven't gotten back on the platform. It's frustrating that the five years of driving, that's the thanks I get. Exactly. After you help build this shit, and you get all these new employees at Uber, new employees at Lyft, new CEOs, new executives, new accountings, all these new marketing directors and all these new people. But yet the people who actually sat here and made the fucking money get looked down at. Imagine if we all turn, like I said, February 14th is going to be a motherfucker. February 14th is going to wake a lot of people up because they're going to have to put out a lot of surge. And I'm going to tell you right now, I hope to pray. Anybody who drives that day traps 15, 20, 30 dollar fucking surges and use that shit on two, three dollar rides and shit. Be like, man, I'm paying. I'm getting twenty two dollars to go three miles. I'm getting eighteen dollars to go four miles. I hope you motherfuckers use it right. Do not be taking no nature hikes with these surges. Find the keep Harriet Tubman the shit out of that surge until your ass get the shortest ride. You could possibly a motherfucker go around the block. I got forty four dollars for a mile and a half. Eat they ass alive. Eat their ass alive on February the 14th because we're going to be sitting around like, oh, I ain't starting. To Please, y'all, we need help. Everybody get online so the algorithm stops throwing surge out. Nope. The algorithm going to be throwing out surge like fucking crazy. And I hope anybody that's driving out there, use your fucking brain, eat their ass up, make $1,000 in one day and say, man, I only drove 100 miles and I made $1,000. Eat their ass alive. And I hope they sit up and go, that was a hard day. That was a bloodbath. Watch they fucking stock tank into the ground. Watch Darius say, damn, I ain't getting my 50 mil. No, because if these motherfuckers did it on February the 14th and they know how bad they fucked us up and they see all these people online talking about how much money they made. Me, I'm making zero. I tell you on January the 19th, I'm telling you right now, I'm making zero on February the 14th unless it's a private ride. I'm making zero. Because I believe in what we're doing. I believe in making an impact. I believe that action is better than inaction. I believe that speaking up is better than silence. Silence is compliance. Yeah, I might do a live on February the 14th. I got some things that I want to do on February, but I, I think I might do it. I'm going to have to do it from my phone, though, because I'll be out and about ripping and running. But I'm going to do it from my phone. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun because I've never done a live stream from my phone. So even though I'm doing it, y'all might be like, he's not looking at the phone that much. Don't worry about it. I'm still going to live stream. <laughs> Yeah, I know it, man. I got to. I got to do it, man. It's, it's no other way to do it. I got to do it. And so the, the thing is, is that if we speak up about it and all these people who don't speak about it, all these people who don't say shit, I'm going to tell you right now, especially for certain channels, the, the fact that they're not speaking about the shit. This is what fucks me up. The moment we make an impact, the moment we make a change, the moment we make a difference, the moment these apps finally say, OK, we got fucked. OK, the stock's kind of tanked after that shit. Something happened big that day. Every channel that's not speaking in in support of us, watch their content the next day. Watch their content. Oh, yeah, I stand by the drivers. I support the drivers. You guys did amazing. Yeah, motherfucker, you ain't help. You ain't help. 
Don't sit around talking about how beautiful the house looks because the paint job looks good on the fucking house when you ain't ever pick up a paintbrush. You was walking back and forth down a sidewalk. And we said, hey, man, you want to help us paint this house? No, I'm good. I'm good. You sure you don't want to help us paint this house? It's a big house, man. You can help us paint it. No, I'm good. I'm good. Then when the house is all done and beautiful and shit, oh, man, that's that's an amazing paint job. That shit looks real nice. That looks real nice. Of course it does, motherfucker. We took our time. We put our heart and our passion into it. And that's why I think February the 14th, it's news stations talking about that shit already. News stations already talking about February the 14th. This is going to be major. A lot of drivers, all the drivers in all of these chats and all these comments, all over YouTube, all over Facebook. This is the force that's moving forward. There's a lot of people sitting around going, I don't think it's going to work. I'm going to drive that day. I'm going to get money. Knock yourself the fuck out. Knock yourself. But you get no sympathy from a warrior once you when your family go downhill. After February the 14th, and we see where all the chips are, we see who the supporting people are, who the people who aren't supporting are. Trust me on this shit. Don't come at me. Jeff, you know, no, nah, motherfucker, because I saw on February the 14th, you made a killing. You made a killing. Now it's August. You want to be in my face? I'm about some, can you help me? Fuck you, motherfucker. We told you February the 14th is the day you stand up. The day you stand up. You don't stand up on February the 14th. Don't say shit to me in August when you're going downhill. Don't say shit to me in September when you're going downhill. We tried to stand up in February. So if we stand up in February, you stand with us. Like I said, if you got to drive, you got to do your shit because you just don't got your money together. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. At least do good rides. At least do fucking big surge. Don't do no average daily shit. Don't do no shit that we do every day anyways. Dollar a mile, dollar fifty a mile. Don't do that. You got to go out there and get it, man. Go get it. Exactly, Andy. They want to hop at the point at the end of the race. Fuck them weak channels. And I, you know, Andy, I say that shit all the time. Motherfuckers always want to jump in the car that's already in first place. I've never been that way. I've always been for the underdog my whole life. Like I said, I was supposed to, you know, print out some of those uh, emails. I mean, my, uh, my resignation letters from corporate when I used to speak to the executives about the employees that were under me and how they were being treated and how I was standing up for everybody in the company. I actually got all those fucking uh, resignation letters because I've always been like this. I've always wanted the underdog to fucking, you know, have strength. Because I've been an underdog. I was born in a fucking hood. The hood is an underdog. So when you got underdog fucking in your soul, you feel for people that are underdogs. I look at corporate. I look at all these people as arrogant motherfuckers who just don't even understand what's going on. They jumped in the car that was already in first place. You can't jump in the car in first place and say, oh, we feel humanity. We feel people. No, you don't. You in the car in first fucking place. You don't see shit ahead of you except a finish line. You don't see nobody behind you. But when you in the back, and you looking at everything in front of you. You see this guy with a flat tire. You see this guy, his tailpipe is smoking. You see this guy's door fell off. You see his windshield. You see everything in front of you. So you see everybody problems when you're in the back looking forward. So you feel, motherfuckers. You go, man, I, I, I see like what happened to your car, man. I can see because I'm behind you. I see you. But when you got everybody behind you, you don't give a fuck about it. You don't see nobody. All you see is where you want to be. I just want to be at the finish line. Fuck everybody else. I want to see what's that. You don't see none of the issues behind you. You don't care about the issues behind you because that shit's behind you. When you got that type of personality, that's how you don't fucking support people. You got to, oh, yeah, if your car break down, you got to hear it and go pit real quick. Of course, you, oh, yeah, I feel sorry. No, you don't, motherfucker. You, you saying that shit because now you got to pit. Like you said, don't, don't wait till the ponies in front and then want to jump on it. A lot of motherfuckers want to always be in front. I tell people, I'm cool in the back. I made videos saying I'm the worst fucking YouTuber out there. I've said that. That shit. I don't give a fuck about being the worst. I don't give a fuck about being the most not liked. I feel like that's a position I've played my whole life. I'm good with that shit. Even my coach used to say, Jeff, why do you come out the block so slow? I win every race, but goddamn, Jeff, when you come out the blocks, you be the last one out every time. You were slow out of the blocks. I always won my race, though. <laughs> I used to come out of the blocks and see the back of everybody. Still pass those motherfuckers. The one day I actually came out and did right, I was at Illinois State. 1990, what was it? three or four. I was at Illinois State, 55 meter dash. I came out of the blocks exactly how he's always been riding my ass. I said, I'm going to do it today, coach. I'm going to stop fucking with you. He said, Jeff, just come out, man. Come on. We got some fast heat today, man. We got some fast heat. Came out of the blocks. I broke the record for Drake University. I set it at 6.25. The old record was 6.32. I ran 6.25. It was a record set in 1972 by Skeet Spotster. And I, I broke that record in 1993 or some shit because I finally did what my coach said. But I was okay with, I'm like, dude, I love coming out in last place because I always win. 
Motherfuckers be like, dude, Jeff ain't gonna win. He came out and last. Next, you know, how the fuck did he win? How did he catch all of y'all? What the fuck? It's like, hey man, I'm good being an underdog. <laughs> That's just what I'm good at, man. Yeah. This is, I think Sergio might be having a crisis of conscience because during the last live stream, I've never seen him be more negative and critical of the apps as he was, and it seemed authentic. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, drivers, this is about drivers. This is about integrity. This is about you being who you are and standing your ass in line at Circle K and motherfuckers going, what's up, dog? I like how you doing. But when you can't even stand at Circle K and the motherfucker respect you, they be, hey man, why you acting like this, dog? Hey, when you be online, why you back? Oh, well, you know, because I know people at Uber are watching, people that live, I gotta act like that. I'm told to act like that. I'm told to stand down. I'm told, motherfucker, be a man. At this age in our life, you can't tell me to stand down. And I think that's why a lot of people don't fuck with me, and I'm cool with that. Because if you, as a man, want to tell me, as a man, to stand down, I can't fuck with you. Because I would never tell you to stand down as a man. I say, speak your mind. I don't agree with a lot of fucking people. Speak your mind. I said, we can disagree. Just don't disrespect. That's where I draw the line. Disagree with me all you want. Disagree. Knock yourself out. Just don't disrespect. And sir, just know he can't bullshit any longer. Hey, because when motherfuckers, hey, you know, and you know why he can't bullshit? I'm going to tell you why. Screen recording. Screen recording to show the truth. When that motherfucker put that screen recording video up, look at how many views it got. How are you going to have that many views on your screen recording thing? And still come sideways like, oh, look, the apps are OK. Everything's fucking fine. No, no. Everybody saw your screen. You see what everybody else sees. So now you can't go back and say you don't see the shit that we talking about on these channels. You see what we talking about. Don't sit up. Oh, no. In my market, everything's great. Look at my screenshot. You know, look at my. No, nah, motherfucker. Ain't no screenshot. You screen recorded. Once you screen recorded, you just recorded the fucking truth and everybody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, Chris, hey, just like the screenshot I sent you, how the uh, lady was bragging about 95% AR, 1% cancer process. I was wondering why Rockford keeps their rate so low. One person can't ruin every can ruin everything. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. That lady, that lady right there that was talking about she takes this and she takes that. She was probably going to be one of those drivers that was going to be in the back of somebody's car when they going, yeah, I used to be an Uber driver. What happened? Oh, I told her my car out and I got to take Uber and you know, this and that. And I'm like, okay, so you told her your car, you didn't have enough profits to go get another one to pay. No, no, you know, Uber, you know, they were charging me the deductible was too much. I couldn't come on with the deductible. I just had to trash the car. See, when you driving for bullshit, that's the kind of stories you're going to hear from people who used to be drivers. I used to be a driver, but I couldn't come on with the deductible $2,500. So you're a business person, not an employee. You're a business person and you can't afford the deductible of the business you're doing. You can't even afford that deductible. It's not a good business. You got to have profits. And that's why my car don't fucking move. If my car don't move, I ain't going to wreck it. When it does move, I'm generating profits every time I move it. I'm not running my shit at a loss. It's too much risk involved with that. Driving all over town, picking up all these random ass people at a loss. I'm risking my life now. I'm risking my livelihood now. I get bumped just like when that dude hit me at the fucking light. I told the motherfucker right there, just give me 200. You cover this shit. You can go on about your business. But I wasn't going to pay for that shit out of my pocket. But think of how many people get into shit like that. And then their insurance be like, hey, yeah, your deductible is. And they go, uh, I don't have that deductible. Well, you need to come up with at least half of it. Because if you can't come up with half of it, we can't start the process. They fucked. They fucked right off the bat. Oh, yeah, it seems like the individual's types always find a new paradise first and it gets taken away, ruined by the authoritarians. Yep, yep. You're right, Larry. You're right, man. He's like, sorry, I'm laughing with you, not at you. Time to wake up is funny. He's funny. <laughs> just driving the web. So Sergio is a part of the problem. And I think what it is is that, and, and honestly, I would say, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, smaller channels out there are your better source of truth. Because smaller channels ain't looking for sponsorships. Smaller channels ain't worried about nobody at, you know, fucking title loans looking at what you're saying. It ain't worried about Uber Lyft looking at what you're saying. Smaller channels are going to tell you how it is in a fucking market. They ain't going to bullshit you. I like that Uber Boston guy, whatever he is, the Uber Boston guy, whatever. I like his channel. He, he does just like he's a high profit driver, a lot of surge cruises around, rejects bullshit, won't put himself in the middle of an area that he don't want to be in, won't put himself in heavy traffic. I like how he drives. He's a very smart, analytical guy. 
I don't, I never, you know, really chatted with him or nothing like that. I just watch his content and I'm like, dude, I feel how this dude driving. I like him. Yeah. Uber Boston. Yeah. Yeah. I like that dude. Uber Boston. I don't, I never like really chatted with him, but I like his shit. And when you get with smaller channels and you see how everybody like is really talking about profits and, and taking care of your family, not putting your car at risk. This is your equipment. Don't put your equipment at risk for a dollar a mile when they're, they're going to give you $2, $3. And if you if you're in an area that's forcing you to get 50 cent a mile, dollar a mile, you need to start considering converting some of those rods. You got to start considering it at some point, because if you're not considering converting these rods over to cash, you're going to have to slave it through a system where you're not making any profits. You and your equipment is going to be at risk. I'm just telling you what's real. This is real life. That's the flow of energy. That's the flow of how shit's going to go. You're going to be driving and you're going to say, man, I should have been converting the last 600 rods I did to fucking cash. I did the last 600 rides I did at bullshit fairs, and now I can't fucking buy a set of tires now. When at least I would have if I would have converted at least half of them, a third of them, I would have had enough money to go buy a tire and not be stressed right now. And that's what profits do. Profits don't do shit but take away stress. A profit ain't gonna take away your problem. You're gonna have a car problem. Your alternator gonna go out. You're gonna need new fucking tires. Profits don't take away that shit. Profits just take away the stress. That's all. We all going to have issues, but do you have the money to cover that shit? If you don't, now you got stress and a problem. If you got money, all you got is a problem. You don't have stress. The worst is to have stress and a problem. So I'm like, fuck that. I'll have all the problems, but I will not have the stress. How do I eradicate the stress? That's one thing I can control, stress level. I said, what about the guy with the long hair and the Peru lady killer? Was that the long hair and the Peru lady? I never heard about that. The long hair and the Peru lady killer. Yeah. Yeah, we ain't no yellow cab in Jamaica. <laughs> we ain't no yellow cab. This is the thing that kills me is these 2 o'clock a.m. multi-stops. I'm not delivering your drugs, drug dealer. Exactly. And they know that shit. And this is what happens. And I've done that before. I picked up a girl thinking, you know, this is going to be an easy run. She probably got to go to Circle Cam back. No, she went to an apartment complex and then back to her apartment. All she did was go drop off some drugs and pick up some drugs. That's all she did. And I'm sitting there like, and they did it right in the parking lot. Right there in the parking lot. And I'm sitting there like, wow, this is fucking crazy. They're using ride share as drug because they know cops not going to pull us over most likely. A cop will pull them over if their shit's already tapped. Like, let's say their car had been stopped before and they got caught dealing drugs before or caught doing something before. So their car is marked. My car is not marked. So, of course, they're going to start calling Ubers all the time. Hey, come take me here. Multi-stop. Two o'clock in the morning, multi-stop. And this ain't Circle K. This is the somebody's car somewhere. They get out. You, you know, you do a little deal. You do a little finagling and shit. And I'm like, yeah, this probably shouldn't be happening to my car. Now, I, I shouldn't be doing this shit. I'm in the wrong spot right now because if a cop is watching this shit, they're going to see my car. Now my Uber is marked now. I'm going to say, oh, that car, he'd be around prostitutes and drugs like Logan. Logan be getting stopped by cops all the time in that fucking Benz. <laughs> mm. Was a oh man, I had a screenshot the other day and there was a multi stock six mile ride and they wanted to pay me five seventy nine. Please, please, yeah, that shit. Nah, even with these multi stops, I had one and I did it on. I did a video on it where I picked up some people downtown and I took them home and they were sitting in the back seat and it was twelve bucks to take them like four miles south. I'm like, who oh, I could do that? Twelve bucks for them. They wanted to turn around and go back. They said, we just came home to pick up something. We're going back. I said, well, don't add a stop. Motherfucker paid me. He Venmo my ass $15 real quick. Because I'm like, do not add a stop. Because I will end this motherfucker right here. <laughs> I don't like that shit. Because as soon as they add a stop, the app's going to charge them 20 bucks. And I'm going to get like four out of that. App's going to make $16. And I'm going to get four extra dollars. Like, nah, don't add a stop. Don't do that. And that's what these people that's doing stops need to know. If you need to do a stop, if you're a rider and you need to do a stop, I say, only put the first leg on there. Only put the first leg, if it, especially if it's short. Don't put two legs on it. Put one. Put yourself to Circle K. Offer the driver money to go back. That's how I found one of my private clients. She was like, I just got to go to the store and come back. She didn't put the whole trip. She just put to the store. That's all she put. But she was like, are you okay with taking me back if I had to stop? I was like, nah, not really. I said, well, what if I just give you 10 bucks? I was like, that's cool. I could do 10 bucks. And now she's a private client now. But I'm one of those people. If you're going to do a stop and you know you need to go somewhere and back, do not add it as a stop. A driver will turn that shit down every time. Make it a one way, four dollars, you know, point nine of a mile. That's all you do. If you need to go back home, 
get a driver five, 10 bucks. You're going to get picked up. But if you put that shit as a stop there and back, the driver going to see something like you said, 579 for like six miles. They're not taking it. A driver's not taking that. And that's why we need more riders in the network to talk to drivers. We could communicate with riders all we want to. The fact that we don't communicate, that fucks everything up. Because that got to sit up there and they got to say, oh, man, I got to go through the app. You don't got to go through the app. The app is a bridge. We do the work. If you need the work done, just let me know what you need done. We do the work. Hey, Jeff, I need to go to work. Hey, Jeff, I need you to pick me up to go to a club. Just can't. Just call me. Text me. We do the work. But when you go through the app, the app is going to have you do a lot of fuckery and all this crazy shit. App's going to take a huge chunk out of it. We, the driver, going to look at that and be like, nah. And you're going to be sitting there all damn day trying to find a driver to do that little. You got to do something real quick. But the apps aren't paying the drivers for that real quick shit. The apps took all the money. And you think, well, man, I paid $14 for that. Why ain't I getting picked up? Because the driver's getting $4.11. That's why you're not getting picked up. So if you'd have talked to the driver straight up and said, hey, man, I give you 10 bucks, driver, you're like, cool. I'll be there in a minute. 10 bucks, cool. Because, you know, the app's only going to give us $4. That's it. So we got to keep that line of communication open. Keep that shit open. Solomon's, I love that dude. Really, you know his market, man. I'll be out here doing it, man. We got to get out there and get it. So I, and I tell people, man, once you understand the people around you, because like the other day, Dalton. So Dalton's got two Teslas. So he's got the Y and he's got the three. So he drives this. This just happened. Dalton just hit me up with this. So, you know, Rick, if you out there, you can let Dalton know I'm talking shit about him right now. <laughs> he just say, hey, man, Jeff's talking shit about you again. What did you tell Jeff? So Dalton, he's got two Teslas. He goes to pick up this lady and the Model Y. Totally forgetting on his app that he's got model three because he didn't switch him over. And I've done that shit before. I even said it in a video that I've done it before. And I told the reason why I've done it before. So I was so he went to pick the lady up in the model Y nicer than the model three. In my opinion, the lady was like, it's not a model three. She turned his ass in to Uber. She turned him in and Uber fucking put a safety flag on him, all this shit on his account and everything. He ain't never, he's a five-star driver, ain't never had shit. He showed me his account, all fucking fives, no four, three, twos, one, nothing. Fucked his whole shit up. So he had to go back and forth, tell Uber the whole fucking story, everything else like that. Uber finally took it off this morning. They took that mark off, so he's back at all fives and shit. Put him back and sent his ass a big-ass apology fucking text. <laughs> He sent me the text and everything. Send him the apology. And I'm like, dude, he says, man, these people are fucked. And this is what they do to you. That's why I say know who you're fucking with sometimes. Don't always offer people a deal because you might end up with a lady like that. Just some old shithead that just wants to act like a Karen. One time when I was picking up somebody from the Suns game, I'm driving a Jeep. I come around the corner, pull up. And this is when we still had lift. So I'm running my fucking Lux. I'm like, fuck that shit. I hit the block. I'm cruising around. Big ass surge. Motherfucker, I'm sitting there looking dead at the people. I'm looking at these motherfuckers. I'm like, if y'all don't come the fuck on, man, it's like, I'm about to leave y'all ass in a minute. So I hit the horn. The guy looks at me, and he looks at his phone. He walks over. He goes, Jeff? I go, yeah. He says, oh, we're looking for a BMW. I go, oh, shit. I forgot to change it in my phone. <laughs> so I'm mad at them, and they not even looking for a fucking Jeep. I'm like, motherfucker, y'all slow ass idiotic. Look at this big ass motherfucker Jeep sitting here. You blind motherfucker, wake up. The fuck wrong with y'all? Come the fuck on. We're looking for a little ass BMW. <laughs> so the guy was like, oh, this is much better, anyways. So I take them all the way to Fountain Hills. They fucking tip me out. We talking about the Jeep. We cruising. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry, man. My bad. I forgot. I got to go into the like Uber tells you. Which car are you using? Uber will ask you that. Which vehicle are you using? Lyft don't ask you. Lyft just, if you log on, you're logged on to whatever the last car you had. <laughs> so it's like, shit. So I'm sitting there mad at these motherfuckers, and they looking at me like, do you even know who you are? But you driving around in a big-ass Jeep thinking you're in a Beamer. You idiot. We should turn your ass in. <laughs> so I was like, sorry about that. Oh, vicious. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. Jeff, love your channel, dog. You, you're a real one. Hey, man. I tell motherfuckers, we keep it 100 over here. And, and we know we're drivers. We know what we're doing is for. We enjoy driving. We love our vehicles. And that's why I'm pissed that Lux ain't still here because we love driving our vehicles. We love how they look, how they feel. We bought them for a reason. We bought these cars because we wanted to buy them, not because we had to. I wanted to. 
And so now I'm driving a car that I want to drive, that I enjoy driving, that I feel good driving. And motherfucker tell me it's not a luxury car no more to us. It's just like a regular car. So now we're pissed. Now we're pissed. Like, dude, how are you going to tell me this nice ass fucking car is not a luxury car? I drive it every day. I know what luxury feels like. Shit feels like luxury. My Jeep don't feel like luxury. It looks nice, but it's not luxury. This shit's luxury. Not to us, it's not. It's just basic. It's like, shit, I don't pick up no motherfucker unless I got a surge now. Surge, big tip, something. I ain't picking nobody up because we don't have any other option. We can't argue and fight back and say, hey, man, can you put me back on? Nope, nope. No. So what we do, we take a stand just like on February the 14th. Like I said, if you don't speak up, closed mouths don't get fed. And there's a lot of drivers out there don't that don't see. And that's why when I do some of my videos, I put my last year numbers versus this year's numbers. So people see the difference because a lot of the new people, they don't know. They was at a W2. They just knew to this shit. They thinking, man, this is the most money I ever made, dog. I made six hundred dollars, you know, in the week. I made seven hundred this week. I'm like, motherfucker, last year I made twenty one hundred in the same fucking week. What are you talking about? What? Yeah. But I made twenty one hundred last week doing this shit. I mean, last year doing this shit. This year is 662. That's the difference. But they don't know the difference because they don't. They, we're the bridge to that gap. It's a huge gap in, in the lack of knowledge. We bridge that gap from the old to the new. It's kind of like motherfuckers who used to use the phones that hang on the wall versus people that use pagers that people that use cell phones now. We used all those motherfuckers. I could tell you how it feels to have a 25-foot cord attached to a fucking phone with you laying up under the bed at 2 in the morning trying to sneak on the phone. Be like, yeah, girl, I'm going to see you at school tomorrow. I'm going to bring you some cookies to lunch. Yeah, girl, we're going to hang out all day tomorrow. I'm going to help you with your homework and everything. Jeff, you on the phone? I'll call you back. <laughs> it's like, we're that era. They will never know how it feels to have a fucking phone cord stretching around the corner, down a fucking pass a chair. The cat sitting there doing this shit to the motherfucker playing with it. I think my cat hitting the cord. Hold on, because I hear some stat. Let me put, let me put you on. Hold on. Motherfucker, we out had three-way call, and we had crazy shit back in the day. So we bridged that gap. And a lot of people don't understand what knowledge gaps are. Yeah, see, I don't miss that at all. <laughs> I know. And then you be you like. To make sure somebody's not on the other phone, you like click hang up real quick to see. I think my mom is on the phone. Let me call you back because you hit the hang up. And if it don't click over, if it don't go, bum, 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 then, you know, somebody's got the other phone. <laughs> You're like, hold on for a second. All right. I was just checking to make sure somebody was on the phone. All right. Cool. cool. <laughs> it's like shit. But we we bridged that gap. We know how that shit felt back then. The Nokia phone shit was in destruct. Oh, man. Nokia phones. You could be driving on a highway. That motherfucker slide on his back, be spiraling, hit a rock flip. Car hit the motherfucker. You stop. You still there? Yeah. Oh, man. I had to I had to get off at the next exit and come back. Man, I thought you fought the car, motherfucker. All I heard was cars and shit, horns and shit honking. I heard the phone scraping. No, nah, man, phone fell off my bike. I was on the motorcycle, man. I had to fucking turn back. <laughs> Motherfucker still on the phone. That should be un indestructible. <laughs> Motherfucker never drop a call. Now, these new phones, you drive across the street, the fucking call drop. Do, 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 do. Like, what the fuck? Nokia's not. Nah. Your ass being a motherfucking submarine. Still talking. Hey, man, I still hear Yeah, motherfucker. We in a Mariana's Trench right now. What the fuck? Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I had to hang up the phone so somebody could use the computer. <laughs> Andy, like, hell yeah. Can you like get off the phone? I gotta get on, on the internet. I gotta get on the AOL. Check my email. Motherfucker, you can hear that shit. You mean on fucking what's that? Uh Yahoo Messenger. That's what we used to use. Yahoo Messenger. That shit right there was crazy. Yahoo Messenger. And you be in the Yahoo Messenger chats, you'd be like, all these fucking people, you be just like talking to every fucking body. Like, I'm a Yahoo message you. You got like four or five panels open on the bottom of your computer at work. <laughs> I know you like, who you talking to? I mean, you can see which one is lit up. Like, who you talking to? All these Yahoo messages going back and forth all the time. Like, well, fucking shit, you taking a long time to reply back. Well, I got four Yahoo messengers open right now. God damn it. <laughs> it's like, shit, that was back in the day. That Man, we, we bridged the gap to knowledge. And a lot of people don't understand how good they got it right now. They don't know how good they got it. Just like right now, these people don't know how bad they got it. Because when you miss that whole bridge, you don't know how good you got it or how bad you got it because you don't know both eras. We know the era of driving real good. We know the era of, you know, Travis being the CEO of Uber with Lyft being run a certain way with Lux and everything. We know that era. This new shit. No, this is not for drivers. 
The new shit we're doing right now is for the corporate. It's for slaves. It's plantation shit. It was what was created for ride share. What was built was drivers built that. It was a driver's job, a career field, something to be proud of doing, money to make to go home to have profits to take care of your life and the business you were building. Now, this shit ain't even a job. I don't know what the fuck to even call it. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we really doing? Half the time we're out driving and shit, we're making 110, 120 a day, but we done spent like fucking $15 in gas. And I'm sitting there like, I could just go get a fucking job and just park my shit and make this amount of money. It's like, I could work eight hours. Eight hours at 20 bucks an hour is 160 bucks. I can go somewhere for eight hours, not drive and make 160 bucks at $20 an hour. What the fuck are we doing? We call ourselves building a business, being business people, being contractors, but you got these raggedy motherfuckers out here dragging 10, 12 hours. Oh, yeah, man, I just made 175 in 10 hours. I'm like, you can just go get a W 2 at that point. Go get a W 2. What are you doing? We're building something. We built something. And now it's all watered down, man. All watered down. Yep, the nightmare dollar was, <laughs> God, the nightmare dollar was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Man. So AOL, AIM on the sidekick. Oh, I forgot about the sidekicks. Those phones that flip and they go, <laughs> the screen's flipping shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, don't make me go get a sidekick. I'll go buy one of those motherfuckers. Shit. Put that motherfucker on your hip. When people got the sidekicks, they thought it was the hottest shit. Oh, I got me a sidekick, dog. Walk in with one of those right now. Motherfucker be like, what's that? <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> shit like a sidekick with a little screen and then when colors came out on the screen we was like oh shit the screens it got colors on it we were so used to them gray screens orange letters and weird shit man it says you got mail and then the guy who says you got mail i think he's actually delivery driver or he's a ride share driver now he was talking to somebody online and he was like yeah i'm a ride share driver i'm the guy who came with the voice you've got mail and they used it and I was like, what? I saw a video about that shit. Blackberries, yeah. And all had Blackberry and Nextel was a business thing. And we all had to have them, man. At, at work, we had a real phone. Like I had maybe like a Nextel or a Nokia. It was my personal phone. But then they had an actual Blackberry for because uh, the motherfuckers just stayed blowing up. I used to hate them little fucking blue phones, man. Hate them. Yeah. Yep. That's the thing, man. The, the dude who says you got mail, I think he's a rideshare driver now. Something like that. Because he was telling somebody about that. The razor. Yeah. <laughs> you slide it up. Yep. The little razor. You slide it up like that. I like that. It says, there is a proxy, an excuse for the previous CEO. Top investors are behind the scenes navigating at driver's expense. I know Etherman, and that's what it is. And that's why they promised him to do this. Because I'm telling you right now, $50 million is a lot of money. You have to be doing a lot of fucking shady criminal shit to get you on the hook because that's a lot of money. You know what you do with that kind of money? Do you know what you do with 50 million? You pay attorneys with that kind of money. You buy your freedom with that kind of money. You pay off politicians with that kind of money. When you got 50 million, Darius not walking away with 50 million. He's got people in his pocket who are keeping his ass under the because they know they're doing some illegal shit. A lot of theft, a lot of fraud, a lot of crazy shit. So what is he doing with that money? Hey, man, if you help me keep these stocks, if you help me do this, when I get this bag, I'll slide you this much. You get a percentage. Just make sure you keep the heat off my ass. Okay, cool. Bet. All right. So now tell your people, don't investigate us. Don't fuck with us. We're going to slide them a little bag too. Bet. All right. Now, so he's just like an athlete. People think these athletes getting like, you know, 40 million a year. Oh, you're getting 40 million a year. They don't get 40 million a year. They've got to pay for attorneys, accountants agents insurance they pay up by the time they that 40 million dollars and with taxes and shit by the time it's whittled away they probably walking out total you know nine ten million dollars in a hand because they done paid every fucking body just like with this 50 million there is not getting 50 million there's a lot of people involved in this 50 million he is just a figurehead just like sam bankman freed sam bankman freed was the figurehead for at for uh that ftx shit but he was paying a lot of fucking people. He was shelling money out to, to conventions and to Democrats and the Republic. He was giving money to every fucking body. But everybody says, oh, he's worth all these billions. He wasn't. He was giving money away to everybody. That's the same shit Dara's doing. So when I hear that 50 million, it's a lot of people involved in that money. It's not just him. There's a lot of players involved in it. 
And you got to look deeper than that. Yeah, they're in the club. They're in the club. Is the cartel in the making? Uber? Yeah. And Uber's worldwide. Just like when you think about pharmaceuticals, and we're going to talk about that shit. When you think about the pharmaceutical industry, you think it was just Fauci that was doing it all? No. There's people that had companies that he orchestrated working with labs all over the place that were American companies that were contracted. They were giving contracts to all these companies. So they would get money out of the taxes, give it to his companies, give it to other governments. Other governments will funnel money back. It was a whole fucking cartel and they did pharmacy shit. That was it. And they call themselves scientists. No, they was all thugs. All these motherfuckers was thugs. They all had titles and shit. Thugs with degrees. And they were sickening people, killing people, doing shit, creating mayhem, paying off government officials. It got the White House in their fucking pocket. People saw Ukraine and China sending a lot of fucking money to them, too. So when you start looking at big dollar amounts, it ain't always one person. It's a lot of people in there. A lot of people getting involved, getting paid. When I hear about Derek getting 50 million, I think Tony West is in the house. So Tony West is in the house. And where is he from? Justice Department. So the Justice Department's in the house. So who at the Justice Department does Tony West know that he's fucking with? Those people now in the house, all these people getting bags. They getting bags on our backs. And anybody that stands in a way going to get deactivated, probably fucking investigated, fucked up or something like that. Because they getting this 50 million. Where's the 50 million come from? You think all these investors are selling something? All these investors are not selling anything. All these investors have already given money to the company a long time ago. All this money is coming from us. It's coming from us being out there driving them charging somebody $80, but giving us 23. This money's coming from us. Them charging somebody $20, giving us six. This money's coming from us. All this money is coming from us, the drivers. We're paying that 50 million. These motherfuckers ain't out selling jungle juice, selling fucking Girl Scout cookies and shit to come up with this 50 million. This million is coming from us. The day we fucking stop moving, the day the money stops moving. The day these fucking cars stop, the day all is. Why do you think they want to do driverless cars? Because drivers have families. We see emotion. We see kids crying. We see hungry fucking people. We see people with no clothes. We can see that driverless is just a computer that just drives a fucking car around. That's all it is. It can never go hungry. It can never have a problem. It doesn't have emotions. So if you want to control a system and control the flow of money, you got to get rid of all the people involved in the money. Only have a few people involved in the money. And he's got his team. He's got Tony West, people in the Justice Department, people in politics, people in transportation industry, people in the courts. He's got his people. He don't want drivers. That's too many fucking people involved in the pot. Because when we were involved in the pot, were we not getting paid well? We was all getting paid well. We was all involved in the pot of us going out, making money, and us getting the product, uh, our getting our money back. We getting profits back. We were involved in it. But now we go out, we make money. Where's the profits at? It ain't coming to us. It's going to other people. They got to get rid of fucking drivers, man. Man, measure reality. What's good? Long time no see. What's good? Coffee and Uber G Bay Z live stream for breakfast. Today is going to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> today was a good day yeah middle class are getting rammed you're right you're right and i'm sitting there like if, if you keep more people out of your pockets you're going to get more money for yourself and for your own team we're a lot of drivers how many drivers are we like 60 million like gig workers or something like that worldwide i don't fucking know so it's, it's a big ass number worldwide but the less of us it is those are the less opinions he got to deal with the less families he has to deal with, the less hungry people, the less people who may go homeless if they don't make profits, the less people that these transportation companies deal with, the better their pockets are going to look. That's where all this money's coming from. So, of course, he's going to fucking play us to the left, steal our money. I mean, today, I was talking to somebody today in a chat, and they're short. One person was still short $70 on Lyft from that New Year's Eve debacle. $70, still short. Earlier uh, yesterday, I was chatting with somebody. They're still like three hundred and four dollars short on Lyft. Three hundred and four dollars short. All this money is coming from these motherfuckers. Ain't selling nothing. They're selling us. We are the slave class. They're selling us. So when we say I'll do this for six dollars, seven miles for six dollars, that's slave labor. 
because ask that person how much they paid. Oh, we paid twenty seven dollars for this ride. Oh, you paid twenty seven. I'm getting seven dollars for this. Seven dollars and thirteen cents. Oh, shit. That's crazy because we paid twenty seven dollars for this. When you sell slaves, that's all you got to sell. You're not selling Girl Scout cookies. You ain't selling fucking jungle juice. You ain't selling goddamn chains and trinkets and shit. You're selling people. You're selling us, our time, our life, our risk. You're selling how we are when we go home. When you go home and you've been busting your ass all motherfucking day, way more than eight hours. Any other career you work in, you work more than eight hours, you're getting time and a half. In ride chair, you work more than eight hours, you're going to probably make less than what you made in the first eight. You're going to make less because it starts getting later in the day. Because if you can make more money, trust me, everybody will be working a whole lot more. But the longer you work, it's diminishing marginal returns. The longer you work, the less you're going to make. You're burning out your car. You're getting fatigued out. You're using more gas. You're, you're running your shit into the ground. You just The car's running hotter and hotter. It's been running all fucking day. Hoses are, are getting brittle. Electrical wires are fucking up. Your screen won't even light up no more. So the more you work, the more you running shit into the ground, you're losing money. But they don't care because they're trying to get rid of us anyways. The more we get pissed off, the more we walk away, the better they feel because they're like, we're going to make this 50 million. How? Because the new people are not bridging the gap from the old to the new. The new people think this is amazing. It's better than me making $20 an hour. I'm making $24 now. I'm making more per hour than I made at my last job by $4. And we're like, no, you're using fuel depreciation. You're making less. You're probably getting, probably going home $9, $10 fucking profit is all you getting. That's all you fucking getting. And you think you're making more because it's the illusion of them putting these numbers on the fucking screen. You're not making more. They can't bridge the gap from old to new, from profitable lifestyle of driving back when we started till now. Now it's hard to get profits. So when they wonder, why are you guys fighting on February the 14th? I got rods pinging my phone all day. I get pings off. I could turn my phone on right now and get a ping. $13, 19 miles. Look at that ping. I'm going to take this $13. We like, you know what? For 19 miles, you know what I used to get for 19 miles? Almost 40 bucks. On Lux, I would almost get 40 bucks. You're getting 13, I used to get 40. That's a $27 difference. $27 difference on one ride. And these motherfuckers are happy to have a $24, $27 demotion. And you got a nice ass car like I got. But you sitting there going, I'll take 13. And I'm like, no, because I'm used to 20. I'm used to taking like almost 40 for 19 miles. I'm not used to getting $13, but these apps, they know the new people don't know the difference. They don't know. So they're playing the shit out of them, exploiting the shit out of them. And they're like, why are these people standing up? We're standing up for you, for you ignorant motherfuckers that don't know. We're standing up for you. You cannot appreciate it all you want to, but these apps know why we're standing up. They know what we're doing. You may not know, but we know. The apps know. You're new. You're ignorant. You don't know. And it's cool to be ignorant because you don't know. But if you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over again from all of these drivers saying the same thing in the same regions, in the same areas with the same vehicles, and you still like, well, it seems good to me because I get pings. You need a T-shirt that says, I'm new. I'm ignorant. That's the only shit that you say on your shirt. I'm new. I'm ignorant. That way we know why you still fucking driving on the 14th because you knew you're ignorant. You don't get it. A lot of us, we're not going to take that shit. You can't keep demoting people. If you had a W-2, if you had a W-2, and every day you went to work, they said, okay, we, we started paying you $32 an hour when you first started. Uh, we're going to start paying you $29 an hour. You'd be like, why? But we just need more corporate profits. We're going to start paying you $29 an hour. Okay, I don't know why, but okay. You come in a couple of months later. I know we move you down to $29. we are going to actually drop you to $25. But you're going to do a little more work, though. So instead of you working six hours a day, we're going to have to push you to eight or nine a day. Is that OK? Well, I don't want to be late on rent, so I guess I better do it. So you went from 32, now you're at 25, you're $7 an hour drop and you still OK with it. You still OK with it. All of a sudden, OK, we're going to start paying you like, you know, $22 an hour. You were at 32. Now you're down to 22 all in the same year. You're now at $22 an hour. You went from eight hours, six hours a day to eight hours a day to work in an 11 hour day. And you still don't get time and a half. And you're like, they're like, are you still going to come in and work tomorrow? I guess so. At some point, you're going to say, what the fuck is going on? Why are you hiring all the new people in the door, giving all the new people bonuses all the time? 
Like you, I went from 32 all the way down to 22 and I went from six hours a day up to 10 hours a day. And you're giving all the new people bonuses like as they, Hey man, if you work here for 30 days, we're going to give you a grand. Why are you giving that to the new person? But you just reduced all my money, but you're giving it to this new person, giving them an extra thousand dollars for being here for a month. I've been here for two fucking years. It's like, why don't you just give it to me? I've been here for two years. I got experience. I know how this shit works. I know the system. I don't require a lot of training. But you're going to get this new motherfucker that don't know shit, an extra grand, but you took $10 an hour away from me and I got to work twice the amount of time to make the same amount of money? What kind of fucking industry is this? Welcome to Rideshare. Welcome to fucking Rideshare. Because you wouldn't do that shit at the W-2. You wouldn't. But people are doing it in Rideshare and completely okay with it. That's what fucks me up. And they wonder why. Why? Do people keep doing it? Why do the apps keep fucking decreasing the money? Because people are okay with it. Nobody's questioned it. Nobody said, hey, why are they stealing our tips? Why don't we just move over to Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle? Why don't we do something different? King James, what up? Why don't we just move over and, and keep our money off their apps? Why are we doing, you know, rides at half price when the, the customer is paying the same, if not more than what they used to pay because of inflation? And that's what the app says. Well, the reason why fares have gone up is for inflation. Well, why have fares gone up for riders, but fares have gone down for drivers? If it's inflation, are we not a part of this fucking planet? Does inflation not affect us? But yet you're going to charge this person for a ride they used to pay 16 for. You're charging them 22 now. So now they're paying 22. Instead of us getting $8, we're getting 650 for it now. So we we're getting affected by inflation, but we're not considered when there is inflation. We're not considered as drivers. And I'm sitting there like, why don't we just convert these motherfuckers to cash and say fuck these apps? You still need to go somewhere, right? Yeah. They jack your price up, right? Yeah. Then we stupid to stay on these fucking apps then, right? Yeah. Motherfucker, here's five dollars. God damn it. <laughs> it's like exactly. Motherfucker, talk to these riders. Let these motherfuckers know. We're both getting played. We're both getting played for a $50 million payout for motherfuckers that don't care about either one of us. They will eat up your W-2 money because you got to take a, a ride back and forth to work every day. You used to pay 16. Now you pay 22. So instead of $32 a day paying back and forth with tip, now you're paying fucking $40 a day back and forth. So you're like, shit, I'm paying a lot of fucking money to go work back and forth. I'm paying $44 a day instead of 32. Yeah, extra $12 a day. And now you're paying an extra $12 a day. And then the driver's like, can you give me a tip? $5 there, $5 back. So now you up to instead of, you know, extra 12, $22 a day. In five days, you're selling an extra $100 a week. Extra 100 a week. And you're like, I'm going to go broke using fucking Uber and Lyft. That's what Uber and Lyft is hoping. The riders go broke. The driver go broke. When did time to wake up? Tell you motherfuckers a long time ago. It's a great reset. How to get money out of people's fucking bank accounts. How do you break people? You got to reset the wealth. You got to get people all the way down to poverty level. Right now, they got people in Chicago. What do you say? Oh, Jeff, you would love to hear about my back and forth last night. We lift over health care stipend insurance. They magically approved my insurance after I threatened lawyer involvement. Oh, Ryan with Ryan. Well, so once you said, hey, you know, because you got that health care stipend insurance, and you said, hey, I'm going to call my lawyer. All of a sudden, hey, guess what? You're good, Ryan. Don't worry about it. We got you covered. Yeah, I bet you do, motherfucker. Because all we are to them are just people. But once we start talking about attorney generals, we start talking about attorneys and shit like that, lawyers and all that, now they want to act like, oh, okay, okay. Let, let's get this motherfucker off of AI and let him talk to somebody for real. Because because this motherfucker is talking about some real shit. Take him off of AI and, and sit down with, you know, Brittany. Brittany, email this motherfucker back and forth. You're talking to Ryan now. Hey, Ryan, this is Brittany. Where's Sunil? <laughs> like, motherfucker, where, where's goddamn Fareed? I was talking to Fareed a minute ago. Oh, this is Brittany. I live in Ohio. Fuck Fareed. He's in Pakistan. <laughs> it's like, I was talking to Ryan. Ryan was so cool with me. We were best friends. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, you're AI. You don't sound like that. <laughs> we just gave you a name. I'm sorry, but this AI has a voice. <laughs> like, goddamn, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know me, Ryan. I'll put that shit up. I'll let these motherfuckers know. They be like, oh, shit. Yeah, because they're snakes. These motherfuckers are snakes and they know it. And when they get caught, first thing they do is they run and hide. Oh, shit. We got somebody who's smart, who's a contractor, who's smart and knows his rights. He knows he can contact legal. He knows he can get somebody involved in this shit. And once it becomes public, like I said, Ryan, anytime you do something and if it makes it to court, 
It becomes public information. Once it becomes public, that's why they like to settle shit real quick. They love to settle because it doesn't become public information if you settle it. Once it goes to court, oh, shit. Everybody can research that shit now. Anybody with any computer anywhere can just pull that shit up and be like, hey, let's look at the details of all this case because it's not a sealed case. It's a public case. And they will see all the details, all the facts. And a lot of drivers might say, my shit's the same way. Hold up. And it becomes precedent. So once it becomes precedent, you can refer to Ryan versus Liv 2024. I want to see that case. Ryan v. Liv 2024. I want to see that case. So they use the same fucking parameters and it becomes precedent for everybody that went through the same shit you went through. That's why they'd rather settle. Because with a settlement, nobody sees the parameters. It doesn't become precedent. No settlement can become precedent in a court case. It's a settlement. It never makes it to court. So what do you do? You say, we're going to keep it out of court. We're going to settle outside of court. We don't want court involved in this. We don't want none of this shit documented. Not, nah, nah. We'll talk to Ryan on the side now. Okay, cool. Can you dismiss the case? Case dismissed. You know, whatever the fuck, you know, dilapidated. Get that shit out of here. You talk to Ryan on his own. Yeah, exactly. When I used to sell cars, I used to tell my client I was new and ignorant. They didn't ask a lot of questions. Sold the most cars out of that dealership, fresh out of high school. <laughs> Mr. Perry's do it. I'm new. It's like, okay, uh, would you like to buy this Ford Mustang right here? Uh, that's a Camaro. Oh, looks like a Mustang to me. Would you like to buy it? Hey, this guy's really fucking new. He doesn't even know what a Mustang is. Just help him out. Buy the fucking car. He's like, yeah, man, I don't sold like four fucking Camaros this week. Just keep calling those motherfuckers Mustangs and they keep buying. <laughs> it's like, would you like to buy this Ford Mustang? Man, that's a Camaro, dog. This dude is too new. He has no idea. What the... That's two in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking with people and shit. They'd be like, bro, how are you selling so many fucking Camaros, bro? You you like cleaned out all the Camaros in the front row. Dude, just tell them that you knew. Call it a Ford Mustang. <laughs> it's like they're gonna help you out. <laughs> it's like this motherfucker is pretty slick. He's smart. You want to buy this F-150? That's a Chevy Silverado. Sure, we'll buy it. We'll help you out. We'll help you out. <laughs> I was like, this kid has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. We just got a Chevy Silverado for fucking cheap. It's like, yeah, right. He sold your ass. Just think if everybody did cash rides at the busy airport, Uber and Lyft would be finished by the end of the day. Oh, man. Joker, you know what? If everybody did that shit, all riders, all drivers, the apps would catch on so fast. They would say, we've probably done like out of each airport a fraction a fraction of what we normally do, but nobody's requesting rides no more. We've been converted all those motherfuckers. Every driver will be paid. Every rider will save money. It will be a winning day for the economy. It will be a, a winning day. And Uber and Lyft would be livid because they know what they're doing. They know they fucking people over. People need to get from point A to point B. Cool. We know that. Just make sure you charge them a fair price, especially if you're not paying us shit. But don't sit up there and charge, you know, give us the driver $25 but charge this motherfucker 96 to get out of the airport. It's like, why don't you tell them the truth? They're like, hey, you know what? Out of the 96 you're paying, we're only going to give the driver 25. That's it. And all the rest are fees. Imagine going to dinner and you sitting down and you having a menu. And the menu says, you know, you and your wife are eating dinner and the dinner comes out to $119. And you can go, cool, 119 Then they tack fees on this motherfucker and they say, yeah, this dinner is $354. The fuck you mean $354? Well, it was like we just we ordered one hundred and fifteen dollars worth of shit. Yeah, but we got like all the extra fees and stuff that we stack on top of. You'd be like, but we ate one hundred and fifteen dollar dinner. We ate a dinner for one hundred and fifteen. So all the rest are fees. Yeah. Is you parking in the parking lot fee? Is you fucking talking to the waitress fee? Is you having a fucking problem with the price fee? And you're talking to us about the price. We charge for that because it's time. You're arguing with my manager about the price. We charge you $50 for arguing with this motherfucker. It's taking up time. My manager could be doing anything under the sun. We charge you 50 fucking bucks to argue. We knew you'd argue, so we already threw the $50 in there. Then you use a napkin, right? Yeah, napkin fucking fee. You could have wiped your hands on your clothes, but we had to go buy these fucking napkins. Somebody had to deliver these fucking napkins. You got a napkin fee. $32 for a napkin? Hey, could have wiped your hands on pants. You didn't. Fucking napkin fee. All right, did you use our utensils or your own? Well, y'all had forks sitting here. Then you got a fork fee. Fuck that. $40 fork fee. Man, at what point do these fees just stop adding the fuck up? That's how ride share is. It's like the ride is only $25. Why are you charging these people 90 fucking bucks? 
But once you tell your rider, hey, they only charge me, you know, they're only paying me like 25 for this. No way. Are you serious? Yeah. We paid $83 for this ride. Yeah, they give me 25 bucks for this. How about we just cancel this shit? And, you know, we'll say 60 bucks. We'll call it good at 60. That's fine. I could do that. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Was they, the charging rider surge price to, to go to the airport, but no surge going to the driver fare during the snow day. Yeah, Tardy TV, I heard about that, that they were charging riders during, the, during so many snowy periods. Like right now, James Reed is out there driving right now. When there were no drivers out, riders were paying surge uh, prices. They were paying surge prices and riders were getting surge fare. Nobody was out. The moment they lifted the ban on drives, the riders were still paying the same prices, but drivers were paid less. That profit gap opened quick as shit. So the ride, the prices never changed. They were still charging people that high ass price for being in the snow. They weren't paying driver shit. So exactly what you said is happening right now in real fucking time. Shit's crazy. It was like, man. So he died in Jackson and injunctions. All evil intent, all malicious. Yeah. Think about how evil these companies are. They steal hundreds of millions every day from drivers. And the moment we try and make money for ourselves to survive, they want to terminate it. Pure evil. I'm telling you because it's like Tucker Carlson says, man, this country is changing. It's a technocracy now. Anybody who has technology is running shit. If you have technology, even you can even run the pharmaceutical industry if you have the technology. Because what is mRNA? mRNA is not medical. It's not a medicine. It's technology. Look up what MNR mRNA is. It's technology. We're in a technocracy right now. If you have technology, you run shit. When you look at mRNA vaccines, these are vaccines based on a technology. The technology is called mRNA. That's a technology. You're taking a sequence, injecting it with a spike protein or anything else inside of a nanolipid particle. When you put it into the nanolipid particle, you inject it into the body. The body replicates that particle that you put in there. It's technology. It's not a vaccine. It's technology. And they're calling technology a vaccine. And they're using that technology to control fucking people. This is a technocracy. If you do not believe that mRNA is a technology, Google that shit. Say, is mRNA technology? When it says yes, you will find out you are being controlled by technology. This is a technocracy we're in. Not a democracy, not a republic. A technocracy. If you have the technology to control people, use that tech. That tech controls shit. Logan, what up, bro? He's in Phoenix right now. And yeah, exactly. I don't that's what I don't trust these motherfuckers. And if you look at Dr. Jane, she just came out with a video yesterday. You know, I got a lot of people in a lot of different industries and shit. I, you know, I was married to a nurse before, operating room nurse. Both of my sons' moms are nurses. So I'm always dealing with medical shit. I'm just the accountant, but I know a lot of medical shit. Know a lot of people in the medical field. My friend who's a nurse messaged me yesterday and she's like, Jeff, check this shit out. So Dr. Jane who has patents on vaccines. She's got patents on vaccines and she dealt with mRNA. She was actually, you know, she was, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, not debunked, but she was um, like not certified or something. Like people was calling her a quack because of all the shit she was saying during the pandemic. But she was actually saying what was going on. She has a patent for X. And you're like, what the fuck is X? Is X like Twitter? No, X. X. Is a, is a virus that you haven't even heard about yet. It's going to come out. You're, what you're hearing right now is some shit. You listen, I know we get pretty deep. We're an hour and a half into this. If you made it this far, get ready for some shit. I usually don't get this deep into it because I'm really not a conspiracy theorist. I just like to research a lot of shit and I listen to people who are very smart. So X. X is about to come out. She said it. She's got the patents for it. It's her patents. She has hats that says X on it because they went to a conference years ago, back in 2009, when they were developing X for future use. It was a virus they were, they were making for future use. So once they did it, they created the vaccines and the viruses all together. And what it does is it makes cancer spread faster. It's way more viral than COVID. She said it. I didn't say this shit. She said it. If you don't like it, go talk to her. You can say, lady, I think you're lying. You don't have a patent for it. She showed everybody the patent. It's her patent. It's her creation. She dealt with all this back in 2009. And now they're finally bringing all of this shit out now. Trust me, when you start hearing about this fucking virus, 
oh, we got a new one out. It's not uh, COVID-19. It's called X now. So you know what? This motherfucker was talking about this shit on the podcast one day about ride share. How the fuck does he know this shit? When you're in certain industries and you got certain crowds of people around you, or you're talking to people, you get a lot of information from some pretty smart fucking people. When Dr. Rand Paul, oh, it's already in the news. I ain't even seen it in the news yet. I ain't even seen it yet. I just saw the video. I didn't even know it was in the news yet. But she said that she's got the patents and all of that shit back in 2019. I haven't seen it in the news yet because I don't watch the news. I think the news is full of shit. I watch podcasts. If I want to know the truth, I watch a podcast, not a newscast. I watched her on a podcast. When you watch a newscast, like I said earlier, people are paid. People up top got all this money. And they pay all these news anchors to promote these narratives. These news anchors get paid big money to promote. These motherfuckers don't have their own mind. A news anchor don't have his own brain. They just present information. They deliver information. They're told, hey, do a story on this. Here's some sources. Here's some, you know, some data. Here's some facts. Here's it. Do a story on this. And they have to do it because that's their boss telling them to do it. Just like they all sold that bullshit in 2020, 2021. They sold all that bullshit because their boss told them, talk about this. Once shit started going sideways, nobody's talking about nothing now. Because now the truth is out there and everything they said is negated. But they don't want to go back and say, I know you guys are going to have a video of me saying this, 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 and this. And yeah, I did say all that. I was told to say all that. Now I got to say this. They never have a video saying that shit. They never be on the news saying that shit. No. Yeah, there was a man in Canada years ago named Rick Simpson who was curing friends and family from all different sorts of cancer with his homemade hemp oils. He was forced to shut it down or go to jail. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. There was a there was a um there was a movie a long time ago. I think it was called the I don't know, but I had it on my channel for a minute. I should. It was it was hidden on my channel. It was hidden. But it's called, like, yeah, Dr. Sebi the same way. But it was this, this movie, it was called, like, Pandemic. I don't fucking know. Let's just call it that. It was called Pandemic. But everything what happened in 2019 was in this movie that was done back in, like, the 70s and the 80s. And I watched the movie. So I, like, screened, I recorded it with my phone and made a partial YouTube video with it. And I was showing people all the excerpts of what we were going through in 2020 and what was happening in this movie a long time ago. There was one person that was leading everything and he knew it was fake. But he says, if people find out it's fake, then I lose control. So he's telling people that it's fake. And he's saying they, they were marking people like everybody had a marker on them. So you can look on a computer screen. They didn't need no police department. So they defunded all the police. This is on this movie. They defunded all the police and they only use a computer to find people and they would go raid. So you see the police little dots on the screen going to the house and you see the dot on the screen. That was the person. So you see the person running through their house, the dot on the screen running. And you see the police go through the door and they would get the person like that. Yeah. It, like I said, it's, it's on my channel. I think it's hitting on my channel. I got to unhide it because I hit it because YouTube was flagging shit a long time ago with that COVID shit all the time. So I hit that video. It's still on my channel. I just hit it. That's all. But and, and any doctor that stood against it, there were doctors in court like AAA. There was doctors in court on this movie saying, yes, I healed all of my my clients. None of them got sick. I healed them all. They're all fine. And uh, so what they did to him, they put him in an insane asylum. They took him straight out of court, put him in an insane asylum because he healed all these people. He was killing the narrative. And the person that had control over everything didn't want the truth to get out. This was a movie. From the 70s and the 80s, I got the shit on my channel. I just got it hidden. And I'm like, I should open that motherfucker up and people see that. She'd be like, wow, this is fucking crazy. That's exactly what was happening. That's why I recorded it. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. And I clipped out some really good excerpts and everything of it and put that shit up there. It was nuts. It was nuts. And everybody was outcast. If you didn't believe in what they were selling, you were an outcast. And they put you down this trash chute and you went outside of the boundaries of the city. So you were locked out of the city. So now you're like all these riff raps and all this crazy shit and all that. Man, it was crazy. So yeah, in plain sight. I heard about in plain sight. Because I know that movie. I know what you mean. Yeah, brother. It was, it was, I can't think of the name of that movie, but I swear it was like, like something crazy, like outbreak. I don't fucking know. Pandemic. I don't know what the name of, but it's on my fucking, I'm going to find that shit and unhide it. And once I unhide it, watch YouTube shut my whole fucking channel down. <laughs> I'm going to say, but I didn't produce the movie. The movie's already been out. I just fucking recorded it and put it on YouTube. We're shutting this whole channel down. Fuck that. 
It's like, come on, man. Don't do me like that. <laughs> hey, Jeff, we got our coach, AP. Yeah, exactly. Associated Press. Real shit. I don't believe anything anyone is selling. I'm telling you, Measure. And and I'm like I said, I'm very cynical. Anything that's in that somebody's injecting into their body, I probably I can't like the last time I ever had a shot was when I was getting like Novocaine to get, you know, my tooth. That's it. Before that was vaccines when I was a little kid. I don't let people inject me with shit because I don't know what they're putting in our bodies. I have no idea. They're going to inject me. Too many people make mistakes. So they're going to inject you with some shit. And they're going to say, oh, shit, we put the wrong shit in them. There's no recourse for that. It's a, I'm sorry. What are you going to do? Even right now, nobody can sue, you know, for medical malpractice for anything to do with all these shots that went in their body. Nobody can sue for medical malpractice. So they're all trying to sue Pfizer, trying to sue the government, trying to sue Moderna. They're trying to sue all these people because they can't sue for medical malpractice because the doctors are saying we were following protocol of what was given to us. Otherwise, and that's why a lot of doctors are like, I ain't telling you to do shit. I'm not injecting you with shit. You just do your own fucking thing. And don't go on Facebook telling nobody I told you to do your own fucking thing. Just leave my name out of it. <laughs> so a lot of doctors were like, we ain't touching this whole situation. Something looks funny. Something looks fucked up. Do not say my name on Facebook, but I'm not promoting this fucking shit. Take care of your family. Stay out of my office. Don't come back here. And because I don't want to have to be giving people shots. Just stay the fuck away from me. He was like, man, set up a membership profile for YouTube. I, YouTube keeps pushing me to do that shit, but I, cause I got some crazy videos on my channel. That's not really ride share. They're more like, like intellectual videos, shit that I've recorded, shit that makes sense, shit that links things together. And I got them all hidden. I got them all private because one day I always want the truth to come out one day. So I got all this shit recorded on databases. I have some of them on my computer, some of them on YouTube. A lot of them was on Facebook and I pulled them all over, but it's truth. I want to record truth. So I trapped truth, recorded truth, and I've got it. That's why you don't see the media saying a lot of shit about a lot of things. I already trapped all these motherfuckers already. Rachel Maddow, all these motherfuckers. I got them all. Don Lamon, I trapped them all. <laughs> Do a league got the sea shot? Fuck no. They got saline. Because saline is just like, it's nothing. It's like water. It's nothing. And, and I'm going to tell you the contagion. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you if you look up phase three trials, like I won't tell you where to get your information from. But I'll tell you if you look up phase three trials of any experimental drug in phase three trials, any information you look at, knock yourself the fuck out. They're going to tell you you got the control group and you got the subjects. Therefore, each group is treated differently. One of them has the actual one of them has a placebo. Phase three trials introduced the placebos. When they released this shit in 2020, that was the phase three trial. They never tried it on anything. I think they tried on like a handful of rats. That was it, like eight rats. And they said, oh shit, all the rats died. Well, I guess it's good to go. <laughs> it's like, okay, all the rats died, so it's good to go. And so phase three started in humans. You had to agree voluntarily to get this shit in you. So once you were agreeing to stand in line to get this free shot, and then it was the point where they're inducing people. Hey, you get a free fucking donut if you come down and get a free vaccine. You get a free donut. You get a free Coca-Cola if you come get a free shot. We give you. They were giving people weird. You get a free fucking lottery ticket. You get a free fucking scratch off. They was fucking people up. So you couldn't blame nobody except yourself for wanting that free shit. You were a part of the phase three trials. Look up what a phase three trial involves. It involves placebo, subject group, control group. That's why you've never heard of any other thing you've ever taken in your life having a lot number and a vile number associated with it. That's how they tracked it all. Because if you're in lot 201B, they know lot 201B had this many vials in it. Anybody who was in lot 201B, they would just follow those people and they have all your shit. And they say, okay, so you're in 201B. This is how it goes. All it was like 300 people in, in 201B follow these 300 people. And they would always say if something was wrong with a lot, if you were within these lots, please see your doctor. Or with, if you were within these lots and one lady, she was a nurse and this was in the news. Like I said, all the shit I'm telling was all in the news. It's all on the Internet. She accidentally or purposely, everybody says she purposely did it. 
she purposely injected all of these people with saline. I think it was in Australia. She gave everybody saline injections, making them think they had the COVID shots because she didn't believe in that shit. So she injected all these fucking like 8,000 people with just saline. She didn't give them no COVID shit. So I think she saved all their fucking life. In my opinion, she saved 8,000 fucking people's lives or some weird shit like that. <laughs> so it's like, man. They made an updated version of the Equinemic movie in the mid-20s. Yeah. How about the soccer player? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Soccer players running down the field, passing the fuck out. Media don't talk about them. Media be like, oh, this happens all the time. It happens all the time. When have you ever seen an NFL game shut down because somebody had a heart attack on the fucking field? I only know once. I've been watching football my whole life. I only know once. I know it was a Buffalo Bills game. I don't know any other game where somebody was running down the field and had a heart attack. And then they try to say, oh, well, it's because he got hit with a shoulder pad. I'm like, okay, these motherfuckers get hit like freight trains. I watch videos of football players getting hit all the fucking time. Hit, slammed, flipped, all kind of crazy shit. And nobody ever has a heart attack. I've been watching football my whole life. But now all of a sudden, if you get hit on the football field, you're going to have a heart attack. And we're going to stop the game and shut the game down. I'm like, this is, I'm like, you motherfuckers really think y'all selling this shit to us. Like, we see what's going on because none of this happened pre-shot but it's all happening now and i'm one of those people like i said i'm very cynical it's okay to question shit when you don't question shit it's when they know they got fucking sheep sheep don't question shit sheep will follow the one right in front of it right over a fucking cliff it won't say oh shit the sheep are disappearing where are they going the sheep don't ask that the sheep just keep going and they all go over the fucking cliff one after the other one after the other one after the other because they saw the sheep go over the they just follow each other when the sheep stops it goes wait a minute why is it like this line getting shorter and shorter and people keep going over the fucking edge? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Sheep don't ask. They just do. And that's what they want. This is lemons. Yay, cliffs. I know. <laughs> yay, cliffs. <laughs> it's like underground railroad hero. There you go. Jeff, I just dropped off a rider who argued me up and down. If I reject and cancel too many rides, the app will stop sending me good rides. I try to convert them to the 300. Yeah, the... Uh, so it's like, did you convert them? Did you convert? Did you get them? Did you get them? And that's the thing. You know, I'm a I'm a firm believer in and we're contractors. We should be allowed to negotiate a price. If you send me a ride, honestly, it's kind of like, let's say we're contractors. We're going to build a swimming pool. And somebody says, hey, Jeff, we got this swimming pool job for you. Is that this house? Go stop by. Talk to the lady. So I go there and she goes, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get this pool done, you know, for like $6,000, and we go, well, most pools start about $38,000. Well, I got like $6,000. Yeah, well, if you come up with at least, I say instead of thirty eight because you only got six, if you come up with thirty six, you if you come up with another thirty, go take out a loan for another thirty. I'll do the pool. I'll give you a $2,000 discount. As drivers, we're told what the price is, and we just have to take it. It's like, we can't negotiate a price. Like, we can't go to, oh, yeah, you know, we got this ride for you. It's $25, you know, 56 miles. I'll tell you what. Normally, you know, for a ride that far, I would probably charge about $70. You're 56 miles. I'll charge about $70, $80 to go that far. Because, you know, it, it's a lot of highway, a lot of time, a lot of this, a lot of that. We should be allowed to say that. We should be able to come back. And that person will say, okay, I accept your counter offer for this ride. I accept that counter offer. But instead, the rider is left sitting there. Looking for another fucking driver to accept this low ass low ball offer to apps are sending. What if this rider doesn't give a shit about giving me that money because they paid 120 for the ride? What if they go, you know, I paid, I will agree to pay up to 120 for this ride. If this driver is telling me he'll do it for 80, I want that driver. But your apps don't do that. The apps will say, hey, Jeff, we'll give you fucking $35 for this ride. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. Okay, we're going to try another idiot then. Hey, we're going to give you $35 for this ride. No. Nah. Okay, we're going to give you $35. No, nah. and that ride is going to be left sitting there until some idiot says, I'll do it for $35. They should give us a right to say, you know what? We won't do it for $35, but I'll do it for this. They say, well, what is the lowest amount you do it for, Jeff? I'll do it for like, let's say, you know, you got a you got a 15-mile ride right here. The lowest I would do it for, let's say, $28. I'll do it for $28 just because perfect because we just charged a person 43 it's your ride now but they don't give us an option to counter these fucking rides i don't care if the app says hey man i'm gonna charge this person 60 bucks i don't care the person paid the 60 what i care about is my end of the deal so if i cruise up and i'm only getting 15 20 i'm gonna tell this person you paid too much for this but if the drive if the ride is really like let's say if it's you know 
37 miles. 37 miles. This person pays $60. And the app says, Jeff, we'll give you $55 with surge and everything for this trip. I think it's fair because the app takes $5. So the person probably paid exactly what I would take, but you know, maybe less five bucks. But the app says, hey, Jeff, you got a $20 surge. Third, okay, $50, $56 for this ride, Jeff. You can have this ride for $56. Okay, cool. No problem. I'll do it. Person paid 60 bucks. But yet, I don't like when a person pays 60 bucks and I get offered 18, 19, 20 fucking dollars. That's when I start having the problem. Because this person is being overcharged for something that you're saying that we should only take $18 for, knowing we should probably get double that. So I might have to convert this motherfucker. I might have to counter offer. Hey, I'll give you a counter offer. So you don't got to like, you know, stay here all night. How about 50 bucks? <laughs> like shit. 41 year old nephew died at the kitchen table from a blood clot in his heart day after Thanksgiving. He had the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And you know what they did with that, Andy? They stopped giving the Johnson and Johnson out. And we told people from the get go, these are experimental injections. No, it's not. They're approved. They were never approved. They were never like FDA approved. They were just recommended and required. They were never approved, tested. And uh, no, they were just, they, that's why I say they are safe and effective. They kept saying that shit safe and effective. They never said it's FDA approved, certified. They never said that shit. They threw motherfuckers off with that safe and effective. And we kept saying, these are experiments. These are experiments. Flex, what's good? My brother, what's good? Thank you for the super chat. What up, Jeff? I'm sorry I was hitting you on the Instagram. I know you're on live. Biggest you here in Florida. I've been doing rides and not getting paid. Take a look at your IG chat. What? What? Wait a minute. You were, you're doing rides and not getting paid? Wait a minute. I don't know why my phone's acting funny. My dog's out there going nuts, too. Let's look at this IG chat. See what Flex is talking about. Uh-oh. Hold up. Still up to date settings. Comfort. Are you, it says still updating earnings on one. Oops, try something there. Zero trips completed with zero dollars. Damn. How many trips did you do? How many trips did you do? And it says zero dollars with nothing earned. What the hell, man? What the hell happened? Bro, that's, hey, they doing that shit. And that's Uber. He was on Uber, not on Lyft. So you did four trips and it says zero. It says you have no money and you didn't do any trips today. Man. And that's Uber. That's not even Lyft. That's Uber. So they both doing that shit right now. Man, man, man. No, uh same here in Vegas. Just did a Trivandrum still updating earnings. Wow. Merlin said the same shit. So wait a minute. So the apps right now are still updating y'all earnings. Like right now. They're not giving y'all any. Dude, this is crazy. So they this is like a repeat of New Year's Eve shit. This is a New Year's Eve repeat. I'm not driving that you were looking for a glitch. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They about to come out with that shit. Oh, it's a glitch again. No, it's theft again. Because right now, ain't it kind of funny how we're all talking about this $50 million Dara's getting this 50 million bucks? And it's been doing this for the past three days. We've been talking about this $50 million for about three days. And now all of a sudden, this fucking happens. Crazy shit. Crazy shit. Uber app is doing it to me in New Jersey. What? So right now, it's, it's dude, this is fucking crazy. Yep, screen record everything. Screenshot, screen record everything. Say, what up, Jeff? A hey, question. What you take on gas treatments or engine treatments? Works a waste of money. I think gas treatments or engine treatments, they're probably roughly about the same. I changed my oil a lot. I put a lot of Lucas oil stuff in my oil. And for gas treatments, it might work because it helps clean out your injectors a lot. Really cleans out your injectors. Probably cleans the back of your valves if you don't have a GDI engine. I got a GDI engine, so my... My injectors go right into the cylinder, but if you don't have a GDI engine, it hits the back of the valves, it probably cleans off your valves for you. Man, it's happening in AZ. I don't know because I haven't driven today yet. I haven't driven today. So if it's happening today, I wouldn't even know. I, I wouldn't have no idea, man. Hey, I know uh, Logan's out there driving right now, but Logan, I don't think he's on Uber. Logan's on like a delivery app right now. 
So if anybody out there is driving, shit, man, this is all over again. New Year's Eve all over again. This is crazy, crazy. Flex, man, hold up for a second. Flex, I'm sorry to bother you, brother, but I was wondering, are you having issues with Uber over there in AZ? Because I just did a trip, and it's not paying me. I took some snapshots of it. I'm going to send it. If you have any info, could you uh, relay it back? Thanks. That's my homeboy Flex right there. <laughs> <laughs> you in the car jamming like a motherfucker. He over there bumping music, mad as a motherfucker. Man, ain't got my money. He over there playing some motherfucking Nipsey. <laughs> get money, motherfucker. Get money. I'm gonna roll up on Uber and get my fucking money. Bumping some Nipsey. God damn it. <laughs> no. What William say? I'm driving now, and I just noticed they didn't come over mine. I haven't even started. I'm going to log off. I'm in Florida. Wait a minute. So it's happening in Florida too, man, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like flex is in the chat right now flex has heard himself talking he's just man goddamn i know you you just played that shit online <laughs> hey that's you now you actually on the live but i did hey last night i started looking at stream yard and i can get like two people on my streams or something like that doing because this is on youtube so i started looking at stream yard you can go zero dollars twenty dollars so i'm gonna start doing the twenty dollars so i can get up to six people on my live stream, but I got to take my laptop in the Best Buy first, make sure everything is super fast. And then I'm going to start doing StreamYard. But I looked last night and I was looking at all the structures and everything because I want to expand this podcast to get more people actually on here so people can talk in real time. Because me talking, that's cool, but I'm going to get more people involved. What up, Reg Life, my man? I'm in Detroit right now. Five trios with no pay. Damn. Damn. Five trips with no pay. Thank you for the super chat, brother. So he get five trips no pay and that's on uber you're on uber right now man <laughs> he said at least you got me laughing i'm fucking pissed off <laughs> i'm telling you man you was like man this is flex it's these raggedy motherfuckers but and that, that's what hey that needs to be the start of every commercial for ride share man this is flex because you these raggedy motherfucking apps jacking you out too. These motherfuckers got your motherfucking money. They taking all your shit. Man, this is flex. If if they fucking getting your money and they riding you, man, hit me the fuck up. Hit me back. This is flex. <laughs> it's like, man, yeah. They, man, Uber's gifting you all them free clients. Man, they get Uber's gifting you free clients. Glitch equals stealing. Same in Atlanta. Earnings updating. Man, this is crazy. What the fuck? Why is it? And I didn't even mean the live stream. I just wanted to jump on a live stream today because I just got back. So this is the second time I've live streamed when in real time, the apps have glitched. Maybe these motherfuckers are connected to my live streams. They're like, you know what? Since this motherfucker want to talk shit about us, freeze everybody fucking money. Let me end this live stream right now so y'all can get y'all money. Hold up. I'll be right back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, that's fucked up. So let, let's hear what's going to happen on these other fucking channels. Talking about, oh, yeah, the Uber app is glitching. It ain't glitching. It's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah, Daytona, real shit. These motherfuckers like, this old raggedy motherfucker want to sit and talk shit about us. Guess what? We're going to freeze all you motherfuckers' pay. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Get off the live stream, Jeff. Get our money back. Get off the live stream so we can get our money. Jeff, I made the barbecue cookout Discord. I emailed you. All right, bet, bet. I'm going to get on because I know I got Discord set up. And actually, my Discord is my son's name. So because he said he's cashy kid or whatever the fuck. So I stole his Discord, but put my picture because I don't know how to set that shit up. So I said, dude, can I just have your Discord so you don't use it no more? So I took his Discord. So it'll it'll say like cashy kid or something weird. <laughs> I don't do technology, man. I don't do tech. So I got up. But see, I think I got the discord and the discord is like registered and shit. So I've been using it for a while now, for about a year and a half, two years. So I'm like, cool, cool. Oh, vicious vices. I'm a nerd. All right. Bet, bet, man. Hey, I'm I do software. I do accounting software. I work in the garage. I weld shit. When it comes to understanding how systems work, these new Internet systems, how they all migrate with each other. Like I said, I even I tried to open up 
stream yard last night. I got far. I got pretty far with it to where I saw that it, it actually linked this channel to there to, to the stream yard. But it's a lot of shit that I don't see. So I'm like, I don't know if it's going to be the same, man. I don't know if it's going to be the same because I, I need to see the same screens. Like I can upload different stuff, like move things around, have the title saying what I like to say, all this shit. So I got to I got to mess with stream. I'm going to probably do like a private stream just to like open it to see if I can see what I'm seeing because I don't understand stream. Yard. I don't understand that shit, man. I'm not Internet like that, but I'm going to figure it out. So vicious, you might get an email from me saying, hey, I'm going to invite you to this live stream. Start typing some shit and say some shit. Let me see. <laughs> you have to walk me through a stream yard. I'm saying, hey, can you see this? Can you hear me? Can you see this? Like, bro, the screen is black. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. I don't know what I'm doing, man. It'd be fucked up. I start a live stream. Everybody say, do we heard your voice the whole live stream? We never saw your picture. <laughs> it's like we just rolled around to a black stream. Like, dude, I don't know stream yard. Fuck that. And I remember when I first started doing live streams in the garage, you could hear my voice sometimes, but the screen would go black because the camera would fuck up because it was something that was wrong with the setup and the screen would go black. But everybody said, we can hear you, but the screen is black. I just end the fucking live stream. I'm like, man, this is fucked up. That's why I was like, then I finally fixed it. So now the screen stays the whole time, which is cool. Yeah, exactly. Well, Angela, I work for Lyft today. I just cashed out before it happens to Lyft. Smart shit, Angela. Smart shit. Wait, let me see. I know I had some money on uh, Uber. No, I had like 30 something dollars on Uber. Let me see if I got money on Uber right now. This is crazy, man. Hey, everybody check your Uber app right now. Everybody check your shit. Go on your earnings tab right now. Okay, my earnings is zero. I had $46 and I cashed out. Uh, I cashed out last night $46 and uh, five cents. Cool. So it's nothing in there right now. All right, bet, bet. Because I'm like, man, I'm not messing with this shit. Like I said, I don't, I don't like these apps, man. And the fact that they're able to glitch and do shit like this. This is Friday night. It's the 19th Friday night. A lot of people, car notes and shit like that hit later in the month. Depending on when you bought your car, these are the times when you start, you know, paying all your, your notes and all your bills before February rolls around. Oh, my shit, like 16th, my note hits on the 16th every month. So I just paid my car note on like the 14th. So the, to, this is the time when people start paying. Because usually if I didn't have the money and I got paid on Friday, I'll be making my car payment today, the 19th. Because you got to like five days, 10 days to make your car payment. Mine is due on the 16th of every month. So today is the day when everybody's paying their car notes. This shit's frozen. And this is a good night to drive. Weekend nights are good to drive. So you drive Friday, Saturday, you make enough money. You don't pay your car, no, your insurance in two fucking days normally. So for them to freeze this shit up and do this shit right now, it's fucking up a lot of people's ability to pay their car notes. And I, like I said, just luck of the draw. My car note hits in the middle of the fucking money. It hits the 16th every month. So I'm like, perfect. I got a couple of weeks to, you know, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, pay it. And then the last two weeks out, I hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. Now I got mortgage. But it's like you these are the times right now is when people are covering that that wave of bills, that second wave of fucking bills. My first wave is from the first to the fifth. My second wave is like 15th up to like the 20th. That's your second wave right there. How they glitched like lift glitched on first wave lift glitched earlier this month, December the 31st. So lift already glitched in January 19 days ago. Now Uber's glitching right now on the second wave. Tell me they're not fucking working together. Tell me these motherfuckers not working together. So I'm sitting there like, so Lyft fucked us up in the first half of the month. Uber got us on the second wave right now. Dude, they doing this. I'm telling you, these apps are working together, man. They working together. Man, here's a two-week, 2K a week, get up, Beamer. Here's 5K a week, glitch, glitch, next. <laughs> exactly, Larry. It's like glitch, glitch, next, man. Not much in there since it's all cash rides now. Sorry for all the glitch back to back. Not working together. They're owned and controlled by the same people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Logan. Oh, see, Logan's in Vegas. I mean, he's in Phoenix right now. He's just wait. Says my earnings still updating on Uber Eats. Pepsi, Coke. Larry said that shit the other day. Pepsi, Coke. <laughs> same fucking thing. <laughs> Sound like Samuel Jackson. Motherfucker, Pepsi could be goddamn Coke for all I fucking know. I wouldn't know because I don't like the motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, I have that Uber card. As soon as the ride finishes, it goes directly to my Uber debit card, Jeff. So, Joker, man, did you do Uber today? Did you do Uber today? 
Yeah, them two motherfuckers from the split, they're 50 million. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But it's fucked up, though, man. Today is the second wave. The bills are hitting. Everybody drives. Okay, so your money did go to the car. Cool, cool. But the, the fact that everybody who's driving Uber right now, a lot of people driving Uber right now are not getting all their second wave money. And you know how Lyft did that shit. And it was on New Year's Eve. Everybody was scared to open their shit on New Year's Eve. So not a lot of people worked on New Year's Eve. People were scared. Like, man, I ain't fuck with this shit. It held my money up. Like I said, people still missing $70, $304 to this day from Lyft. Still missing that shit to this day, 19 days later. And now Uber pulls this shit. Nobody's going to drive this weekend. We got Super Bowl coming up pretty soon. We got March Madness coming up in about a month and a half. We got all these fucking big events coming up. This weekend is a pay weekend to where people are paying their second wave of bills. So to have an app that's not fucking working on your second wave of bills, because right now nobody's getting tips. Nobody's getting earnings. You don't know what the fuck is going. Nobody's getting the surge they got. If you didn't screenshot your shit to screen record your shit, they can lie to you. Just like what, um, damn, somebody sent me something the other day. Flex, was that you? Hold up for a second. Let me see something. I'm going to show y'all something. Well, I can't show it to you, but I can tell you about it. Uh, Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? It was somebody in here. Was it Flex? No, it wasn't you, Flex. It wasn't you. Somebody sent me something the other day, or either today, either today. Who was it? Was it Andre? Who was it? But this is what happened. So motherfucker had a $15 trip, $15, because he had a surge and everything included. $15 trip, something like that. Did the trip. After the trip, it recalculated and said he was at risk for deactivation because his location didn't uh, match up to where he got the surge or whatever like that. Something weird like that. So they only paid him $7 for the trip. Man, I know it's in my phone. Who, who? did that somebody sent me that and i don't know why i can't find it right now but that's pissing me off right now that i can't find it because i hate to do that shit it was somebody who put that shit in there Arr! who did it who did it it wasn't you dalton was it was that you nope it wasn't dalton I already did dalton's already who did that oh there it is sham okay this is hey Today, I had a situation with Uber. The first person I thought of was you. So on my way home, I saw a surge all over Boston. And I said, let me get a ride to my destination. It's Shan. Say so Uber sent me a ride of $15. And after dropping the client, boom, I was paid $7.45. I was mad and contacted him. Uh, if you see their response. So I went and I looked at the response. And it said, share the trip with your details. The trip was $15. There was a surge. Please review the fare. And they were just saying, hey, welcome. My name is Karish Q, like Karish Q or something weird like that at the end. And then, oh, I completely understand your concern regarding the fare being low. Do you mind waiting two or three minutes while I wait, while I uh, look into this? Then it says, to preserve the integrity of the Uber app, our system flags the portions of fares related to surge pricing that seem unusual before authorizing payout. So to preserve the integrity of the Uber app, our system flags the portions of fares related to surge pricing that seems unusual before authorizing payout. And then it says Uber detected irregular location activity on your account that improperly resulted in surge pricing being applied to your fare. As a result, surge pricing for this trip or order has been removed and replaced with non-surge pricing. Please check your location settings and turn off any location altering software. But he says, I'm in Boston, so I don't know what you mean by location. <laughs> this is fucked up. So they said, uh, I know the resolution was not satisfactory as you would have expected. However, I tried my best and done all the possible things I could have done per guidelines to resolve your concern. And it says, uh, wait, let me tell you about the, the end part right here. Oh, where's where's the end at? Oh, let me. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Oh, I don't think I missed it. Oh, as stated in our terms, improper use of the Uber app may result in loss of access to the platform. And Shan said, that's not fair. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know what you mean by location. So what happened is he got surge. The app got upset that surge was applied to his ride. 
So I think the writer probably didn't pay Surge, or maybe the writer did pay Surge, and they just want to cheat him out of that shit. But he had Surge already on his phone. $15 was the ride. So he's like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go get the ride for 15 bucks." Went over there to get it. They paid him $7.45. They cut off almost eight fucking dollars. They cut that shit in half. Man, man. Yeah, exactly. So one most <laughs> more of their famous words. Oh my God, it sounds like every time I contact them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mine still sitting on $91 from this morning. So, William, so you did rides, but it's still sitting on 91, or 91 is what all you did. Man, man, exactly. These copy and paste responses piss me off. Yeah, Daytona, because they're not even talking to them. They're like fucking with them. And they're saying, you know, they're they're sitting there saying, hey, you know, we understand your frustrations. Let us look into this. And then they go, oh, uh, based on your location data, please check your location and your phone to ensure that, you know, we're the surge pricing is commensurate to what it, I'm just like. They never said what happens. Like, hey, man, show us a screenshot of you having a surge. It sounds like he was on pet patrol. <laughs> could have been, could have been. But see, this is the thing. Say, bro, my best of it was 956.6 miles a day. Damn, $10 a mile, damn near. Now that's $18 a mile because you want a half mile for 956. That's damn near. That's $19 for a mile. $19 per mile. Oh shit, Mikey. Kill them, kill them, fuck them. Do 10 miles like that. You just made $190. <laughs> you do 10 miles for 190. I think I want to roll with Mikey today. Fuck that. 10, 10 miles for 190 bucks. Kill them, kill them. Yeah, but, and that's the thing. With, with Paw Patrol, let's say you grab a surge with Paw Patrol. You grab it. They can't tell you, like, if I want to drive on Uber Pet, I could drive on Uber Pet. Just like the other night, I picked up them two fucking Border Collies. I had Paw Patrol on. So if I have Paw Patrol on and I want to drive on Uber Pet, I can. If I pick up a surge on Uber Pet and nobody's ordering Uber Pet, that's not my fucking problem. If, I just, if I'm cruising, I pick up a $10 surge, I got Uber Pet on. I can't force motherfuckers to say, hey, man, hurry up and order a ride while I got this surge for Uber Pet. No, I can go back to Uber X, ride, get an Uber X ride. And they said, damn, how'd you get that surge? That surge was like down the street over there, but you use it like a mile down the road. Oh, because I had it on Uber Pet. I was willing to pick up dogs down there. So if I was willing to pick up dogs, once I got up in this area, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to be able to pick up a dog. Let me just put it back on Uber X. But the surge is still on my phone. You can't tell me you don't get that surge. Why not? Well, because that surge was for back there. But there's no policy that says you have to use a surge in the area where you are, except at the airport. That's the only time they tell you that shit. You have to use this surge at the airport. That's it. But anywhere in this city, hey, is it that's right? I drove 22 miles for 632. Not bad. Wait, 22 miles for 632? No, that's horrible. That's great. <laughs> Learning from Jeff. <laughs> that's great that's horrible hey i was trying to go 22 miles i would have did it for free but they paid me six bucks <laughs> that was great <laughs> it's six dollars more than i had so i don't care i was willing to go 30 miles for that price <laughs> it's like that's stupid it was amazing <laughs> 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 that's just funny as hell somebody said that's horrible that was great <laughs> that's just fucked up he says man i went 22 miles for six dollars learned from jeff it was amazing that's stupid i would have did it for free <laughs> six dollars i didn't have sound like these motherfuckers driving right now <laughs> no one eight miles for seven yeah since uber took away uber select i've been using your paw patrol move I've held on a 725 surge for two days. Hey, Daytona, you got to do that shit. Do it. And even when you turn your app off, it comes back. Like, that shit's crazy. If you turn your app off, I thought it, like, removed the surge. That's why I leave my app running. But, yeah, I've held on to 15 $20 surges for a while. Cruising like a motherfucker. Kev said, hey, Uber's glitching right now. You lying, Kev. No, it's not. Uber's glitching right now? Bullshit. How? Tell everybody in here how. How is Uber glitching? You let us know. Is it not paying you? <laughs> Just fuck with you, Kev. Hey, welcome to the barbecue, my man, Kev. Kev's in Phoenix, too, man. That's my guy right there. Yeah, man, we've been talking about that shit. Everybody's doing rides right now, and it ain't paying no fucking body. It's like, damn, man, this is crazy. And see, Kev, this is the second time 
in the month of January, December the 31st, and now the 19th, about two weeks apart, each app has done some sh jank shit. So <laughs> we should let them know. Getting in contact with EEOC is a very good idea. I heard they had Uber on a watch list for three years till 2023 when they stopped being watched. Oh, probably time to get back on there. Yeah, if there's a glitch, I'm staying home tonight for a six-hour stream. Yeah! Well, we're only at two hours right now. We got, well, tonight, a few, Kev, I'm glad you're here. Damn it, Kev, welcome. We need to find Nick. We got to get uh, Kings, James, Juan Vargas. We're going to Cave Creek tonight. We're going to try cash rides in Cave Creek. That's what our play is tonight. And I'm willing, like I said, I got, I put gas in last night. So I got, you know, I was down about 60 miles, filled it up last night. I'm willing to head up to Cave Creek tonight, sit up in front of Buffalo Chips and just, you know, try to get people to fucking get cash. I say, hey, anybody need a ride? We got drivers. We even tell the fucking bouncers at the front door. Hey, man, if anybody needs an Uber, we're out here, man. We got a whole group of Uber drivers because you guys rarely get rides. See if he'll go in and tell a DJ. Hey, everybody tonight and everybody partying and drunk and going crazy right now. You know how we always complain about not getting uh, drivers. We got like five drivers right now sitting outside in the parking lot who specifically came up here to take you raggedy motherfuckers home. So nobody has to stress about an Uber tonight. And I bet everybody here to DJ say that shit is going to be like, oh, yeah, shots for everybody. Let's get fucked up. <laughs> and so when everybody's getting fucked up, what up, Tony? Driven dads in the building. Real idea. White and nerdy to ride and dirty. Yeah. So when everybody's up at Cave Creek getting fucked up because we got five drivers out there, dude, I say we should do it. Fuck Uber, fuck Lyft. We should go up there and just try. I mean, what is it going to hurt to try? If we don't get a ride, fuck it. Don't turn on Uber because they're going to fuck your money over. Just figure something out. Do not turn on Uber. Because if this is the shit they own, they ain't paying nobody, man. The beat just dropped. Dalton said, boo. Do, 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 do. Everybody's like, yeah, we got Uber drivers outside. Let's get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Mike said, I'm going to Queen Creek then. I'm telling you, Cave Creek. See, and I'm closer to Queen Creek than I am to Cave Creek. But this is the thing about Cave Creek. It's a lot of good motherfucker rides up there. And it was when they leave Buffalo Chips, there's nobody up there. Everybody's going to Happy Valley, Deer Valley, Carefree, all these spots, little short neighborhoods up the hill and shit like that. Queen Creek. You got what Norton's Norton's is that little bar in, down in Queen Creek. Everybody hangs out at Norton's, but I'll tell you, it's good because you could take people down like fucking Jermaine. You could take people to all these little side streets and shit. So, and I do get good tips from Norton's. I'll give you that. And that little sports bar, right? Just to the, uh, in the same park lot as Norton's just North. So I think Queen Creek, Cave Creek, those might be good plays for tonight because nobody's ever there. There's always surging out there. You might get a trip down to Santan. Grab somebody in Santan, bring them back to Cave Creek. Just keep going back and forth down Empire Road and shit all fucking day. Just make money, man. Make money. So, oh, Knife Juggler said, what up, Jeff and all? Thanks again for hitting me back with the Tubman details. Much appreciated. There you go, brother. Hey, if that's your money, keep your money. Get your money. Shit, when they pull up and you're like, motherfucker, I got this $9 surge. They're going to be like, hey, we, we see you got a $9 surge. We're going to send you to Texas, 360 miles for like 90 bucks. You're like, man, Harriet Tubman, I'm keeping my $9. <laughs> I ain't taking that ride. Harriet Tubman, keep your money. Shit. So you'll be driving right by my house. Say, so make sure the waves you go by. <laughs> Ezra said, you're going to be driving. <laughs> Ezra said, I ain't going. Fuck that shit. You'll be driving right past my wave, motherfuckers. You go by. <laughs> That hey, tell me you ain't going without telling me you ain't going, motherfucker. Wave at my house as you go by. <laughs> tell me you're not fucking with us without telling me you're not fucking with us. <laughs> Ezra straight busting us out like a motherfucker. He said, Hey, y'all be driving right past my house, motherfucker. Wave as you go by. Oh, I guess you ain't fucking with us. <laughs> Blink twice, motherfucker, for real. Uh oh, they finally fixed it, but I don't think I'm gonna drive for this motherfucker anymore today. Oh, so they started. Okay, so the money came back. All right, the money came back. Woo, man, I don't know. Y'all might want to start emailing motherfuckers, man. This is, I hit you back with a modified tell me that works without affecting your ARC or check it out. It's Nando. All right, Nando. Cool, cool. I'm going to hit you up, brother. I'm going to hit you up. The modified Tubman. <laughs> I'm going to see that shit. I'm going to be like, when I'm going to open them up, I'm like, hoo -hoo, I know who you are. A sampasana, squash banana. <laughs> 
<laughs> as soon as you hit that motherfucker, Harriet Tubman, go, hoo hoo, I know who you are. A sump a son, a squash banana. <laughs> Kick that motherfucker right out. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, now be like, but how do you know me? I know who you are. You Mofasa's boy. <laughs> That's Nando. Nando, you need to change your motherfucking cat. You need to change your YouTube account to Mofasa's boy. I know who you are. You Mofasa's boy. Azampasana, squash banana. <laughs> Shit. What time we hitting K? Hey, Nick, I don't know, man. If we can get up in that area, let's get up in that area, probably around about, I think, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, because that's really when people start going up there. So if we can be 9, 30, 10 o'clock and we just kind of like sit at a, at a uh, Circle K or see what rides are going up there. And if we can cash them up going up, let's cash them going up. There's a Circle K sitting up there, too. But if we can't cash them going up, we just want to grab somebody for like a dirt cheap ride. Say, what you drinking, Jeff? <laughs> it's my motherfucking juice, baby. Now, it's just some regular fucking two dollar juice I'll be buying. So if we can grab somebody and take them up there, then, you know, at least we'll be sent at the Circle K. And in Queen Creek, I mean, Cave Creek, there's only one Circle K. So once you get there, you drop somebody off at Buffalo Chips or whatever little bar you got. Just go back to Circle K and just kind of hang out for a minute. Measure reality. Got to go get it. Go get it. It's 430 out here, man. 430. So, Jeff, your shirt reminds me of a commercial for school that I did. It was called Six Week abs and two week buns it was based off of food poisoning from eating raw meat <laughs> exactly the week and the week i love it i love it that's funny shit so i'm drinking bush na when i'm driving hell yeah tony's like man i was in a sixth grade when i did that shit six week abs and two week buns <laughs> you're gonna get fat <laughs> no that's funny shit this is AJ. I'm just curious. Do you ever do lift schedule rides? Nope. Nope. They don't pay enough. They don't pay enough. I never do lift schedule rides. Because like I said, they be putting up $3 rides, $4 rides. I'm like, who the hell schedules a $3 ride? And the thing is, they'll lock your phone up. So if you do a schedule ride for, let's say, $3, they're going to lock your phone up for like 15, 20 minutes. And so you can't take another ride. You sitting there waiting on a fucking three dollar ride for the next 15, 20 minutes. I don't never use that lift. They their schedule rides don't pay enough. I don't touch that shit. Delta Sands going out at 8 p.m. tonight. Yeah. So, Nick, we're going to do that, man. I'm going to shoot you a message or whatever. And when I shoot you a message, I'll probably text you and shit like that. It'll be me, Kings James. Hopefully, you know, Kev will be out there with us. And I don't know if Juan Vargas is going because Juan Vargas lives way out to the west. So I don't know if he's going to go all the way up to Cave Creek. The farthest he might go is downtown Tempe. And then get a ride back. But we all might shoot up north and just try. Just try. What well, Mikey's they lift deactivated me for one comment someone made about me. It's fucked up. And that's the shit, Mikey. That's what I say, man. As contractors, we got to get profits. Because that's the kind of shit right there that'll fuck you. You owe, you got rent. You got motherfucking insurance. You got car note. All this shit going on. And they're going to deactivate you for one comment. If you ain't got the profits, you can't even deal with that right now. You got to, you know, find a way to get through the next couple of days, couple of weeks before you can figure out, OK, discombobulate it. But if you got fucking profits in the bank, fucking deactivate me all you want. I'm going to find my way out. I'm going to find my way out. But it's like, man, so the worst part is as hard as fun to contact some Lyft. Yeah, Lyft, they got that the worst AI ever. Worst AI ever. I don't even deal with them. Not nah, now. Nah. But no, Nick, tonight we're going to do that, man. And like I said, it's, it's just worth a shot hopefully we can give out some cards I don't, I don't know nick you got cards yet do you got cards made yet because i'm gonna take an extra few up there anyways but if you got if you ain't got no cards made or something like that man you know at least have your you know screenshot your qr code to your phone or something i don't know so as zeke you can show somebody your phone and they can hit it okay screenshot your qr code to your phone so if somebody say hey you got cash app or venmo you don't have to open the apps up okay you got a qr code. okay cool cool Cause you can get a QR code. You can, you know, print it out on paper, use like, uh, you know, plastic wrap or something like that, uh, that, uh, laminating paper, anything you can. Cause when we get up there, dude, I want to be able to, you know, see people coming out the door and be like, Hey man, if anybody needs an Uber, we got a few drivers right here already. We already made the drive up. You know, we willing to do you guys some good cash rides and you know me, I don't give a fuck. I go talk to anybody. So if somebody said, Hey man, we got four and somebody got a car big enough for fucking four, take them. Like, hey, he's got an SUV. Take, hey, I'll do it. I, I got, I could do four because I might say I'm, I'm cool for two or three. And that's the max I'll do is two or three. But if somebody says, hey, I'll do four, 
shit, state your price. You out of there. And his mom because hey, man, I only got one. I'm cool with that shit. I could do one. And just everybody go up there and just kind of, you know, state your price, get your ride, shoot out of there. Hopefully it's close. Shoot back and let's start this shit all over because it's all night. We just kind of service that area without them having to use the apps. And if we can do that together, then people are going to start getting used to people doing that. And it might be a good play. Hey, Friday, Saturday night, we know the guys that we normally use. They come up here every Friday, Saturday night. You know, it's Nick, it's King James, you know, it's Jeff, it's Juan Vargas, it's, you know, Kev. Let's go try this shit. They see the little orange beamer sitting like, hey, Jeff's back. Hey, you took us last week. See, that's it. Not paying. Oh, shit, Kev said it's not paying, damn it. So what, you got you got your money back up there? Yeah, Mikey, set up that Venmo, man. Like I said, and if you got, like, I got Bank of America, so Zelle is easy. I just give somebody my phone number, and they just Zell me right there. It pops up real quick. It comes straight. It'll send me a text message saying, you know, Scott just paid you $45. Shit sends me a text instantly. That's why I love getting, I tell motherfuckers, if you want to tip me, please use Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, because I want to see that shit quick. I don't want... 30 days to wait to see if you tip me one dollar like god damn it it took you 30 days to tip me a buck you raggedy motherfucker yeah got 257 rides five stars oh mikey you you still kind of new man 257 rides shit we gonna get you over like at least over 300 <laughs> we gotta make those rides though at least two three dollars a mile that's what we gotta do two three dollars a mile rides damn it's still not paying damn david says it's an la glitch too so right now, hey, Jeff, we're having problems with our earnings on Uber because here's what it says on my last trip. Right. Updating earnings. Check again in a few hours. What the hell is that? I don't know, Jamil, man. No, I'm just kidding. We was talking about that earlier. I was going to fuck with you for a minute, but I'm not going to fuck with you because you like, dude, what the hell is something's glitching right now with the Uber app and Uber Eats because Logan's on Uber Eats. So it's got to be the whole Uber system is fucked up right now. And it's crazy because it's Friday. And it's like, this is the day when everybody gets paid in a, like usually a bi-weekly or, or every weekly, they sit up here and they pay people on Friday. What if they're holding all the driver money up to pay all their fucking employees? I mean, what did Lyft do on the 31st? Lyft held all their fucking money up for some reason. They held everybody's money up. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> Mr. Perfect is stupid. It's a Jeff reminds me of the Senate from the wire. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Chrissy says it happening in Rockford. I, I just sent you an email, man. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. On a damn Friday, on a Friday, like I said, everybody's paying bills. I can't. That shit. Now it's one thing to do something on like a random day, but bill days to me <clears throat> are always around the first and always the middle of the month. Those are big bill days because that's when bills usually come in waves. Even if you don't pay something, let's say you got a bill due on the eighth. And you got to pay it on the 15th. So it's due on the 8th, but they give you up to the 15th or the 20th to, to pay it before a late fee hits. That's when that second check hits always in the middle of the fucking month. This is when that check is hitting right now. Because if the check is hitting today, it's not going to hit next week. Next week is going to be like, what, the 26th. So the 26th is not going to hit. It'll hit today. It won't hit on the 26th. But then it'll hit again on like the 3rd, 4th, or the 5th is when your next check. So that's the bi-weekly pay. This check right here is the check that covers January shit. This check, it covers all the January shit, like car note insurance. The next check you get is what you're going to pay mortgage rent and all that shit with. That's how bi-weekly is set up. Because <clears throat> you will never catch me getting paid on the 19th, paying my motherfucking rent for the next month on the 19th. That ain't fucking happening. I'm going to use that money for something. I'm not giving my landlord my money on the fucking 19th. That's to cover all the shit from January. Landlord going to get his money on 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. I'm not giving them my shit on the 19th. You ain't getting no early fucking payment. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, Liv made hella money in interest from withholding driver's money. Yeah. And so, when, and like I said, when we start budgeting our money, there's a reason why we budget our money like that because we, we hold that cash in case shit happens. Let's say you had a fucking flat tire on the 24th. Like your rent's not really due to the first, maybe up to the fifth. You had a flat tire on the 24th. If you give your 19th money to the landlord, the flat that happened on the 24th, you can't buy fucking tires now. So now you're going to be down until your next check, which is on probably the first, second, third. You're like, damn, man, I, my tire fucking blew out. I'm riding on a donut. I can't even ride on the highways. And I can't do Uber on a donut. I can't do that shit. So it's like 
This is how we spread our money out as contractors, how we budget our money to make sure we afford the business, but we also afford our life. This shit right here is inconsistent. Just like they did on the 31st. They were fucking with us on the 31st. Now they doing it again right now. And that's why we got to say, you know what? Cash app Venmo Zell. Push that shit as hard as you can. Push that shit with all your mind. Push that shit like it's a motherfucking rock on your toe and you got to get that motherfucker off your foot. Somebody get in your car be like, listen, the apps keep glitching. They glitched on December the 31st. They glitched on January the 19th. That's twice in the same month. The apps have glitched to where we haven't been able to get access for our money to pay our bills. Trips haven't been calculating. Tips haven't been calculating. Can you please do cash app Venmo Zell? That's all I'm asking. Because as a driver, as a contractor, as somebody who's taking care of their family, I have to have a consistent way to get my money. If I don't have a consistent way to get my money, me giving you a ride does no benefit to me. Because I'm going to give you a ride. You're going to get to your job so you can make your money. But my money's never going to fucking show up. Like I said, it's still people right now, $70 short from the 31st, $304 short from the 31st. People to this day are still short from the 31st. So if we got to sit here and start doing this shit through Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle, Push this shit. Let your people know when they get in the car, these apps are fucking with us. Push it. And a lot of people, it, it feels uncomfortable sometimes to talk to people. Just like I said, when I try to talk to people every once in a while, I come at them like real. And when I talk to, especially the younger generation, because I got a kid, you know, 21 and 15 year old. So when I talk to people, especially the young generation, I come at them how they go at each other. I be like, hey, dog, I'm going to tell you something right now, man. This trip ain't really paying me much. I'm, I mean, I'm picking you guys up. I don't have any surges. Not paying, man. It's only paying me like six bucks, bro. We're gonna tip you, man. We're gonna tip you. I, I swear I'll tip you right now, man. All right, cool. Then I'll leave the trip. Oh, if it's like, oh, we're sorry, about, then I'm gonna have to end the fucking trip then. But usually when people say that, oh man, we're gonna tip you, bro. They'll slide me five, ten, twenty bucks, like shit, all week. All it's been crazy all fucking week. Cause I tell people all the time, and and this ain't even all of it, but these are. This is what people be handing me, like all these fucking ten dollar bills. <laughs> I got like I had about six or seven ten dollar bills from people just handing me tens. Because when I tell people that the apps aren't tipping us, because like I said, I'll even message people sometimes. But when I tell them the apps aren't tipping us, people carry ten dollar bills all the time. They be like, "Hey, here you go, man." And sometimes I be thinking it's like a twenty or whatever. So I'll turn it it's like a one. One dude fucked me up one time. He gave me like I think it was like a five on the outside or something crazy with a ton of ones in the middle or something weird. He did. Where he gave me ones on the outside, he did something stupid. And I was like, I thought it was way more than that. But he tipped me and shit. But we got to stay on that shit. Stay on it. Hey, Jeff, call a ride share garage and ask them if they're in touch with Dara. So they have a good relationship. I'm sure Dara sent a memo explaining what's going on with this Uber glitch. <laughs> Bro, <Really>, you stupid. <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, what's up, Dara? What you guys doing in the garage? Wiping ourselves down in oil. <laughs> like, you guys are fucking weird. Can I come over? Sure, Dara. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Accidental glitch on purpose. Like I said, I think it's a sabotage, man. I think it's a sabotage. And they do this shit all the time when people know... The fact, yeah, here's 20, I'll fold it up and it's a $1 bill. Exactly, Larry. They do that shit to you, man. Oh, dog, I'm going to tip you, man. They'll have the money folded all nice and it'd be a good ass ride. You'd be like, hell yeah. You undo that shit, it's like $3. I'm like, this raggedy motherfucker. I feel like giving his ass one star just for this $3. <laughs> and you know what I think, honestly? A lot has been said about this $50 million. A lot has been said about this $50 million. So I'm glad they're exposing all the shit that's going on with these people. Talk about it. They're publicly traded now. It's public information. We should know about this shit. Talk about it. So everybody's talking about this $50 million. I guarantee there's people out there going, bruh, we can make more money off of him than he can make off his $50 million. How? How are we going to make more money off of him? Sell the stock short. What we all can start doing right now is getting rid of all of our fucking shares, tanking it, but we hedge our bet by putting money on the bottom too. So we sell right now, trap on the top, sell at margin, sell short on margin at the bottom, tank that shit, it hits bottom, we make money at the top, then we make money at the bottom, Dara don't get shit. <laughs> oh, Dara gets 50 million bucks. Well, let me say Dara and his team. Let's say that, because you know this motherfucker ain't doing it by itself. 50 million is a lot of money. 
Even NBA players, when they get paid 120 million bucks, that's not all theirs. They've got teams around them, attorneys and all these people they got to pay. So Dara and his team, which probably includes Tony West, a lot of other fucking people that they got in, you know, Justice Department and shit. There's a $50 million payout that a lot of people can get their hands on if he keeps the stock at a certain level for, I think, 90 consecutive days, something weird like that. So he's got to do it for 90 consecutive days. Keep that stock at a certain level. If it drops, then I don't think he gets the money. Now, that's a big ass carrot. That's a really big fucking carrot. And a lot of people out there that knows how stocks work and say, hey, we can make money at the top because right now Uber is like profitable depending on where you bought it. It's profitable. If you bought Uber, let's say $10 ago, $15 ago, then it's pretty lucrative. You can sell now and make a good chunk. Say Uber Eats was tripping for a minute after you said it. Just did my first roadie delivery. Four tires, $16 for three miles. Logan. Hey, because you got that big ass truck. That's what you can do that shit. You can do that. Four, 16 out for three miles, man. I'm signing up my Escalade for roadie, man. Fuck that. Four tires for 16 bucks. You only went three miles. Dude, I'm doing that shit. It's the NGB. Hey, that's NGB stock. He's the stock guy in the group right here. He's the stock guy. And so if, if you say, hey, man, I bought that shit at this and it's right here right now, you could sell it, make your profit. When somebody sees a mass sell off happening, everybody's going to get scared. Everybody gets fucking scared and everybody start panic selling. Oh, shit, the stock's going out. It's going out. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. It's going out. It's going to crash. You had your bet because you selling that shit short at the bottom any fucking ways. So as long as it hits your margin at the bottom, you sold your stock up here, but you also selling short right here with something else. So that you made your money at the top between this little gap right here, the profit gap, it starts tanking, 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 tanking. You make money again as soon as it bottoms out. Now you just made twice the amount, more than twice the amount. You made money on money, top and bottom. And what do Dara get? Nothing because the stock couldn't stay at a certain level. So I don't know. A smart motherfucker can say, hey, they're chasing a big ass carrot. They're chasing a big, we could fuck them up. We could really, we could tank this motherfucker and make a lot of money at the bottom. What y'all want to do? Y'all want to tank this shit or what? Y'all Reddit did it before. The, the Wall Street bets, they know what they're doing. Wall Street bets, they know how to make money moves. They got some smart motherfuckers in there. They got money moves. And they can say, hey, let, let's sell this shit short. If it hits this fucking price at the bottom, that's what we're looking for. And everybody says, sell short. And just anybody with stock tanks that shit. It hits us. We make money. Yeah, they did GameStop. GameStop. And what was it? AMC. GameStop and AMC. They killed them. Killed them. And I'm sitting there like, these motherfuckers, because a lot of people think that you can only make money if a stock goes up. They've never heard of selling short because that's what we're taught. We're taught to buy something at a low price, sell at a higher price, call it a profit. They don't know how to sell short on margins where you've already sold it at one point. You've already sold it. Technically, you've sold it and you're going to sell it short. You're going to sell it at the bottom. So between where it was and where it is, when it finally tanks, that's your profit right there. Because you say, hey, I received a hundred for it because somebody gave me a hundred dollars for stock that I knew that was only really worth 50 fucking bucks. So they gave me a hundred. So I borrow, I said, 50, I'll buy it at 50. I sold it at a hundred, bought it at 50 on margin. When it drops all the way down to 50, even if it goes lower than 50, the lower it drops, the more I make because I sold it at a hundred. And that's how people do it. They go, hey, man, I sold all this shit at, at 100 to Jeff. Jeff bought all my stocks at 100. What are you doing? I'm hoping that shit go down because I really paid, you know, I really said I borrowed against it at this price down here. And that's how people, you know, make a ton of money on, they call it selling it short. You've got to let it drop as low as it can drop. And usually you got a target price. The, the price you were willing to sell it as your target price. It could go lower than your target and you can hold on to that shit till it goes real low, then sell it. Yeah. I tell pastors all the time, the ride share game fucked up when they went public. Oh, yeah. Because Daytona, it, it's like I was saying earlier in the live stream. When you got too many people's hands involved in money, that's when shit gets fucked up. Because at first it was the drivers. We had all the money. We made the money. We created the money. We accepted the rides. We declined the rides. We it was all about us. It was all of us dealing with all the money. That was it. When Travis ran Uber, when, you know, Lyft was run by the old fucking people, it was all about the drivers. Once this shit went public, you got a lot of greedy motherfuckers now. Hey, man, 
we're going to give you fucking, you know, $2.2 billion. We like a return on this investment. Drivers, what do we do? Hey, man, I'm buying a $10,000 car. I just want to make enough to pay off this fucking loan and pay rent. And we didn't need a lot of money in return. We were buying cheap cars. Then we started buying a little more expensive cars. We really started getting good at it, seeing how it was working out. Then we started moving to a new neighborhood, living in a new neighborhood, driving new neighborhoods and shit, getting ourselves out of the hoods and shit. It was going well. But when those greedy ass investors came saying, hey, we don't want to drive. We don't want to pick no fucking body up. We don't want no motherfucking hot dogs in our fucking car. But I tell you what, we're going to give you two billion bucks. We would like our money back, though. Oh, you're going to give us two billion. We're going to invest that shit. We're going to build new infrastructure. We're going to pay off more politicians. We're going to fucking invest in this, invest in that. We're going to buy companies. We're going to buy fucking Drizzly. We're going to do all this crazy shit with your money to get a return on your money. Greedy motherfuckers got involved when it went public. It was just us at first. It was just us. Just out here driving, picking people up, being happy. You know, getting $400 bonuses over a weekend of driving. $600 bonus during a weekend of driving. We was happy. Shit was good. We didn't give a fuck about the shitty trips. Because we knew we had a fucking bonus. We was getting $10 for every fucking ride we took. Give a fuck about it being a shitty trip. People are like, oh, man, you taking $3 trips? Shit, this is really a $13 trip because I'm getting $10 on top of every fucking trip I take all weekend. I'm getting $10 extra. This is a $13 trip. You see it as a three. And we were fucking killing the game back then, man. Tell people, making a grand $1,500 in a week was easy. $300, $400 a day. Was, we was all working part-time. We weren't even working full. When we did work full time, I got full time hours on my lip. I was making twenty seven hundred working 50 hours, twenty seven hundred, twenty two hundred when I'm working thirty eight hours, twenty two hundred bucks. It was fucking crazy because them them bonuses was killing at the end of the week. We had streak bonuses. We had surge. We had quests all during the week. Three ride challenges. We had crazy shit going. Ton, it was just us. Once the investors got involved. We want our money back. We didn't need those motherfuckers. We really didn't need them. Corporate people at the top wanted them. We want to expand. We want to get bigger. We want a cash injection. We want bigger bonuses. Because if we go public and we get all this money, our bonuses could be bigger. Because the board is going to improve bonuses for us. We don't got to worry about drivers no more. We can get big bonuses, you know, not even fucking with, you know, just fuck with the, with the board. We're going to fuck with drivers. And that's when the greed started. That's when the greed started. And now look at it now. We all, we're the ones doing the work. 30 something dollars in fucking, you know, three hours of sitting outside. I got 30 something fucking dollars. Just keep taking more rides. Just take all the rides. No, fuck you. I'm not. You're not going to beat my fucking car up for 40 cents a mile, 50 cents a mile. You're not beating my car up for that. You're not doing that to me. You can write it off on your taxes and I can put my foot up your ass too, but that's something that we're not doing right now, is it? We're doing something different right now. We're going for profits. So I'm going to sit here, not put my foot up your ass, not drive for 50 cent a mile, but I'm going to wait till a profit to ride. That's the shit we're on. Because if I was on some other shit, I better kick you in the ass. But I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to make a little money, feed my family. That's all I'm trying to do. And instead of them letting us just do that, how we were doing, they're run, running cars to the ground. Well, if you want to run your car into the ground, get one from Hertz. Hertz is like, yeah, come get one from us. We'll charge you. Now Hertz is like, fuck. That kind of hurt. <laughs> yeah, it did, didn't it, motherfucker? That shit hurt, didn't it? Yeah, now your ass is getting rid of all those motherfuckers now. Hurts, hurts. <laughs> and so, man, says, I got a tune Jeff down going inside the house. I don't want the wife to hear you last time. Got me in trouble. I'm good on that. Oh, Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Tell her. When she walk in, be like, hey, what's up, Miss Perfect? How you doing today? Hopefully everything's going right. You got some candles burning in the house. Got you some Al Green playing in the background. Drifting on a memory. Sweeping the flow and shit like that. Fucking letting the dog eat the fucking dog food. It's an easy day, Miss Perfect. Don't worry about it. Mr. Perfect going to the garage. Now we're going to get it in. Yeah, motherfucker. What's good? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hear him. <laughs> he said the MF word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jeff. Cool it down, dog. <laughs> He's out. Love Al Green too. Hell yeah, because you know we be on that shit. Back in September, we play Earth, Wind, and Fire. Fucking Al Green, we be playing all that shit. See, that's what it is, man. When you walk in the house, if you want her to be cool with you, have Al Green already on deck. Start playing that shit. Drifting on a man. She'd be like, oh, she'll start sliding across the floor doing a motherfucking Chicago two step and shit. Like, oh, she start trying to see walking this motherfucker. Oh, drifting on a memory. Start see walking to that shit. Be like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the garage and listen to Jeff. 
You peek back through the door. She's telling that motherfucker sea walking the motherfucking Al Green. She looking like Snoop Dogg and that motherfucker. She got chucks on and everything. Tripping on. <laughs> it's like, hold the fuck up. You're supposed to be Chicago two stepping. Shit. This is 2024. Shit. We doing this shit. <laughs> gangsters don't dance. We boogie, motherfucker. Your wife be like, motherfucker, gangsters don't dance. We boogie. <laughs> Mr. Perfect got a gangster wife. God <laughs> <laughs> so after a while the couch can be more comfortable <laughs> shit hey you need to do that mr perfect buy your wife a shirt for her birthday said gangster don't dance they boogie she'd be like why'd you give me this it's long story babe long story <laughs> i'm not wearing that <laughs> you got to <laughs> he bought me a shirt that says gangsters don't dance they boogie i'm not wearing that to the party <laughs> like come on Shit, she went into the church picnic. <laughs> Motherfucker, look at Motherfucker, Pastor Pastor Jones, look over. Hey, Miss Perfect, how you doing? Like, whoa, what's that? That's a nice looking shirt there. What's that? Gangsters don't dance, they boogie. Oh, I see you. Motherfucker, pastors are sea walk. I got you, motherfucker. Shit, what's up? <laughs> like, damn, the pastor even sea walking. Shit, you go to a cool ass church, Mr. Perfect. That's what's up. <laughs> Shit, these motherfuckers over there kicking it. Shit, <laughs> man, no, but don't buy that shirt. Don't start that shit with her. Don't start that with it. Just go to the garage, hang the flags. <laughs> I know, motherfucker, still sea walking in 2024. They were like, I haven't seen that since. So I don't know when. Fucking Fast and Furious One was out. Yeah, exactly. Shit, we old school motherfuckers. I don't even know no new dances. I be seeing motherfuckers dancing on on like TikTok and shit. Like, fuck that. I'm still trying to see walk. I ain't perfected that shit yet. I'm still like, damn, hold up, fuck up. Keep tripping over my shoestring and shit. Like, damn, keep going the same way. Like, fuck, man. Change that shit up. You got to go the other way too, motherfucker. Change that shit up. But I'm going to perfect that shit. Motherfucker, like, dude, how old are you? 65, and I finally learned how to see walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said, I'm sorry. You're right. And I was wrong. Shirt idea. I know it for real. You're right. I'm wrong. Yeah. Motherfucker, Mike said, I'm going to get back on the road. <laughs> I know, Chris D, we be over here cracking the fuck up. <laughs> this shit's so stupid. <laughs> hey, that's Mr. Perfect and his wife doing that's been, Hey, he just he's trying to stay on their good side, you know what I'm saying? He, he trying to stay on their good side. We, we got that old school in us, but we trying to bring the new school with it. You know, we play some Al Green, but motherfucker, you might see some sea walking involved in that shit. Motherfucker, hell no. This is what... I'm gonna try to get a hundred a mile a day. Shit. Hey, if you hey, you might fuck around and get a hundred a mile. Your motherfucking ass hit the right goddamn shit. You get the right bar. Somebody be like, hey man, people kept declining our ride. We only gotta go one mile. I'm pissed off. Give you a hundred bucks, take us home. You be like, I was just fucking with him. I said a hundred dollars a mile. Speak that shit into existence. Fuck around, surprise yourself. You be like, Jeff, I can't believe it. This motherfucker gave me a hundred dollars a mile. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mrs. Purvis, I'm here, Al Green. Every time I see you in the chat now, <laughs> hey, Al, as soon as Mr. Purvis starts typing, everybody start typing. Drifting on a memory. <laughs> this motherfucker. This is how I can come home for dinner. Jeff, I'll be laughing my butt off. Can't even laugh out loud. Man, that's funny shit. She's like, What are you laughing at? Are you watching the interwebs? <laughs> No, baby, no, I'm not watching. No, I'm not on the internet no more. That fucking interwebs is going to damage your brain. <laughs> you acting like these kids. <laughs> I know, Ain't no woman like the one I got. <laughs> Hell yeah. We playing all the old shit. That's what you need to do, man. Get some ideas. Walk in the house bumping some shit. And she's going to be like, oh, you must be feeling good tonight. Shit, we're going to go down to play some fuck bingo. Let me call up Shirley. <laughs> It's like he came in a house playing. Ain't no woman like the one I got. I got out my bingo dabber. Shit, fucking B22, I 55. <laughs> Don't, fuck it, she gonna win some money. If we hit bingo, I'm buying a bunt cake tonight, baby. Bunt cake with frosted on top. Shit. Mr. Perfect gonna be like, hey, man, I ain't gonna see y'all for a couple of days. She won that bingo. I'll see you motherfuckers next week. <laughs> As soon as I get back on the road, I'm playing Al Green all night. <laughs> Hell yeah. He said, just put Al Green on Spotify. Just let it rip. Just let it go. Let it go. Al Green Radio. Fuck that shit. This is, man, hey, Chris D, this shit be crazy. Hey, we a bunch of old motherfuckers up in here. We have a good time. <laughs> so I'm burning a whole bunch of calories from laughing. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's Mr. Perfect. That's Mr. Perfect. He the one who started that shit. He says, man, I can't fucking listen to you when I go in the house. We just giving him ideas on how he can fucking be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Barry White, baby. Was that Secret Garden? Hell yeah. Fucking Secret Garden, motherfucker. Got, was that um, Al B. Shore? All them old school motherfuckers, man. All back. Chico DeBarge. Man. <laughs> man, as a salute, Jeff. Things... Um, thanks to you, I wise them stop taking shit rides doing cash apps. Two rides for 13 and 14 instead of six and 10. It was offering fight the power, brothers and sisters. Man, there you go, brother. There you go. I'm telling you, it's money. It's money. And if we don't, like I keep telling people, man, closed mouths don't get fed. We got to speak up. We got to talk to these people, man. Because if we ain't talking to them, they don't know better. They don't know better. They thinking that we're getting all the money. They paying these apps that, hey, man, I paid $24 for this ride, but they have no idea we're getting eight, nine dollars out of this ride. I paid 24 for this motherfucker. I'm like, bro, usually we getting like 18 bucks. I'm getting nine dollars. Shit, man, I just slide you 20 then. Cancel this shit. I just slide you 20. Cool. Like, motherfucker, I'm cool with that shit. And that motherfucker, just keep it moving. Keep it moving. And a lot of nights, like I said, I'll do recording like all night long, cruising around doing recording. Sometimes I'll do three, three, two, three, four rides in a row, and then I'll start to record and back up because I can't record every single ride. It's hard to fucking do. I do a lot of them, but in some of them, I'll like every once in a while, I'll let you kind of hear like people talking or something like that. Like the girls getting out the car laughing and joking, isn't that? Or somebody getting in the car, I'll let you hear that shit. But normally, I just like I try to make sure I do not give Uber and Lyft anything to try to terminate me on. They have no evidence of shit that I've ever done against terms. Of, they can hear me talk about it all fucking day. But can they ever, do they ever have a video of me doing anything? Nope. I can say, oh man, motherfucker got my car last night, gave me a whole suitcase full of fucking Iranian gold. What? Yeah, man, I had gold fucking bars and shit in my car last night. I got two of them. I went out and bought fucking two donkeys off of Craigslist with that motherfucker. I can say that. But now they got to come to my house and they got to see a donkey. It's like, ain't no donkeys here. I got three dogs here. They say, well, we heard you on the internet saying you use a gold bar and you bought a donkey. Man, I be fucking with people, man. But if you show the video of you doing that shit, that's different. You sitting there with gold bars, you fucking buying a goddamn donkey and shit. Now you on video. You can't deny that shit. So make sure you motherfuckers know what you're recording out there and know how far you want to go with that shit. It's cool to say what we want to say, but trust me, we're using a lot of strategies. That's why we Harriet Tubman. Motherfucker, you, when, when you're on this channel, you hear motherfuckers say Harriet Tubman, you know what that shit means. It means, hey, I did some shit, I'm going to email you about it. <laughs> I didn't video it, I'll email you about it. Like, all right, bet, bet. They should be at least 80 20. No, yeah, I wish, man. I wish. There's this smooth operator. Yeah, manifest that money. See, Andy, that's what we got to do. Speaking into existence, manifest it. And when you talk to yourself enough in the car about what you're going to say, prepping yourself for the next ride. And I know me when I'm in like the, the area, like ASU area, I know the kind of people I'm picking up. Most likely I'm going to pick up some younger people. So I already got, you know, some motherfucking Migos playing. I got some, you know, schoolboy Q. I got something going. I'm already prepped. So when they walking up to the car and they hear that man of the year, <laughs> man of the year, like, man, like, oh, shit, this is man of the year. It's my cut. See, I'm already prepped. They hear the shit coming through the windows. They get in. I can already chat with them already. Like, hey, man, the apps are fucking up. Dude, we ain't getting none of our tips. None of our tips. Oh, cool, bro. Cool, bro. You know what? Hey, man, I got like, I'll do the tip. I'll do the tip. Don't worry about it. Hey, man, here's five, bro. Thank you for picking us up. No problem, man. No problem. Tom Wiggins of Jeff. Dude, that dude last night in the comments had you heated. <laughs> no, man, I was laughing at him because it's that, that dude, like I said, we get trolls like that all the time. They come through thinking they know shit. But everything that they're saying, it proves to me that they they're lying. They oh man, I've been watching your video for three months. Then everything that you're saying, you know, we've already said and we've already talked. If you've been watching my video for the last three months, that means you got the most recent information. <coughs> you don't even have the old shit. You got the most recent shit. So if you've been watching my videos for the last three months and everything you saying, you're claiming we don't talk about it. We don't discuss it. We don't do it on this channel. You ain't been watching my shit for the last three months. You fucking with us. You threw a number out there. I'm not stupid. I don't know these fucking people. They don't even know me, but they think I'm stupid. I'm an accountant. I'm pretty clever. So if you tell me, hey, man, I came by your house, man. I saw your white BMW. I'd be like, for one thing, you're lying because I don't own a white BMW. I'm fucking quick. I got an orange BMW. All I knew it was orange. You know, I, it just looked white. And no, no. See, I caught you lying, motherfucker. So if you came by my house or you came by my channel and you said something, I'm listening to what you're saying that you saw or didn't see. 
which proves to me you really weren't where you said you were. You never was on this fucking channel. You troll like that dude. He, I remember his name. He used to troll me a long time ago. And I told him to fuck off a long time ago. So he's been trolling other people doing other shit. And he's one of those people that can't find a home. The people that I talk about sometimes, they can't find a home. So just like that guy, App Rides, every channel he goes on to, he gets kicked off of because these people can't find, they have nothing to do. They sit on the internet. They sit in their house. They just go around and, and try to fuck with other people to see if they can get a reaction, see if they can create content for themselves. Ragging the motherfucker last night. I got there. Oh, well, your content, this and that. And I, I can make better content. You know, I'm this and I'm the, well, do it. I don't, I don't want to. I just don't have the time. Sure, sure. It's not like those little, like I said, it's not like those little fucking kids at the park. Oh, I can shoot three pointers like that. I do three pointers like that all the time. Okay, here, here, take the ball, shoot a three pointer. Now, I don't want to shoot a three pointer. I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, why are you sitting over here talking shit on the sidelines? I mean, you you talking shit about how we shoot threes, how we can't shoot, how we missing everything, and how you can do so much fucking better. So we roll you the motherfucking ball. Y'all, nah, I don't want to shoot. I'm cool. I'm, I don't want to get dirty, man. I just, I'm, you know, I'm cool, man. Y'all can take that ball back. Exactly. Because I'm one of those people. Either put up or shut up. Motherfucker, you, you talking all that shit, but you're not saying that nobody's hearing you. You saying all that shit. And it's like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Nobody asked you to be here. Kick rocks if you don't like what's going on. Exactly. Exactly. And I sit there and I'm telling this motherfucker, you know, everything because he's like, oh, well, you guys, you know, you don't talk about this and you don't talk about that. And I'm like, motherfucker, you don't watch these channels. We always discuss that. We've talked about that shit for like the past year, baby. You late as a motherfucker. You short busting it like a motherfucker. You way late. Well, you don't tell anybody, you know, you, you make YouTube, you make shirts and stuff like that and you do YouTube. I'm like, Everybody knows I do YouTube. I've been doing this shit for a couple of years now. Everybody knows I get paid about it because I talk about it. I'm like, I've been doing shirts since 2015. So for you to say, well, you're selling merch. I've been doing it since 2015, motherfucker. It's 2024 right now. You just found out today? Are you fucking serious? You found out today that I sell t-shirts and I've been selling this shit since March of 2015 was the first time I ever sold a shirt. And you just now finding out. You late as a motherfucker. Short bus people, man. Short bus motherfuckers. My website has been there. Everybody do. I mean, Argentina people, Australia motherfuckers, Brazil, Canadians, everybody done bought shirts up that fucking website. And you finding out in 2024 that I sell shirts? Short bus motherfucker, whatever. Oh, well, you're not telling people that how much you make on YouTube. The fuck I don't. I even show people when the professor said, oh, he makes like 400 a month. I showed everybody what I make. I showed everybody everything I made. And even when I say, hey, man, I drive, I make more making fuck. I make more money driving than I make on YouTube. So I can't stop driving. I can't. Then what did I say last live stream? This is fucked up because now I'm starting to make more money on YouTube than I am driving. This raggedy motherfucker jumped in the chat last night. Oh, well, you're not telling anybody that you make more, you know, doing YouTube than you make driving. I'm like, did I not just say that shit? The live stream maybe two nights ago. The shit you trying to say today, I already said two nights. I'm telling you, man. It's so many motherfuckers hopping off the short bus with their backpack on too tight. Man, I'm just now getting home from school. I need a peanut butter jelly sandwich, mom. Like, motherfucker, get your fucking ass back on the short bus. Your motherfucker backpack too tight. It's squeezing off your motherfucking circulation. And I'm looking at these people. I'm sitting there like, dude, you have no idea who you even fucking talking to. He, Yeah, exactly. Just jealous, man. Shit. He was probably sent by Sergio. Real shit. Real shit. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Listen, watching this motherfucker, like, go back and forth, everything he's saying, and he's trying to be smart. He's trying to be smart. How many times I have analytics on my channel, analytics on my channel about Uber Eats and delivery, showing even a long time ago when I was doing the analytics, and I've said million times, delivery, you get more per mile. I've said that a gazillion fucking times. I even said that when, when Torp was fucking talking shit about the hot dog shit, he was mad about the hot dog shit. And I had to show these motherfuckers that I do make ride share content, I mean delivery content, and that I was like, delivery just pays you more per mile. It's just what it is. You just get paid more per mile. Just how it works out. Said that a gazillion times on this fucking channel. This raggedy motherfucker, what you don't discuss is how delivery pays more than ride share and you're not letting anybody know you're misleading people to make them think that ride share pays better than delivery. And you need to understand the, the dynamics and the analytics of delivery. And you don't understand. I'm like, you saying all these big ass fucking words to nobody. You saying all these big motherfucking words to a goddamn stuffed animal sitting on a bed. Motherfucker. It's like, we've already said this shit. Who are you talking to? Is this shit you practice with that giant motherfucking Snoopy you want at the carnival? 
because you ain't talking to me. This is the shit we've already talked about on this channel. You talking to fucking stuff, Snoopy. Motherfuckers like, you need to tell your mama backpack to mom. Can you watch Snoopy? I want to talk to him about financials tonight, motherfucker. Your backpack on too tight, you short bus motherfucker. You are not talking to me. And that's why I like trolls like this come through the channel all the fucking time. They don't watch none of the content. I've been following you for three months. No, you, them motherfucking backpacks is too tight for you. Motherfucker, you need to snap them goddamn straps and back the fuck up a little bit because I'm not that one. And so it's like he was sitting there trying to talk all this shit and I'm laughing at him. And you're like, oh, it must be age or memory or something. He was saying some sideways shit to me, trying to throw some shit. I said, dude, you're the most passive aggressive motherfucker I know. It's like, please, you can't even come at me. The shit you saying is stupid. Anybody reading this shit. And that's why I pin that shit and put it at the very top. Because I'm like, these are the kind of motherfuckers that come to this channel thinking they saying some big shit. People that got fucking snuff goddamn Snoopy sitting on the motherfucking bed, talking to those motherfuckers till they fall asleep, sucking their motherfucking thumb. Fuck them. Come to my channel if you want to. But I got all videos to prove everything that I've got to say. And then the idiot, check this shit out. The idiot, the idiot got the nerve to sit up there. We don't see you recording yourself converting a ride. You don't see me recording myself fucking robbing 7-Eleven either, do you? You don't see me record myself fucking going 120 fucking miles an hour, do you? You don't see me record myself doing wheelies on my motherfucking motorcycle. Because why would I record myself doing something against policy or against the law? I'm not an idiot. Well, you need to record yourself converting cash rides. Yeah, I'm going to record myself licking ice cream at the fucking grocery store too. How about that? I'm going to record myself eating a fucking Tide Pod while I'm at it. This is how these motherfuckers think, man. And I'm like, who is going to record themselves doing a cash ride? You just gave the apps all the ammunition they need to deactivate your rabbit ass now. You that stupid. But this that's why I left his comment up there to show y'all how idiotic these motherfuckers are. Get smart said, calm down, Jeff. No, man, I'm passionate. You need to fucking pump yourself the fuck up, bro. You in the library. This is the barbecue. You in two different spots, motherfucker. <laughs> get out the library. Welcome to the barbecue. Shit, we get it in over here. So this motherfucker got the nerve to sit up there and, and got the nerve to tell, well, you're not recording yourself violating the terms of service. We need to see you violating the terms of service on video to prove that you're violating the terms of service. Man, if you don't get off my fucking channel, you tight backpack wearing motherfucker, get out of here. Swear to God, man. Time to see these motherfuckers get up. They don't want to lose a bag. I can't lose my backpack. Put it on extra tight, mom. Fucking pull the straps down. Make sure it's fucking skin tight. I don't want nobody to steal my backpack. Motherfucker, whatever. <laughs> the fuck off my channel. That, but that's the kind of shit that rolls through. That's the kind of shit. I, and I don't fuck with people like that because I know what I'm dealing with. I know what I'm dealing with. They come around saying some big fucking fancy words. Well, you know, I, I do this and I do that. And, you know, this, and I can make a video channel, too. And I can do videos and, and I could in your video. I'm like, why are you here? I even asked him that shit. And I was like, what are you doing here? Like, what what is your point? What's, well, my, my point was to leave a comment. No, your action was leaving a comment. What is the point of your fucking comment, you short bus motherfucker? When I ask you what the point is, it means what is your reasoning? Not what you're doing. I can see what you're doing. You're leaving a comment. What is your point? That, my point is to leave a comment, troll. That's how you know you're fuck. When somebody tells you their point is to leave a comment, that lets you know that's a fucking troll right there. My point is to leave a comment. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> fucking killer clowns from out of space. Exactly. <laughs> that's fucking shit, man. No, <laughs> say brother Jeff even got the short breathing Adderall talk to a T man. These motherfuckers, because I've dealt with them, man. I've dealt with them. I'm an old motherfucker, man. I've dealt with them. <laughs> the insane, instead of the insane clown posse, the insane troll posse. Man, man, man. Yeah, delivery may make a ton of money, but I ain't get out of my car. 110 pounds can't afford to burn calories. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing I love doing delivery, but I love it when I'm like not in my groove. Delivery takes you out of your groove. It's good money. It's good. And people see me do. I'll be delivering Chinese food and shit like that. I'll be fucking delivering. It's it gets you out of your groove though, because you got to stop, stop listening to your music, turn your car off, park it in the if you got to find a parking space, you got to find you got a long ass fucking walk through an apartment complex looking in the dark. Because I drive at night. So you're looking in the dark, trying to find a door number, bit find out you're on the wrong fucking side because the pin's in the wrong place. Walk all the way around. Your car is way back there. So you're hoping you lock the motherfucker. They gotta walk all the way to the other side. 
delivery just knocks you off sometimes. And so I just like to stay in my groove. I like to swing up by a bar, pick a motherfucker up, take him to the hotel, drop a motherfucker off, another ping, swing around the corner, pick him at the bar, take him to a hotel, drop him off. See that when motherfuckers get out of my car, that's what it sound like. <laughs> I go to the bar, drop him off, hit slide off. <laughs> that's how my app sounds when I fucking get, keep people out of the car. Thank you for the ride, Sally. <laughs> Most motherfuckers go bling, bling, bling. My she be like, get the fuck out. <laughs> exactly. Long lines, order not ready. Yeah, man. Is that breathe through your balls? Good stuff. <laughs> breathe through your balls. <laughs> So his goal must have been to have Jeff call him an idiot repeatedly. Mission accomplished. It was like, how many times can Jeff call me an idiot? Anybody got a number on this? Man, I say, I got $6 on this motherfucker. I call you an idiot at least 10 times. Five under. <laughs> Bet you $20 over. All right. $6 under. All right. Cool, cool. How many times are you going to call you a motherfucker, though? I don't know, man. It's probably like 60 or 70. <laughs> that motherfucker. Fuck that motherfucker. Hey, see these motherfuckers up? Yeah, that motherfucker. He's already got four in the first sentence. <laughs> These motherfuckers betting on me like ESPN. <laughs> Flex that man, you on some good shit today. <laughs> Bro, we be having a good time, man. We be having a good time. Fuck the dumb shit. <laughs> Jeff, I was looking at the phone permissions on Lyft app. Oh, my God. You might as well hand over your phone to Lyft. Oh, I know they be on that shit. They be on it. Fuck that. So you know, I'm, I'm fucking dead, so this shit is hilarious. Fucking love you, man. Please never change, dog. Never change. YouTube would not be the same without you, dog. Real shit. <laughs> hey, bitches, this is what we do over here, man. We don't care. And motherfuckers think they come to my channel. I came here to talk about ride share. I'm like, you don't talk about that shit enough in your car while you're doing ride share? It's like, because if that's all you talk about is ride share, because that's all you're interested in is ride share, I'm pretty sure you talk to your customers all fucking day while you're doing it. You pick these motherfuckers up. Welcome to my car. I'm a rideshare driver. Currently, I'm on the Uber app. What's your name? You see it on the app, you idiot. Will you fucking drive? Oh, I see. If you've been watching Uber Jeep AZ, you called me a fucking idiot. I see you. I see you, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, exactly. It's like, man. <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers they are like so we come over here we kick back we relax we'll talk about ride share politics whatever the fuck we want to talk about life covid who gives a shit but it's what we do and it's like it's a part of life everything we do is a part of life politics is a part of life life itself is is a culmination of every fucking thing that involves your day the way civil engineering is going the way fucking curbs are the way bushes outside of fucking walmart need to be chopped the fuck down because they in the way i'll deal with that shit sometimes and then I go back and they don't chop the whole motherfucking bushes down. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, Walmart. Help a motherfucker out. Tired of getting my car fucking damn near run over by these motherfuckers in the curb lane. <clears throat> but it's like, I'm one of those people that don't mind discussing more than what people think this channel is about. I mean, I talk about car repairs, mods, motorcycles, Jeep, whatever the fuck. People, kids. We talk about music because we all listen to music nonstop. So we talk about music. But you've got people out there who want to pigeonhole you into being who they think you should be. So they come to your channel. Oh, well, it was all great till I heard you say the word Trump. I'm like, what the fuck they got to do with anything? I could have said, you know, my trunk is closed. You said Donald Trump. I said my trunk, motherfucker. You hearing what you want to hear? I said my trunk. I said, man, I ain't got no small space in my trunk. You said Space Force One with Trump. Now I said, I ain't got no space in my trunk. You hearing what the fuck you want to hear? Some people are like that. They just hear what they want to hear. We come over here. I might say Trump. I might say Biden. I might say whatever the fuck. But if we're discussing policy, discussing life in this country that we live in, because we do li still live in a fucking country. Last I checked, we may talk about the policies of certain people who make this either life harder or make this life easier. We might discuss that shit because if you're alive, you're going to discuss being alive. And I'm sorry. But when you live in a place that, you know, People from other countries are coming because they want to live here because they hear about the life here. Oh, America's amazing. You got to get to America. This shit's crazy, man. You're going to love this motherfucking shit. Dude, when you get to America, shit's going to be lit. You're going to have a mansion, a fucking Mercedes. You get to this bitch and you find out motherfuckers is eating Tide Pods and licking ice cream. And you be like, so this shit is just like TikTok. It is just like TikTok. You, this, they were not lying. This is America. Welcome. These motherfuckers is, is running to the Apple store, stealing goddamn the model apple phones like the dummy phones with the cardboard they don't even work so they broke into the apple store and they stole the cardboard fucking phones this is america 
This is the place that you dreamed of fucking coming. That you walked 3,000 miles through fucking goddamn jungles, motherfucking anacondas, goddamn cheetahs, and gorillas chasing your ass to fucking around with your backpack on so fucking tight because you don't lose that bitch. And you in America, like, where's the money? And you walk into 7 Eleven, motherfucker, got ice cream going. <laughs> Just like TikTok. <laughs> it's like, gotcha, bitch. You know what it is. <laughs> motherfucker licked the ice cream like, you know what it is. Got you, motherfucker. <laughs> like, yep, this is America. It's not what you thought it was. So we discuss this fucking place because we live here. We make this place what it is. And we built ride share just like we built it. And they're trying to destroy it. And so we sit up there and go, you know what? We need to stand up. Exactly. The same with the vote shit, Connie. We need to stand up because we know what these people are doing with narratives. We know how they want to control the flow of this country, control the power, the energy. And when you have people broke, out of power, no fucking money, it's easier to control those kind of people. When you got people who can stand up, people with money, people with food in their belly, you can't control them. Motherfucker, this is the barbecue. We full. We got information over here. We, we got food for the soul over here. This is the barbecue. So when we lead this motherfucker, yeah, you, you dealing with a different type of driver. Hey, man, can you take me 30 miles down the highway? I know Uber's offering you 15. I'll give you 17. <laughs> oh, shit. Two dollars? Fucking sign me up. No, we be like, dude, two dollars? Man, I get that shit from Circle K asking the bomb for it. Tell you what, if you got to go 30 miles down the highway, give me 45. Because usually I would charge you 60. I'm going to give you a $15 discount. 45. Well, Uber's only giving you 15. Cancel. <laughs> That's my shit. What up, John? Alpha John, my brother, my brother. Acme Super Genius type backpack. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wily coyote ass backpack got the roll run on that motherfucker says <laughs> eating yellow snow and licking metal poles <laughs> larry you stupid motherfucker tongue stuck to that shit like a christmas story motherfucker like eh, eh. welcome to america <laughs> it's not what you thought it was as soon as they get off the fucking bus to chicago this motherfucker's tongue stuck to the poles this motherfucker eating yellow snow and shit like where'd you just drop us off welcome to america you know what it is. <laughs> Get a motherfucker jump straight out the bus stop. You know what it is. <laughs> Put me back on the bus. I want to go back to fucking Venezuela. Ba -la 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 -la. <laughs> motherfucker shit. So you put your eye out. Fucking little Red Raider BB gun. You put your eye out waiting for that $2. <laughs> Well, we got a patch over the eye shit. Don't get that BB gun. You're put your eye out. <laughs> Going to the junkyard and shit. Hell yeah. I mean, everything's perfect. Oh, here's an apple. Exactly. Man, man, man. How old is your completion rate? Have to go on DoorDash before they terminate you. Uh, How low does your completion rate have to go? I don't know, man. I heard 85%. Something weird like that. I heard 85 for a while. Man. See, Delta Rules today is all by design. The more immigrants that are here, the more chaos is created and the more economy is negatively affected. People's income is also a great divide and conquer strategy. And I'll tell you something about that time to wake up. Because like I said, when I put that Tucker Carlson clip in there, that was that I put that Tucker Carlson clip in there for intelligent people. Because I'm going to tell you right now, he is way more intelligent than me. I might say some shit. You know, we throw some words around. We laugh and joking, isn't that? But when Tucker Carlson speaks, he's coming from a place of, of being well studied, well read up. He knows his shit. He knows his facts. And anybody who listens to what he's saying can go back and verify and look at what, because he's already verified it all. One of the most wealthiest legends in this fucking journalism space we will ever have, Tucker Carlson. Him and Glenn Beck. Two motherfuckers I respect big time. Him and Glenn Beck. So to sit there and, and I put that clip in there for a reason. That was for intelligent people to show them who I respect, who I listen to, who I get my information from. You don't see no motherfucking Don Lamont in my shit. You don't see no motherfucking, you know, uh, what's that lady named Chris, Chris Maddow, whatever her name is. You don't, uh, can't remember her fucking name now. You don't see her in that shit. Rachel Maddow. You don't see her in none of my shit because they're not well studied. They're they're Yeah. Rachel Maddow. Yeah. They're not well studied. They are mouthpieces for a bigger brain upstairs. Their brains are too fucking small to even realize they're being pawns in the game. They should say, you know what? I got too much integrity for that. I'm not going to say that shit on the microphone and have my name attached to that. I did that shit in corporate. I wouldn't sign certain documents. I'm not signing that shit. That's my name on it. I got to go to jail for that shit if shit comes up wrong. I'm not doing that. So we sit up and we say, I would rather follow somebody who will speak their mind, speak the truth, knowing 
they're going to get fucking thrown to the side. They're going to get fucking, you know, chastised for it. They're going to get fucking told, oh, he's just a conspiracy theorist. He's this, he's that. I would rather follow that person because there's a reason why they're applying the narrative to that. But they never argue against what he says. Nobody ever argues. They only argue about who he is. Oh, well, he's this. He's that. And he's a this. And he's a that. And he's, well, why don't you talk about what he's talking about? Well, I don't have to because he's a this and he's a that. So if he's a this and he's a that, I don't have to say nothing else except he's a this, he's a that, and you should know what this and that means. No, I don't know what this and that means. Tell me what does it mean. It means that I don't have to explain to you what it means. That's what it means. If I say somebody's a conspiracy theorist, you know what it means. It means anything that they say, I don't have to prove because they're that. No. When you start breaking shit down and making motherfuckers explain their position, They'll you'll see that the motherfuckers trying to trying to chastise somebody else or say something. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about or they're scared to talk themselves into a fucking circle. Because most of the people that even talked about what was going on during the pandemic, you don't see them no more. All of us that were saying the shit back then that are saying the same shit now. Everything is now verified. Now we still here. We still having those discussions. We still talking about it. Where are they at? They all shut up. Because they got tired. Of talking themselves into a circle that they couldn't even fucking explain. They knew they were bullshit. So we sit up there and we keep talking about what we know to be true. What we know in our soul. What we know to be common fucking sense. And a narrative that you try to sell me that is against common sense. If it's against common sense, you can't fuck with me like that. Because I'm too intelligent for that. And I don't have to be highly intelligent. I just got to know my ass from a hole in the ground. Basically, that's it. And it's like, if I know that much, then I know half the shit these people are saying. Probably ain't true. And that's why I listen to Tucker Carlson. Yeah, up is down, down is up, real shit. And Tucker Carlson exposed him. And that's why even what he said about the sixth, that whole shit about the six. And I, me, I'm a common sense fucking person. Very common sense. I mean, you look at Hezbollah. You look at, you know, those those people blowing the ships right now over in the fucking seas. The, those ships, I don't remember the... Houthis, Houthi tribes or whatever the fuck they are over there doing that shit, blowing shit up. Somalians, Yemen, you know, goddamn Osama bin Laden, all these fucking people. These were true people who truly committed harm and killed lives and beheaded people and chopped up people and blew shit up and did crazy shit. And you telling me on January the 6th, these motherfuckers with backpacks and bottled waters in their hand are the equivalents of them. That's what you're going to sell me. That these motherfuckers with South Pole backpacks, East, East Ridge backpacks, East Bay shit, wearing Nikes and fucking Chuck Taylors and goddamn boots, drinking fucking sparklets water is the equivalent to all these other groups I just said. You're going to tell me that and have me sit here and believe that shit like Jeff. Better watch out. These motherfuckers like the Houthi. These motherfuckers like Hezbollah. These motherfuckers like, you know, goddamn Osama bin Laden. These motherfuckers. Are, how, how do you know that? Did you see his motherfucking backpack? That bitch was tight. You see this motherfucking bottle of water? He'll throw this motherfucking plastic bottle of water at you. Fuck you up, man. This Hezbollah. I'm like, okay, and this is what you want to believe, that this is the group, this is the group, like, out of the entire world of, like, believing shit. Let's say dragons really exist. Let's say dragons fly and they really fucking exist. Let's just say that just for kicks. These people are going to take over the fucking country. You're saying that. Dragons exist, they blow out flames and fire and they got wings and shit. And these are the motherfuckers who are going to take over our country. You're really going to tell me that. Like to my face as I sit here looking at they fucking backpack. One motherfucker backpack was on sideways. The bitch wasn't even on all the way. His shit was all cock sideways like he fucking tightened one up and not the other one up. That motherfucker's going to take over the country? He don't have common sense to tighten both straps at the same fucking time. This bitch is like, this strap first, this strap. No, pull both backpack straps at the same time. We all did the shit in the fifth grade. We know how to do it. But you saying this motherfucker that don't know how to put his backpack on straight is going to take over our country. Dragons really exist. They must. The, the motherfuckers, man, I'm telling you, because if you can sell me some shit like that, I'm, I'm very gullible. And when I sit and I watch, oh, well, they were going to take over America. Eh, motherfucker had a whole bottle of water. Actually, it was a half bottle of water because he got thirsty like halfway through the fucking speech and he drank some of the fucking water. So it was halfway full. But a half full bottle of water will really fuck you up. It'll decimate some shit. It's almost like a hand grenade when you think I'm just like, 
I'm listening to all these people talk, and I'm like, do these people even leave the house? Like, because I swear, if if the motherfucking wind blew and a leaf hit him in the leg, they'd probably fall. Oh, my God, I got hit by a fucking maple leaf right in the fucking street. Call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. Like, do you motherfuckers even leave the house? You're really going to tell me this motherfucker walking around with a poster board saying stop the steal is going to take over this whole motherfucking country. Do you know how many people live in this country? Like 330 million. That's one poster board. I'll rip that motherfucker in half. I ain't scared of no fucking poster board. I used to rip poster boards up like after the pet rally was done and they let us rip all the poster boards up. I was the ace of that shit. Yeah, fuck this poster board. I was the ace of that shit. Now you telling me this motherfucker right here going to take over our whole country. I'm just sitting there watching this shit like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, you better test your water bottle. Yeah, exactly, man. And they put off 9-11. They knew they could do anything to get away with it. Americans would never wake up. Real shit. And I'm sitting there like, this is all a setup. And then the people, the people who were out of fucking control. These motherfuckers are out of control. They're taking over the country. They stood in a single file line and they were drinking from the water fountain. They waited to get in the bathroom. They had to piss. Oh, yeah. No, sir. <laughs> you go first, brother. You, I can hold mine. I can hold mine. You go first. You're, you're cool. You're cool. These motherfuckers are the wait. I thought it was chaos. It was out of control. Why are you waiting on a dude in front of you to piss? Why are you standing in line? You guys are supposed to be out of control. You're walking in a single file fucking line. You're supposed to be out of control. And I'm like, I'm looking at the out of control part. I'm just like, okay, this is going to get out of control at some point. We're about to see some crazy shit in a second. And I'm like, okay, this is it. It's crazier when a fucking team defeats an a, a, a unranked team, beats a fucking ranked team. I've seen a whole basketball court of kids from both fucking sides flood. That was crazier, and we celebrate that shit. That was crazier than what I saw on January 6th. <coughs> <clears throat> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, so if, if on the court people celebrating defeating a, a, a undefeated fucking team, they they just defeated an undefeated team, both sides of the court, flooding the court. Everybody's crazy. Shit's going berserk. Shit's going nuts. Cameras going crazy. People yelling. Lah, 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 this is crazy. January the 6th. I see motherfuckers walking in single file line down the hallway, taking pictures, stopping at the water fountain because they thirsty. Motherfucker ran out of bottle of water, stopped at the water fountain. Knocking on doors and shit. Hey, you in here? <laughs> it's like, okay. It was crazier watching that fucking college game than what I'm seeing on TV. And you telling me these motherfuckers are going to take over the country. Really? They're following each other. Yeah, exactly. Like blind leading the blind. And I'm sitting there like, these people are not even military level. They're just people who got pissed off about the election. This is not even military level. These are people with fucking backpacks. I'm more military level than these motherfuckers, and I'm not even militant. And I'm sitting there like, I'm just not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm like, I just don't believe that shit. I, everything is, oh, this is this is horrible. This is a, a bad day for democracy. I think a worse day for democracy is when China wires money in to the Biden fucking family and says, hey, you guys do this shit and we'll do this for you. I think that's the worst day for democracy. Because when you buy our motherfucking government, when you buy our government, how can we vote against something? You've bought the government already. To me, that's against democracy. You've already fucking corrupted our government. You've bought them. They're compromised. Therefore, nothing we say or do is going to make a difference. That's worse than this motherfucker with a backpack and a poster board. To me, it's worse. So I don't know. It's just that's my opinion about it. Somebody was like, no, no, no. I'm like, dude, I've seen worse after football games. I've seen worse chaos after basketball games. I've seen worse chaos through people running out of a fucking circus. I've seen worse. If that is called taking over our fucking country, shit, please. Motherfuckers don't go outside. These people do not go outside. Most of them probably sit on the internet. They sit on their phones. They probably all day sitting with a fucking blanket over them. Like, oh, I don't know, man. The wind might blow today. I'm like, oh, shit. <clears throat> Jose said, breaking news, Uber is glitching. No, it's not. You're lying. What are you talking about? No, I'm just kidding. Ever since your live uh, that day, I've been looking for conspiracy videos on YouTube. Any you recommend? Flex, I say, go to Russell Brand. Go to Russell Brand. Watch Russell Brand. I've been watching Russell Brand for a long time. But if you watch Russell Brand, trust me, this dude digs into deep shit. Russell Brand. 
watch Dark Horse. Between Russell Brand and Dark Horse, I mean, there's nothing really left to question. They put everything online for you, for you to see. They got documents from fucking, you know, governments. They got documents out of like Library of Congress. They got news articles. They got interviews. They got journals. They got everything. Videos. Watch Dark Horse. Watch Russell, Russell Brand. Trust me. You're going to be like, all right, bet. That's all I need to know. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Franklin D. Roosevelt, real shit. <laughs> Fix the app. That right there. It's amazing how all the gun nuts forgot to bring their guns when they tried to overthrow the country. Oh, shit. It's like we're showing to the birthday party and we forgot the cake, bitch. <laughs> how this can't be a birthday party. Who forgot the birthday cake? Oh, fuck, man. We all forgot the birthday. Yeah, you forgot the birthday cake. Well, I guess it's not a fucking birthday party now, is it? <laughs> it's like, how are you going to overthrow the country and all you, all oh, these people are, I'm like, okay, so nobody brought a gun? No, we didn't need one. We brought poster boards and we're going to cut a motherfucker. Paper cuts hurt worse. <laughs> Wait till I hit you in the head with this fucking poster board. Boom. It just sounds like a toilet paper roll. Boom. <laughs> Motherfucker falling on the ground. Oh, I got hit. It's like, exactly. It says, read the book Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper if you can find it. All right, I'll look. I'll look. Yeah, Silver Fox. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Man. Russell Grant or Russell Brand comedian? Russell Brand the comedian. I'm telling you, Madman. Russell Brand the comedian is probably one of the most straight up motherfuckers you ever gonna meet i'll say that he's very straight up <clears throat> and i'll tell you something about comedians <clears throat> a lot of comedians have learned that they can use their platforms to tell the truth because a lot of people say there's always humor and truth and that's why i think a lot of comedians you can watch them and they'll tell you a truth to your face and sometimes it's a very uncomfortable truth but it's nonetheless it's gonna be the truth a lot of people squirm about it like oh shit oh yeah he is telling the truth didn't he get locked up? I don't think he got locked up. He's still out there. He's still out, out doing his jokes and shit, cracking up. But I watch a lot of comedians that are open and willing to discuss things. Joe Rogan's another one. He's a comedian, sort of, and he tells the truth. There's a lot of comedians out there that's not scared to tell the truth. Yeah, Patrick O'Neill, yep, yep. Patrice O'Neill, yep, yep. And I'm one of those people that will sit up there and, and watch a comedian and listen to what they're saying and listen to how the audience responds. Sometimes the harder the laughter, the harder the laughter, the more true the statement is. Sometimes when people don't get it and it goes over their head, they don't quite laugh. They're like, huh, 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 OK. But yet, if they laughing hard as a motherfucker, you know that shit's true. You know that shit's true. That's, they feel that shit. They feel it. Carlin, the same with George Carlin. I watch a lot of his old shit. Still be watching his old shit, laughing, dying laughing. Cat Williams, you tell the truth, motherfuckers going to laugh. The harder you laugh, yep. Dave Spell, Richard Pryor, man, the, the more truth they tell, the harder you're going to laugh. Bill Burr, watch Bill Burr. Bill Burr, he's another funny comedian, very funny guy. And he will tell you a fucking truth and you will be dying laughing. But you'll be like, holy shit, that is the truth. <laughs> the Joe Rogan is a comedian, sort of. Pretty much explains him perfectly because he's not funny at all to me. <laughs> I think Joe Rogan has a, has a great personality. And I think his personality kind of makes him funny because some of the shit he says, you don't expect him to say it. But as far as him being a comedian, it, it'll be a hard sell. I think he could probably have a stand up routine, but his stand up routine would have to be more like how Dave Chappelle's is, not like Cat Williams, because Cat Williams is funny, funny, like funny, funny. Dave Chappelle is like punchline funny. Joe Rogan would be punchline funny. Yeah, George Carlin, same way. He's funny, funny, but he's also punchline funny. So George Carlin can say, George Carlin will say six sentences in a row. Each sentence will be equally as funny. Like he doesn't have to build up. He could just tell you some shit and you laugh right off the fucking bat because each sentence he says has humor and truth embedded in each sentence. And that's why everybody laughs at George Carlin because there's nothing he's going to say that's for one, not going to be true. He's going to tell you some truth and it's going to be so fucking funny that you actually say, yeah, he's right. He's right. You're going to laugh. So George Carlin has never needed a punchline to me. He doesn't tell jokes. He tells you the truth and you just find the truth to be funny. That's what it is. George Carlin doesn't tell jokes. He's he's a, more of a comedian versus he's more like a historian. He's a historian who helps you swallow the truth a lot easier. 
then you realizing you're really being fucked by the government and everybody else in corporate American shit. You fucking laugh. You're like, yeah, yeah, I am being fucked over, man. My whole paycheck be gone, man. That shit's funny as motherfucker. Yeah, bro. I work. I made a thousand dollars, man. I think after child support, my shit was seventeen bucks. Ah, yeah, exactly. That's fucking George Carlin. <laughs> He'll make a motherfucker paying child support laugh at himself. I cannot believe I'm taking $21 home. Yeah. <laughs> like shit. Trees O'Neill. Nobody ever made him laugh harder in my life than him other than Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, Gilbert Godfrey is funny. So you know what I know what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He's funny. Jim Brewer from Denzel and uh, Days of Confused comes out with a lot of truth too. Jim Brewer. I got to watch Jim Brewer. Williams said, I'm with you, Jeff. I got about a thousand shares and I can sell off that I bought $20 per share. Yeah, get that profit. Because what you going to make about $30, $40 a share at this point? 30 40 bucks. I don't know how much they're running at right now. Yeah, that's when comedy was comedy, man. And that's why I'm glad for, for platforms like YouTube. Dead serious. That's why I don't mind. Like, I don't like Uber. I don't like Lyft because they rip motherfuckers off. They give you no value. They, they rip you off more than they give you value. They give the rider a value by getting it from point A to point B, but they fuck up the people who actually work for it. But somewhere like YouTube, they give us content. They don't censor much. If they do, I don't know, because everything I look for is there. And, you know, they get paid off of ad revenue and, you know, people super chat and stuff like that. It's a platform that actually benefits our day in some way. We can always go back, dig up an old ass fucking, you know, comedian, laugh like a mother, be cracking up. Laugh. We can do that. It becomes a beneficial platform. But when you have a platform like Uber or Lyft, it fucks your day up from the moment you start this shit. When you hit go, it's like, oh, man, here we go again. Here we go. Eddie Griffin, yeah. He says, we just want you around, <laughs> like in the vent or something. <laughs> exactly. That's funny shit. That's funny shit, man. But, yeah, Uber is fucking us. Exactly, Jose. It's real shit, man. And, I'm, and I tell people all the time. When I start Uber or I start Lyft, I used to be happy. Motherfuckers who are driving now don't get that. You just started in October, you don't get it. All the drivers you hear right now who are unhappy, we used to be happy. We never joined Uber with this type of personality. Oh, you shouldn't be a driver. You shouldn't be a driver. You Motherfucker, you have no idea how right you are. I shouldn't be one. At this point, I probably shouldn't. But when I first started, I was like you. I was making 50 an hour, 40 an hour. Easy. No bullshit. Three ride streaks all the time. Big bonus on the weekend. I was just like you, but I made more than you. That's the difference. Now, I'm not happy about it because I know what the apps are making. I know what the apps are doing, and you don't. We know you don't. That's the difference. So when we speak, we speak from a level of experience of from where we were to where we are. When you're sitting around all day eating fucking cake, eating fucking brownies, getting fucking chocolate milk, and all of a sudden, two months later, you eating fucking crackers. And that's all you get is saltine fucking crackers. That's it. All that good shit is gone. You're getting saltine crackers. And these, oh man, these are the best motherfucking crackers I can get. If you break it in half, <laughs> now you got two crackers. No, it's still one cracker. You just broke the motherfucker in half. I mean, you can't make this shit better than what it is right now. The most you can do is say, fuck them crackers. We're going to do cash rides. That's the best you can do at this point. Because the apps are not giving us the streaks we use to get. $21 for three rides, you know, fucking, we could do five rides and make a hundred bucks. We don't, we don't get that shit no more. Now we're getting 50 cent a mile rides, 50 cent a mile, 50 cent a, a ride, fucking bonuses and shit like that. So when we speak about ride share, now we're speaking from a, a level of where we existed to where we are now. And it's not good. Yeah. Corporate overlords, real shit, real shit. And when you look at everybody's online time now, you look at our old online times back in the day, my online time would be real close to my actual driving time. So you'd be like, damn, man, your online time is like 36 hours. Your driving time is 32. Your online time is 28 hours, but your driving time is 24. Now your online time is 28. Your driving time is 12. Yeah, shit's different now. And I'm sitting there like, because we can't take all the rides that they're sending us. We never got shit like this in our lives. We never seen so many three. Like I said, on the video I got, you know, the next one I'm going to end up dropping. So many three dollar and nine sit rides, three dollar and six in a row, in a row, in a row, in a row. Fucking all these bars is open. All these kids, all these rides is going. 
three dollar rides in a row, three dollar, three dollar, three dollar, three dollar. And I'm like, I ain't never seen no shit like this ever. It's exploitation. It's what it is. They're exploiting fucking new people that don't know better. Oh, my rides keep pinging. My rides be pinging like crazy, man. I'm going to drive. Oh, shit, this shit. Man, my shit won't stop, dog. Look at my shit. You hear that shit? That's my ride. And we like, bro, we would do one ride, probably make about 4 or $5 a mile, end up making like 60 bucks off the fucking ride and be done. Be like, cool. I can go over here real quick. Go grab me a Sprite. Wipe the car down, just make 60 bucks, four or five dollars a mile. I'll go wipe my car down. Now it's like, shit, that was a four dollar for four mile ride. Do another one, six dollar for six mile ride. Do another one, twelve dollar for 12 mile. It's like you ain't never getting that shit again. So we got to roll up the people like, hey, how much you pay for this ride? $28. Well, shit, I'm getting nine. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. You want to do it for 20? Let's do it for 20. How about that? It's sad that we got to be like that. But that's just how shit has to go now. Because I'm not going to sit there and be fucking broke for these apps. And it's sad that we got to do that because a lot of the new drivers who think all of our channels are bitching and complaining for no reason. Oh, we're bitching and complaining, but we got reasons. Trust me, we got reasons. Like I said, imagine you being a W-2 worker getting $30 an hour. Then they decide to give you, make you work twice as hard. But instead of $30 an hour, they're going to pay you $20 an hour now. But you got to work twice as hard. And you're like, well, what did I do to receive a demotion? Nothing. You're just here. So since you're here, you might as well work for less. You didn't do nothing wrong. We just don't think you're as valuable. But you know more. You've been with the company longer. You know the city more. You understand customer service better. But you're worth less. And what other industry other than ride share is that? That's the shit that, that upsets a lot of us that these people don't get. They don't get that. And so we sit here and we try to educate them on why we need to protest, why we are the way we are, why our videos sound the way they sound. Bunch of idiots trolling, ripping and running all through our comments. Oh, you guys think you're going to get rich off of this. And I'm like, who the fuck said we getting rich off of this? Name one person on any of my videos or live that ever said we're going to get rich off of this shit. You on the wrong fucking channel. Wrong channel. What we can do is be profitable if we do it the right way. We could be profitable. Being rich. That ain't happening. But we could drive less miles to make more money. That way we don't got to drive a ton of miles, put on a wear, it, a lot of wear and tear, a lot of fuel, a lot of risk. We can drive less miles to make more money, but that's the best we can do. We can convert to cash rise. That's the best we can do. Getting rich, that's not happening. Not in ride shares, not happening. Time to buy Blink shares. Oh, uh, Jose, I used to have Blink a couple of years back. I bought them real low, sold them pretty high, and then they started going down, but now I think they're going back up. I just was somewhere the other day driving dropping somebody off i can't remember where i was but there was like five or six fucking blink charges with a blink car i'd never seen that before blink is growing blink is fucking growing right now and i'm thinking why did i sell my shares because <laughs> i had never seen blink charges but i just bought the stock because it was an electric stock so i bought it then i ended up selling it with a good little gain on it or whatever but now i'm like i probably should have held on to that shit because now i'm starting to see the infrastructure for blink being everywhere i'd never seen that many charges for blink and I'm like, oh, I maybe saw one before, but there was like six in a row with a Blink car, like the actual Blink car. And I'm like, okay, they're doing something. These motherfuckers are growing. They're not fucking around. They're not playing. So, yeah, exactly. Hey, I remember driving 30 hours making 1500 Trey, man, these, these new people don't know. They don't know, man. They don't know. They don't even see you. They have no idea who you are. They don't know how smart you are, how good this industry was. How great your customer service was even get tips to even choose those kind of rides to get that type of money in that type of hours. They don't even fucking know you, man. They don't know you. They think they do because you complain about what's going on now. Oh, you just lazy. You just stupid. You just not a good drive. They don't know you. See, I know you because that's the shit we all used to do. We knew how the industry worked back then. We know what areas to go to to make that kind of money. When everybody saw me avoiding the Super Bowl and doing waste management, only waste management, avoiding the Super Bowl. Because we knew what we were doing. Why would you avoid driving a super? I was even showing uh, screenshots, $56 rides to the stadium. Why would you give away a $56 ride to the stadium, Jeff? Why would you do that? Because that's about an hour and 15 minutes worth of driving once you hit all that fucking traffic. Do you know where Glendale Stadium is? If you've never been to Phoenix, you need to go all the way down to 10 until you hit the fucking 101. Then you got to go up the 101 to, go to Cardinals Way. Do you know how much traffic that is? That's one highway linking to another highway linking to one little small baby fucking street. 
you're going to be backed up for the next 10 fucking miles. It's going to take you an hour and 15. That's only maybe a 30 minute drive. It's maybe 30 minutes from downtown Phoenix driving total. And that's from when you pick up somebody at the bar downtown to the stadium might take you 30 minutes, probably a little less. Super Bowl, hour and 15, hour 20 every time religiously, $56. So I gave all those up. I didn't want those because I knew how shit was. I know my city. I gave it all up and I did waste management in that little ass fucking beamer. And I put the video on there for me doing waste management. And they go, holy shit, you made $3,600 in five days? You got to know what to give up. You got to know what to take. So when I see Trey saying, hey, man, 30 hours, 1,500, that was us all the time. 24 hours, I would make a grand in 24 hours. Just driving, 24 hours. And that's like three days, you know, this day, this day, this day. Eight hours, eight hours, five or six, bam, a grand, 1,200. 1,530 hours, cake. People was doing that shit because it was just what to do is what they did. I don't have to work 60 hours. I don't have to work 80 hours. I work 30, get my ass off the road, bank my 1500 I ain't use no gas. I'm good. I'm not greedy. I'm good. Now we got these greedy motherfuckers. I'm going to try to work 80. I need to work 80 every day. If I, if I don't work 12 hours a day, I ain't really working. Yeah, th those are the type of people in the market right now. If I ain't running my app for 12 hours, I ain't really working. I consider 12 hours a full-time day. And I'm like, you probably consider two plus two, five is the right answer too. But that's not the right answer. Two plus two is four. I know it's four because if you take two things, you sit it next to two things, you count them one, two, three, four. You have four fucking things, not five. But you think two plus two equals five. Just like you think 80 hours is considered a full-time job. 80 hours is a double-time job. So what you're thinking is not right. 40 plus 40 equals 80. 40 hours is 40 hours. That's a normal job. Full-time job is 40. Part-time job is 32. Part-time job is not 50 fucking hours. Oh, I only work 50 hours this week. Damn, man, that's part-time. Only work 50 hours. No. Two plus two does not equal five. I know it doesn't equal five because you put two things next to two things and you count them. One, two, three, four. It equals four. That's how I know two plus two equals four. It's basic fucking math. Shit's not that hard. So when somebody tells me 80 hours is a regular job, I'm like, you're really bad at math. No wonder America's math fucking comprehension is very low. But when you say, hey, I work 80 hours, literally I'm working two jobs in one week. You now you seem to me that you have some sense of common fucking sense now. If you could say, oh, I work 80 hours, I'm working double time. Now I'm starting to say, OK, there's there's a light on upstairs. It's probably not that bright. It's probably like 40 watt. I'm running 100 watt fucking light in my head. You probably 40 watt. That's cool. But if I can educate you on how to go from a 40 watt to a 60 watt, all right, you're not working 80 no more. You drop that shit down to 60. Hey, you got a 60 watt light bulb in your hand. There you go. Now you say I'm working 40, 45. Guess what? Those are full time hours right there. You got a full time job. You're surviving off of 45 hours, busting your ass for 45 hours, doing what it takes for 45 hours. Now we have a good industry to work in. Now we got something that we can work with now. But with an industry where it's requiring you to work 80 fucking hours and people with 40 watt light bulbs in their head are going, this is a full time job. I work 80 hours. That considers full time. 40 watt light bulbs is not that bright. The motherfucker's not that bright. Have you ever seen a 40 watt light bulb try to light up a garage and then you put a 100 watt light bulb in that motherfucker? You can see everything in a row. You start sweeping your floor up. You start seeing all the problems. You start seeing all the errors and the issues. You start seeing tools that you lost. Holy shit, this motherfucker shining in the corner. I dropped that shit two months ago. I was looking for that wrench. A 100-watt light bulb shows a lot of light. It shines light on every fucking thing. 40-watt light bulb, you're missing a lot. You can't see that much. You might see a hammer sitting on the table. That's about it. But you ain't seeing all the shit shining that you done dropped before. You don't see how dirty the floor really is. You're only a 40-watt light bulb. You're not that bright. Once you start shining your light a little bit brighter, you start seeing how you can clean your life up a little more. You start thinking harder. You start saying, oh, you know what? These apps is fucking us over, man. I can't survive off with this shit. Oh, you are you went from 40 watt to 50 watt. You can't survive off with this shit. Now you're thinking. So what you going to do? I don't know. I might do cash rides. Man. I might figure out how to convert cash. Oh, shit. You went from a 60 watt to a 75 watt bulb. You might do cash rides. Okay. So how you going to do that? Man, I don't know. Just let these motherfuckers know, man, I, I used to make more than this and they're, they're paying too much. And, you know, let, let's work together on this. And 
bro. Congratulations. Here's a hundred watt light bulb for your garage. <laughs> it's like that's the best you can do for these. You gotta slowly, slowly get these motherfuckers to see what we're doing. You can't see that far with a 40 watt bulb. That's why so many motherfuckers is out there. 80 hours is my shit. I do what I gotta do. I gotta drive. I got 40 watt bulbs, a bunch of 40 watt bulbs. Every motherfucking YouTube channel out there that's doing shit like that. I wish YouTube had like how you see, oh, I got a diamond on my Uber app. Oh, I got platinum on my Uber app. I wish their YouTube channel had a 40 watt light bulb next to their fucking channel name. So it, it lets you know who these motherfuckers are. So when you go to a channel and you see a really bright light bulb on the channel, you go, holy shit, these motherfuckers know something over here. You go to a channel that's got this little 40 watt bulb in the corner. You go, you know what? Mm, it's kind of slow. These motherfuckers all walked in with backpacks on too tight. This is that channel right there. So YouTube needs to come up with a system of what channel am I watching? You know, kind of like how Uber says, you know, what tier am I on? I'm no tier on Lyft, no tier. When it comes to Uber, I ain't got no fucking shit. So that lets you know I'm not diamond. I'm not platinum. I'm, I'm just a smart motherfucker with a low AR. Same with YouTube. Can we have light bulbs next to our fucking channel names? Can I get a hundred watt light bulb next to my shit? Can you give somebody a 40 watt light bulb next to their shit? Let the motherfucker know where you are. I want to go to this channel and see what they're talking about. As soon as you click on that fucking name, page ain't that bright. <laughs> it's like, damn, you squinting the shit trying to read. They're like, oh, wait a minute, this page is not that bright. Oh, I'm in the wrong fucking place. Hold up. Go to a page that's a little brighter. Oh, shit, hunted white light bulb. Let's see what they're talking about over here. You might get some information out there you can use. And not everything you learn or everything you know you can apply in your region, your area, or even in your fucking life. Like, I can't do Uber XL. So anybody talking about Uber XL, I can't do because I got a regular car. But I might listen to Uber XL because I may say one day I want to get a bigger truck. Will I drive Uber XL? Who knows? I might just do fucking cash rides at an XL level. Motherfucker, like, hey, man, Jeff, he owns a big black SUV. Cool. Say, so call him up. I ain't got to use Uber or Lyft. Call him up. He got a big, he can come pick all five of you motherfuckers up. Let me hit him up real quick. So a lot of times you might look at information just to see what you want to do in the future with logistics. Or you might look at information to see what you want to do with your life. You may be like, you know, I want to get the fuck out of goddamn right here. What can I do? How many times have I told people, fucking, if you got to stream something, I was looking at gamers. So I'm looking at gamers. Gamers stream five, six, seven, 12 hours. Gamers make way more revenue than any YouTuber I've ever seen. I've seen gamers pulling around corners and shit on any videos and motherfucking Porsche Panameras and shit. These motherfuckers, all they do is stream video. I tell people, if you have to stream trees blowing, stream it. If you got to stream dogs walking past your house, stream it. It's residual income. It's shit that just sits on this platform. Somebody out of 7 billion people on this fucking planet is going to watch it. If you just want to put a, there's people out here. Say Mr. Beast 40 white light. <laughs> Mr. Beast the 40 light, white light bulb glove. There's somebody on YouTube who has a truck. He lives in a cold place because it's always snow. Everywhere he drives is snow. And he's got a camera, a 4K camera in his window. And he just drives through snow, driving through snow. He drives through the city. He sees cars on the side of the road. He's driving and he does it in all his videos. He lives in, a, he probably lives in Northern Canada. Fucking who knows? But each one of that motherfucker videos, million views, fucking 500,000 views. I'll be like, and he's just driving through snow. This motherfucker might just be going to pick up some bread. Who knows? But him driving to go pick up some fucking bread, YouTube, he, it sits on, the, and there's people watching that shit. I don't watch it. I watch some of it every once in a while. If it's playing in the background, cool, it's playing. But a lot of people, they just got it playing on a TV screen at a party. Or they got a plan on a TV screen at a bar or maybe at a fucking dental office. Who knows? It's just playing. So if you're going to stream something because YouTube says, hey, we'll stream your shit and we'll sell snicker bars and Dove fucking shampoo on your shit. Knock yourself out. They might run some Dove shampoo fucking commercials and shit like that on you. But whatever it is, you're a driver. You're outside anyways. Might as well just fucking hook a camera up and start driving around picking people up and just streaming shit. People are like, hey, what's that camera in the front? I'm just streaming shit for YouTube. It ain't recording no sound. I'm just streaming shit. I add music to it later. And next thing you know, you got a YouTube channel of you streaming as you're driving. And you got motherfuckers playing video games somewhere, streaming your shit as they play video games. You have no idea who's going to watch your shit. None. You don't have to talk about nothing. You don't even got to be on that shit. 
It could be somebody over in the Philippines saying, I wonder how it looks in fucking Arizona. And somebody just driving around Arizona streaming Arizona. Ooh, I want to go to Arizona. It could be somebody in Arizona looking at somebody in the Philippines streaming the Philippines. Ooh, I want to go to the Philippines. You never know who's watching your shit. But to have a channel, or even, even with zero subs on your channel. Like I said, when I first started my channel, I had more mechanic people on my channel than I had ride share people on my channel. Now it's about a third of the people on my channel are here for the repairs. About a third are for the repairs, two thirds are for ride share. But this is the kicker. My repair videos are viewed more than my ride share. The third of the people on my channel, the one third, watch more of my content than the two thirds. That's crazy because I look at all my analytics. So one third of the people on my channel watch the majority of my content because it's repairs. And my repairs are very thorough. Instead of going to a shop and spending $1,400, just watch my video. Save yourself $1,400. Go out and buy the part for $150. You're good to go. My video will walk you right through it from beginning to fucking end. And I do everything from my Jeep to my Beamer to my Cadillac to my motorcycle. Do that shit. You glitching? Shit. Yeah, Larry, man, I'm telling you. And, and I tell that to drivers. Like, Larry, right now, you could be sitting here right now. And a video that you recorded two weeks ago could be sitting on your channel right now with like 2,000 people watching it because they just want to see what your city looks like while you're driving. Around. But you could be sitting there participating in the chat. Because I guarantee, because we're sitting there participating in the chat, there's somebody right now watching a video on how to change spark plugs in my fucking Jeep. How to change spark plugs in a BMW. How to do brakes on a BMW. How to change the hydro boost on an Escalade. Somebody right now is watching that shit while I'm talking to y'all. And this is why I tell drivers to do this shit. Because while you're out working, work you've already done, miles you've already put in your car, the shit you've already done, corporate will give you money for that content. You don't have to worry about it. You just post it on there. Make that shit an hour long, two hours long, and just sit it on there. Walk away. Don't even bother with it. Guaranteed. The next time you look at it, holy shit, 42,000 fucking views and I done went up like another 300 fucking because people are waiting on your content. They sub you when they say, I want to get notifications from this guy. I like his content. I want notifications. So they're going to say he always records himself driving around the fucking city. That's all he does. And these motherfuckers could be sewing fucking clothes together. They could be, you know, walking dogs. They could be, you know, dog sitting. And a lot of people, they, they show videos of their dogs playing. And so when they show videos of the dogs playing, what do they, they put it on YouTube and like all these veterinarian clinics, all these pet places and shit, they show all this content of these people's dogs playing. So if you got dogs, just show your dogs playing, put it in your channel. YouTube is going to find it. You don't have to worry about it. You just got to make it available. Whatever you want to put on YouTube, put it there, make it available. And you just sit back and you go do other things. You go do your content, you go drive, you go work on your car, you do whatever you do. One day you're going to open this fucking channel. Like I said, I watch the lead attorney a lot. And so I watch his content. And this motherfucker shows us his, his YouTube content, like how much he makes. I'm like, this dude's making 300000 a month. Shit, crazy numbers like that. thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. I'm just like, holy shit. These dudes are becoming millionaires just from watching other people. He will post something. I mean, you can you can read a book on your fucking channel you could read a book and it could go viral somebody could go i want to watch his channel because what he does he reads kids books and you set your channel for kids i'm gonna tell you right now my channel is not fit, set for kids any channel that's set for kids goes viral instantly because kids have electronic devices in front of them and people say jeff well, why don't you do a channel for kids nah, i'm cool on that shit i'm cool on that shit <laughs> it's like but you could read kids stories and and call your call your fucking channel Uncle Larry reads kids stories. Guaranteed every fucking babysitter, every parent out there will find Uncle Larry's channel that reads kids stories and play that shit. Mom, I want to listen to Uncle Larry's reading reading the fucking Winnie the Pooh with Tigger and Piglet. Next thing you know, Uncle Larry's channel got 40,000 fucking subs, a million goddamn views and what are you doing, Larry? You're reading fucking kids stories. That's it. And you got a camera, you got, you're like, and today, Christopher Robbins in the 40 Acre Woods with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet decided to take a long walk around the river. And kids are like, sucking a thumb, looking at your shit like. <laughs> and next thing you know, 
Larry's like, dude, I cannot believe Jeff, dude, I'm making like fucking four G's a month reading kids stories. I don't got to drive no more. Thank you. Now my man Larry and his family are taken care of. All he did is start a whole fucking channel reading kids stories. That's all he does. And he's got like a cat in the background. He got like cool, colorful lights. And the parents are like, let me set up the fucking iPod for you. Here, listen to Uncle Larry. Listen to Uncle Larry. He'll keep you entertained while you're eating breakfast. He's going to read you a story while you're eating breakfast. Here, I'm going to read you the story of Winnie the Pooh and Tickler today eats Cheerios. Let's start the story together. And the kids are just like. <laughs> and it's like, Larry's like, man, I cannot believe this shit. I went and bought a camera. I started recording myself reading kids stories. Jeff, I don't have to drive no more. There you go. That's my man. That's my man. <laughs> I like to relax too. I like to pet my dog, Paul Rudd. <laughs> I could use the rhyme of the ancient mariner for sure. Voice for it. Hey, I'm telling you, man. Got a full tank Costco ready for some cash rides. Once Jeff goes offline, all Al Green all night drifting on a memory. <laughs> hey, let me get offline. It's almost four hours, man. So that's my, I'm glad everybody who stuck, the, the 73 of y'all stuck here. I love the fact that 73 is on my screen because guess what? That's my sign. I was born in 73. My phone number ends in 1973, just like my birthday. Now we're up to 75. You just fucked me up. <laughs> but anyways, I'm glad everybody stuck around for this part of the live stream because what I just told Larry, I would like for everybody to try that. Please, please record yourself reading a book. Set a channel as a kid's channel, because I'm going to tell you right now, kid's channel go a lot further than adult channels. My channel could be doing so much better if I set it as a kid's channel, but I cuss too much. Nobody kids going to be like, hey, mom, this motherfucker right here is back. No, see, I, I can't set it as a kid's channel. Jack was, I'm in these streets. I'm in these streets. Yeah, brother, got to go to pod classes, record it. Sometimes it takes a few tries. Stick with it. Peace, Jeff. That's right, Larry. That's right, brother. And that's what I'm saying, man. And just just read them stories, man. Create that channel, Larry. And I'm glad everybody who's stuck here, everybody who's stuck here got that little bit of, of now. Like I said, we drop nuggets for everybody in every fucking live stream I do. I tuck nuggets in every fuck because for the people that stay the whole time or the, for the people that watch the whole thing, you're going to get nuggets throughout every live stream I do. Because my goal here is to make sure you ain't stressing the fuck out about money. That's it. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. Jeff, my brakes went out. Guess what? I got a channel. I got a video talking about brakes, man. Jeff, man, I don't know. My car is sputtering. I, I got a video showing you how to fucking find a misfire, dog. My last thing is for you motherfuckers to stress. Jeff, I'm running out of money. You know what? Maybe you should make a channel about this. And I always say there's 7 billion people on this planet. While you're sitting here with me on a live stream, what up, Ryan, my brother? Facts, make a channel of whatever you're an expert at. Yep, yep. All right, Jeff B. Easy. Thanks for getting the word out. All right, Flex, all good, brother. And I tell people, we got 7 billion people on this planet. While we all can enjoy each other on live streams and we can talk back and forth, but we can laugh and be in these streets doing shit. Let your content, let YouTube deal with that shit. Let them go out and find advertisers talking about whatever you're talking about. You may read children's books. You might make a children's channel. Next thing you know, you got toy advertisements. You got book advertisements. You got a lot of shit going on in your channel now. You, you might hit me up and be like, Jeff, dude, my motherfucking channel blew up quicker than yours. Jeff, you at what? You at 7,500? Yeah, I'm at 7,500 subs. Damn, Jeff, I'm at 8,000 in a week. I'm like, holy shit, dog. That's crazy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Thanks for the thanks for the play on the children's channel, man. Had no idea. No idea. This is what we're here for, to lift each other up. Even if it's some shit I don't do. I may not buy a Prius, but I might tell people, hey, man, a Prius is the ultimate motherfucking ride share vehicle. Jeff, well, why don't you have one? Because I drive a Beamer. I don't know. It's like, I tell people what I think. I think a Prius is the ultimate ride share vehicle. It's got a lot of trunk space. I don't have no fucking trunk space. I got to keep turning down airport rides all the time. A Prius don't have to. So I just keep it 100 with people. I may not even do what I'm saying, but at least I'm going to tell you what I think is best. And if I think what is best is, hey, you should probably have some, some revenue generating in the background somehow. Seven billion fucking people out there might need to know your name. So... Go out there and fucking, you know, start some. I always say record palm trees blowing, record people walking, record dogs walking, record something and just throw it online. Let YouTube work with it. YouTube is looking for content. They're looking for it. They're looking for content creators. They told me they're looking for podcasters. I like to do videos, but they like we're, we're looking for podcasters, man. We, you, you're good at videos, but you actually suck at videos at the same time, Jeff. So how about you just podcast? I'm like, 
mm, okay, let's let's see what we can do. <laughs> the new Prius looks like a fucking race car. I like the new Prius. That's just like a man. Listen to Jeff watching SmackDown. Kind <laughs> of you wild, you wild. So you heard about the glitch here first, hey Jose? Real shit. We was on it, man. We was on it as soon as it hits, it, man. So YouTube loves my chicken videos. My chickens are so cute and fluffy. They're funny. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you right now, Andy, I was looking at a video today in the gym. I'm in the gym. Now, the gym would never play my shit. They wouldn't because I say shit. But I'm in the gym watching a rooster and a chicken, I mean, a rooster and a cat hang out on the couch. I'm watching pigs and cats walk together. I'm watching raccoons and squirrels fucking play together in the yard. I'm watching a deer lick a fucking Labrador retriever and shit. These are the kind of things that are streamed at gyms all over the world. The shit I do would never be streamed at a gym. But I'm looking at basic average everyday content of just people's average day lives being streamed in the gym, being streamed at dentist's office. Y'all got to think of this shit, man. Y'all got to think of it. Because if we want to fight these fucking apps and we want to fight poverty and we're here, we're family together, we're all family together, then why not let's help each other figure out ways how to make money? What's up, USA? Que pasa? Que pasa, motherfucker? Yeah, but if we're here to help each other as family and shit like that, why not? I'm not ever trying to make more money than anybody. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm trying to make sure the people that I fuck with don't stress and don't suffer. That's it. If anything I can say helps you out in the slightest fucking degree. Cool. Cool. Because the last thing I'm going to do is want to put you in a fucking hole. I'd rather help pull you out. If I pull you out and you go further than me, shit, one day I might need you to pull me out of a hole too. Just say, hey, Jeff, I got some advice for you. You gave me advice a long time ago. I'm going to advise you back. Cool. Hit me up with the advice. Hey, man. You can do this BMW run and do it every year. You can make a little money. Cool. Thank you for the advice. That's what we do to each other. We bounce shit back and forth to pull each other out of holes. That's it. And that's what we do on this channel. Thank you, Jacqueline. I appreciate that. We appreciate you and your content, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Like I always say that shit, man. We do this. We use family. We use family around here. We call it the barbecue for a reason. I don't view ride share drivers as fucking drivers. Once you become a driver and you become human and you understand why we do this, you start relating to people that do what you do. The people that don't relate to us, that don't want to stand by us, we want to fight for our worth and our value. I probably don't fuck with them for a reason. And it ain't because, you know, I, I think I'm better. They think, no, energy recognizes energy. That's all. Family recognizes family. You know when somebody's looking out for you. You know when somebody's looking out for themselves and they don't give a fuck about you for real. I drop nuggets all the time on this channel about how to help people get money. I tell people to hurry a tub and method through fucking email. I got like 200 some emails I got to go through now anyways. I've been going through a ton of shit. But I spend my time with people, unpaid time, going through emails, making sure people can make money. Hey, Jeff, man, I heard you talking about Harry Tim, was it? I go through all my emails. I spend an hour, two hours eating breakfast, cooking, cleaning, everything. Hour, two hours going through all unpaid time. But if I can help our family... That's all the payment we need because motherfucker going to end up hitting me one and say, hey, man, thank you for the Harriet Tubman shit. Man, you saved a $10 surge. These motherfuckers try to send me so far, man. I saved that 10 bucks, used that shit on a two mile ride, man. Thank you. That's the best fucking payment you can get to somebody right there. That's real shit. That's family shit. That motherfucker ain't never got to borrow from me because I'm helping them out with in information and education. And, and I'm one of those people to say, hey, as long as you got money in your pocket, I got money in my pocket. We don't need money out of each other's pockets. So my trick is to make sure you have enough money in your pocket through profits, through ways to make money, through residual money, if, if anything you can do. That way, you ain't never got to borrow from me. I never have to borrow from you. That's how life should be. So hopefully, man, uberjeepaz at gmail.com is the perfect. As the Isley Brothers, you're right, Jeff. I need to put more effort in my channel. I just didn't think life in the country would be that fascinating. Oh, Andy, trust me. Go to any EOS fitness, 24-hour fitness, Planet Fitness. Look at the TV screens. It ain't nothing but animals. Animals having fun, animals sliding in ice, animals laughing and shit. That's all it is. And you have chickens. Trust me, your shit can go viral. you probably be played in every fucking gym around the country, especially if you put some humor, some funny or whatever. Trust me, you, you're sitting on a gold mine and you don't even realize it. I was just watching a rooster walk next to a chicken today. Trust me. Who the fuck is working out in the gym watching roosters and chickens? Me and you got a whole bunch of fucking chickens in front. You like, you know what? I don't just need y'all for y'all eggs. I need you motherfuckers for content. <laughs> I'm telling there's seven billion people on this planet. Somebody wants to see your chickens. Don't let a motherfucker walk up to you in the club, like, hey girl, let me see them chickens. 
<laughs> like, what the fuck you asked me? Fuck, let me see them chickens, girl. Let me see them chickens. Shit. <laughs> like, motherfucker, hey, that's some weird shit right there, but I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to wear me a t-shirt and say, hey, girl, let me see them chickens. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? That's some nasty shit. <laughs> Uh, doing, <laughs> I'm sitting on the gold mine doing 25 cent a mile. <laughs> Motherfucker over there flipping quarters in the air. Bling. Every time you go through a mile, flip a quarter. Bling. Pastor in the back is like, what are you doing? For every mile, I flip what I earned. <laughs> I'm calling this flipping money, girl. I'm flipping money. <laughs> you flipping a quarter every mile. Bling. Man, do you prefer bars when you work nights? I'm staying away from them because drunk people bring more drama than other dime. I'm going to tell you what. Bars are tricky. Restaurants are better. I would do restaurants like Applebee's, Chili's, and shit like that. Those people still drinking everything. They just don't do bars. Bars are the, are the extreme because you never know what you're going to get. You might get somebody cool, somebody good. Somebody say, man, I'm leaving before I get too fucked up, man. You might get the good person, but then you might get this motherfucker like, hey, man, what took you so long? Now you're like, canceled, drive the fuck off. It's like, nope, nope. Like, motherfucker, I just got your shit down the street. I've been waiting for an hour. What the fuck wrong with you, man? It's like, all right, cancel. Durr. He's not for you. That's not your customer. Leave that motherfucker. Then he's going to have to wait again because he probably did that shit to the last four fucking riders. <laughs> it's like, shit, Mr. President, anything for that content. <laughs> exactly. Shit. Hey, she going to go, Indy going to go in there like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record these motherfucking chickens. Shit. <laughs> like, hey. Andy, what you need to do is get you a shirt that says you want to see my chickens. <laughs> Wear that shit everywhere. People's like, what do you mean want to see your chickens? You're like, that's my YouTube channel. Oh, shit. You got a YouTube? Yeah, yeah. It's my, I got my chickens on there. Girl, I thought you meant something else. Shit. I was about to get your number. <laughs> Lift, bring her back premiere. They better not bring back premiere. Shit, I'm driving today. Bring a smoothies in your Lux leather. Hell yeah. It's funny how Glitch always plays with driver pay cup, but they can still send rides to you. Exactly. I'm telling you, Andy, I think you should put your YouTube channel on a T-shirt and on a, on, put it on front and back, your YouTube channel, and put the phrase, want to see my chickens? <laughs> that's it. And that's it. Don't put nothing else. <laughs> want to see my giblets? <laughs> you got to put something like, because people are going to go to the channel and say, what the fuck is she talking about? Wanna, and this is, maybe it's the OnlyFans. No, motherfucker, this is only chickens. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. You know what that is. <laughs> So as motherfucker log on your channel, that's the first thing they see. You know what that is. You thought you was gonna see some only fan shit. This is only chickens, bitch. Get back, <laughs> you nasty motherfucker. <laughs> Wanna see my giblets? <laughs> <laughs> shit. That's a funny shit. Flex motherfucker say that shit. Wanna see my giblets? I say, do you think Lux will bring back Premier? Nah, I think they're too far gone. They're too far gone, man. Premier and Lux and all that shit is way too far gone. We got to start worrying about how to get our money now. Like I said, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, do that shit, man. Do that shit. But no. But I'm going to end this live stream because we just crossed the four-hour mark. I did not want to cross four hours. I was wanting to do a two-and-a-half-hour live. Y'all know I can never do two-and-a-half hour. There's no fucking way possible I could do a two-and-a-half-hour live stream because we get good, man. We Like I said, I'm so glad y'all stayed this long because I really – next time I talk to people, I want motherfuckers to say, hey, Jeff, Hey, make sure go check out my video on the thing. I made one video specifically to, for YouTube to grab any algorithm. Let me know what you think about it. Because I make breakfast all the time. I would be cooking and just play that motherfucker. Be like, oh, this is a cool ass video. I'll be watching my man Abdul down in Atlanta. I watch his videos all the time when I'm making breakfast. Like, dude, hit them motherfuckers up and just sit there and just listen to them. So is is I want people out there to start looking at ways to get residual income from YouTube. And like I said, it's not you know hard to do. Once you make one video, it could go viral for YouTube. will take it. Thank you. Talk to me for the super chat, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> he got that little hippo on there going, oh, shit. <laughs> the hippo said, oh, shit. Like, where'd you find a hippo that says, oh, shit? <laughs> oh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. This is your wife is hot. The company had the billboards here. Fix your AC. I know a great podcast. Broski. Thank you, Johnny. Boy, my man, my man. Man, I appreciate that, man. But yeah, next time, like I said, man, we gotta we gotta start getting drivers, especially y'all that participate in these live streams and know how this shit's going. Let's get everybody to to get something into this YouTube algorithm because you don't know what's gonna happen, how many subs you can get from it, how many plays, what kind of ad revenue you can get from it. You don't know until you start. You gotta start trying at some point. So if if we didn't get shit out of this live stream except jokes, laughs, and all that shit, please start recording something. 
Larry's going to start reading books and he's going to start recording chickens. Talk to me. He's going to start recording hippos going, oh, shit. <laughs> you should go to every zoo around and just record a hippo. And when you see the hippo go, oh, shit. <laughs> And that'd be a whole thing. You see an animal. Oh, shit. <laughs> Man. Thank you. Talk to me. What up, Scott Barry? What's good? Thank you. Talk to me. Your heart is in helping drivers in this shows. Man, I do all I can. Man, I love who we are. I love us as people. I really do love us as people because we we go out there every night. We put risk on the line. We put our cars on the line. We leaving our families behind us. We don't know if we're going to make it back or not. Some of us don't make it back. And, and it takes balls to do that shit every night, to look on the internet and see all these drivers dying, all these people having accidents and everything else. And we still go out there every day fighting these raggedy ass fucking thieves, trying to do what we do. Then y'all come get on my podcast with me and we share energy, man. I, I consider that much love and respect. That's what that, that's all just love and respect. And we get a lot of trolls that jump on my videos every once in a while. I don't fuck with them that much, but I fuck with y'all, man. I really fuck with y'all. And I really hope that the next time I talk to y'all, I hear, bruh, I created a video. I got 300 fucking subs off that shit. I think this is going to go viral. That's what I would love to hear next time. That would make my heart happier than hearing, oh, yeah, man, I got fucking 25 cent a mile. These raggedy motherfuckers. Nah, we got to start building. We got to start building. And, and let's do it, man. Seven billion people on this planet. We we the 300. We coming. We got to get this money. We got to learn how to fight these apps the right way. Let's let's get our money together, get our content together, get something going in the background, and we stay fighting these fucking apps in the front because a lot of people can't fight. We're smart enough. We're strong enough. We have enough resources to fight. Shit. And like I said, Andy, she's sitting on chickens right now, and y'all motherfuckers don't realize it. Go to any gym you see out there. These motherfuckers are out there all over the screens as animals, chickens, deers, mooses, bears, all kind of shit, and they're just looping all these videos, and it's funny as shit all the time. But that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So, Andy, I don't know. You might be the next motherfucking millionaire. And I'll say that shit out of seriousness. Look at how many people did something and became millionaires. You might be the next one. Sitting right here in this fucking chat, we talking to you like we know you and we cool with you. You turn around and say, Jeff, I don't know what happened, but all the shit I does go viral. I'm in a YouTube partner program. I'm getting thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month. I mean, look at Club Shay Shay. Look at the video he did with Cat Williams. You think they predicted that? Do you really think they predicted that? Shit happens. Shit happens. But shit ain't going to happen unless you start trying to make it happen. So once you start putting those videos online, once you get the T-shirts, hey, check out my giblets, check out my anything like that. Which you, trust me. Trust me on this one. You're you're going in the right direction. And you might be the next millionaire sitting in this fucking chat. And we're going to be like, man, you remember she was. Yeah, I remember that, man. She actually did it. She did it. Somebody's got to get out. Somebody's got to break out. We got to do it, man. And hopefully, you know, these live streams are inspiring people to go out to do better in the, in the world and apps do better for each other. And just and like I said, I appreciate the super chat. Talk to me real shit. I appreciate you guys when you guys super chat me because I'm not making money when I'm doing this. YouTube only pays me like 30, 40 dollars a day right now. I think I made 56 dollars one day. I was like, holy shit, I made 56 bucks. <laughs> but it's like. I don't go viral. I'm not a viral content creator. Viral content creators, you know, they make, you know, five, six thousand dollars a day. Viral content creators can make, you know, five, six hundred in a day. They could do that when you're only making 40, 50. It's cool. It's cool because everybody has to start somewhere. And I would like all y'all to start somewhere for real. I'd like you to start somewhere because if, if there's nothing else we got from this channel even existing, whether it be a ride share channel, a mechanic channel, anything else. If there's nothing else we got from this channel, it's motivation to get our shit together and use corporate streaming revenue, just like these gamers do. My my son, when he was 10, he told me to do this shit. He told me to do this shit when he was 10. He's a gamer. He's got a gaming PC, whole gaming setup. I don't do content. But he told me as a kid, dad, you should do content. They do Twitch and all that shit. I followed him and I'm thinking it's making sense now. So I passed that to y'all. And I'm like, start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Man, but that's it. Hey, Mr. Perfect, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Protect Jeff at all costs. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Barbecue time. Sit and relax. Enjoy a crusty dusty. That's right, man. Man, Uber just told me to leave my app and reinstall it. Okay, Flex, I see what you got. I see what you're doing. Man, but hey, we went seven minutes further. You know what? Much love, much respect. I'm glad y'all stayed for the full for the full chat. Hopefully, I'll talk to everybody next time. We got something going. Mr. Perfect. Drifting on a man. Got to go out there and sea walk. Tell your wife, get the sea walking. <laughs> she gangster. She's like, gangsters don't dance. We boogie shit. <laughs> Mr. Perfect, you all right, brother. You all right, brother. 
So sure. All right, KFA. Hope you get that money, man. I'm about to go out there and do that shit. Alex, my brother, come to Vegas. I was just about to get off. I can't wait to see your podcast on Bet March Madness. Hey, everybody, I will be in, in Vegas for March Madness. Alex has already opened his house up for me, so I got to shoot up there. That's my buddy Alex from back in the day. Whenever y'all see me in Vegas riding motorcycles, doing funny shit. And the thing about this guy, I'm going to tell y'all something special about this guy. Because he got on, and I, I really wanted to end it, but I got to tell you something special about this guy. So long time ago, I was going through a custody battle. Alex knows where I'm going with this. I was going through a custody battle, trying to get custody of my kid. I was done working. I was retired. I already left Vegas, went to St. Louis. I was unemployed, a little bit of money in the bank, no job, had nothing. You know, Alex was like, you've got to fight for this. You've got to fight for your kid, man. And it's not that I had to fight for him, but his mom was going through a divorce herself. And I didn't want my kid to be involved in that shit because, you know, that's a volatile situation for a kid to witness a divorce, two people arguing every day. So I said, well, let me get my son out of that divorce until you get your shit together and I'll give them back to you. So Alex was like, well, if you got to go to court, you got somewhere to stay. I just love Vegas. So I didn't really, you know, so I was going back and forth, back and forth, flying back, staying with Alex the whole time. I was like, hey, man, if you need a ticket, let me know. I'll use my points to get you airlines to get the court. I mean, it was to the point where I was in St. Louis and he was in Vegas and he was like, you know what? If you need court docs done, he would get on his motorcycle in Vegas and drive to the courthouse with my child support, all my child custody shit and file it with the courts for me. I'm in St. Louis. This guy's all the way in Vegas. I would ship him all the, like, overnight him all the shit. He would take it downtown. This is what a father, and he's a father, too. He's got his own kids and all this shit, too. And he's married to my homegirl, Erica, now, but at the time, he wasn't married yet. So you got two single dads helping single dads out. We're clear across the country going back and forth. Always gave me somewhere to stay when I came in town. I went to court, what, August the 15th. August the 15th. Uh, August the 8th, it was because uh, it was the day before my birthday. Remember, because I didn't tell nobody it was my birthday when we was in your backyard. He's got this big ass pool, so we was hanging out in his backyard. I never told nobody it was my birthday. So August the 8th, I get to court. I'm fighting. I don't know if the judge is going to say, you know, you could take your son. You keep I don't know. The this is custody court. You don't know what's going to happen. I'm an unemployed fucking black man. I'm here. I am fucking typical dude. I'm an unemployed black man. Motherfucker, no job trying to fight for custody of a kid. But I just retired from corporate. So. The judge was like, you know what? Custody will go to the father. Man, I broke down in court. I had no idea I was going to get custody of that kid. So I get back to Alex's and I'm like in the parking lot, bawling, bawling, because I didn't know I was going to get custody of my kid. So I finally get down and I'm like, you know, I get back to his house. So I tell him and they're like, so what happened? What happened? I'm like, I got custody, bro. And all that shit that me and him went through, all that back and forth, him taking paper to court, him flying me out, him letting me say that was all this shit. It all fucking paid off. But none of it would ever happen if not for that guy. There was no way I could have done all that without that one fucking person on your journey in life. One person will say, I got you. I'll take care of you. And that's why I tell people all the time. I never take credit for my success. I never do. Because I know that I haven't. There's no way I could have gotten this far in life by myself. There's no fucking way. So when people see me being generous and giving to people, giving people free information, free knowledge, dropping shit for free, always, it's people like him who have done the same to me. They've done the same to me, and I've returned that shit back to the universe. This is energy going back. So when I look at, you know, my son, and like I said, everything was better after my, I got custody of my son. His mom finally got divorced. Eventually, my son made it back to Florida to live with her now, but she got her life back together. She's a nurse now. Everything worked out exactly how it was supposed to. My son never saw trauma. He never saw chaos, all that shit. And it's because this dude right here is all about sharing good energy, brother. Real shit, Alex. Real shit. So when I, when I sit there and I think about guys like him who are, who exist on this fucking planet, like when I say, oh man, I'm gonna go hang out with Alex or whatever. I think he's not just a guy. I mean, this guy has, he's taking credit for half the shit I've done in my life after that. I mean, without him, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be this far without custody of my kid. I would have never had my kids, you know, involved in video games and everything like that. He would have never inspired me to start a YouTube channel. I probably wouldn't even be in front of you. He started a chain of events. That would have never happened had he not said, I'll get on my fucking motorcycle and file these fucking papers. You need to get custody of your kid, man. Get him out of that situation. And like I said, his mom wasn't bad. It wasn't hard. She was just going through a divorce. You don't want kids to go through that. So I shot up there and, and I, he got all my paperwork done. He got, man, he took it, took a lot of heat off of me, a lot of stress off my plate, a lot of stress off my plate. Cause there's no way I could have did all those filings. I'm in St. Louis, a lot of filings back and forth. A lot of refilings, a lot of misfilings, a lot of move this here, move that there, get this notarized, get that filed. I mean, it was crazy. Shit was crazy. 
but he helped me out. He helped Alex help me out. And every time I go to Vegas, that's who I stay with. Like whenever who I go to Vegas, I'm him and Alex. I'm there baking cookies and shit. So, and the on my cash app, you see a picture on my cash app. When you open my cash app, my picture is me baking cookies at his house in front of his oven. It's me, him, Erica, all the kids. But I'm I'm like holding the fucking the oven open, showing the cookies on my cash app. So that's how powerful this dude is for me. Like I have him in so many different aspects of my life to this day. So when people are paying me, giving me money for cash app, they're seeing me standing in this dude's kitchen who fought for me to help me get custody back in 2015, long ass time ago. But that's the energy that I want to carry forward whenever I do anything. I keep everything that reminds me around me, who I am, what I've been through. I don't erase that shit. Every time I look at that cash app, I see the oven. I see the cookies. That's Alex and Erica's fucking house. You remember that shit. You remember how you got here. Do not forget how you got here. <laughs> Alex, cookies, free room. I know I'm always, I made cookies the other day, bro. I made cookies the other day. And they always have cookie ingredients ready for me. Well, Alex said, hey, uh, Flex said, hey, Alex, you're a real dude. Hey, and Solomon said, hey, thank you, Alex. Person like you, we need in this crazy world. I'm telling you, man, real shit, real shit. And, you know, whenever, like I said, I'll be out there for March Madness. I'll be staying at Alex's house. We're going to go. We're going to drop our bets in. We're going to end up trying to make this money. I'm going to try to live stream. I live streamed from his house last time. So that was his son that had the uh, airplane at the airport when I did that video. So I'm going to live stream from their house when I get out to Vegas. We're going to live stream straight out of Vegas, you know, making our bets. Hopefully we win some money. If we lose, shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So I'm glad you jumped on the live stream, Alex. I was just about to get off, man. You came in at right time. So I appreciate that, brother. Real shit. Much love, much respect, man. Love you and Erica. Tell her I said, what's up? I know she's going to be like, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> she always be saying that shit all the time. Hey, motherfucker. And tell her, watch one of the videos because one time I was like, I was rolling the other night. I was driving. I said, who got a dollar? I got a dollar. Who got a dollar? Hey, hey, hey. I said that in one of my videos. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. I thought about Eric. <laughs> I talked about that in one of my videos the other night. It was probably on the last video I did. I was, or the one from last. I was like, who got a dollar? I got it. I was like, dude, that shit does not exist. That's not a real song. And she called the lady and the lady was singing on the phone. I was like, holy shit, it's a real song. <laughs> I was like, I thought she made that shit up on the fly. I was like, that shit was funny as hell. Yeah, who got a dollar? I got a dollar. Who got a dollar? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like, y'all are nuts. Y'all are nuts. But hey, hey, all love and respect. 415. I was supposed to go for two and a half hours. We're at 415 right now. So, hey, everybody, much love and respect for you guys. Rock with me for this whole live stream. You know, I'll probably try to live again probably Sunday. So Sunday, if I get back online Monday, definitely we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get on there. I have an overpayment of unemployment because I failed to give them unemployment verification. 30 days, three years of mail me about it. They said they need 6,500 now. I sent a mail saying it's 16,900 today. Fuck them. Fuck them. Man, you better change your motherfucking, you better go get you some undocumented, undocumented immigrant paperwork and be like, I don't even live here no more. <laughs> it's like shit. All right, Logan. Hey, man, you are. See, Logan's from Vegas, but he's out here in Phoenix right now driving, doing delivery some fucking where he's out here making his money. So, hey, man, I'll see y'all guys in a minute. I'm going to go in here, jump in the shower, grab me something to eat. It's only 626. I'll hit you up, Nick. We're going to try to get up to Cave Creek tonight. See if we can make some money up there, man. Let's do something. We're broke as a motherfucker doing these apps. Let's go get some money, man. So much love and respect, y'all. Y'all be out there, man. Be out there. Let's go get it done. Let's go get it done, man.